Hello. Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well today. Hi, welcome in everybody. We had Issa, Potato, Wolf, and welcome in Mac. Um, we're testing out subscriber-only streams today. I know I've unlocked them, I think, like, three weeks ago at this point, and we talked about it before, but I want to try and do them, like, every other week. Because I kind of want my viewers to get used to subscriber-only streams. I know we talked about with potentially making Meg Esports events sub-only. So, if you're new to Twitch and don't know how these streams work, how subscriber-only streams work is we are in sub-only chat, so only subs can type in chat as of right now. Um, Non-subs, they can still see the stream. Non-subs, you get a free preview of any sub-only stream once a day, I think. I think that's how it works. But I, supposedly, they're, they're not very clear on how sub-only streams are viewable to non-subs, but from what I read on Reddit, is essentially um once you refresh the tab it's gone so what we're gonna do for sub only streams is the vod will be up as we're streaming but once the stream ends vod will be gone it'll be gone um any viewers in chat please don't clip the stream for sub only streams because you want to keep everything contained everything in so not saying that we're gonna do anything bad because sub only streams still have to follow twitch's terms of service but I want this to be for the core people, the people who do spend that extra $5 to help support me every month. So let's keep it in here, okay? I know we- because people who do receive gifted subs can still be in the chat for sub-only streams as well. So you don't have to necessarily get a tier 1 or pay every month. If you get a gifted, you get lucky. Um, another reason why we're in sub-only mode is because um, I don't want non-subs to come into chat and shill and like ask for subs that's why we're in sub only that way they can't chat um if you're an on sub and you're watching cool i appreciate hanging out today um cross your fingers and maybe you'll get a gifted or you can hashtag sub for free with prime and save five bucks every month hi deke welcome in you're outside touching grass yeah go keep touching grass <laughs> good luck with my drive just yeah it's, it's wednesday guys it's wednesdays hi welcome in crystal um so that's just a basic rundown of how sub only streams will go like I said, after the stream is over, I will unpublish the VOD. I think I will still, if I'm able to, I'll export these VODs to um, YouTube. But those will only be on my YouTube VOD channel in probably like a month because I have past streams queued up. Um, because I want to make sure people watch the VODs on Twitch first than YouTube because I actually have monetization on Twitch. Um, I think that's the basic rundown of how sub only streams work. Uh, oh, last thing I want to say about them is that only the people who are subscribed get a goal live notification. And what's cool is that viewership, so viewer count, doesn't matter towards my analytics. So if these totally flop and I have one person, totally fine, it doesn't hurt my channel. So these are just extra bonus content for the people who do choose to sub to the channel. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to make a copy pasta. I was gonna draft it out. Um... What you call it? So I wanted to make a copy pasta very similar to what I just put into chat, but <laughs> the idea is, hi Maddie, welcome in. Um, the idea for the copy pasta is I'm gonna try and type out a draft when it's. Oh my god, this is crazy! And then I want to use my emotes. I'm drafting it out right now with you guys. Um. You won't believe. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wait, wait, we're changing the copy bus. <laughs> you won't believe what's going on. Oh, you guys are spamming. I love copy pasta spams, they're my favorite. Keep doing it, guys, keep doing it. If my chat becomes a copy pasta stream, I would love that shit. Okay. Oh my god, this is crazy. You won't believe what's going on. You can't miss this. Okay, I gotta put apostrophes. I'm making the copy pasta for today to rub it down on the non-subs. <clears throat> you can't miss this. Let's do piece I2 punch. All you need to do is... Yeah, I had to change my scene because I had to type in hashtag. Just hashtag sub.
Okay, chatters, this is what I want the copy pasta to be. So everybody, this is the new copy pasta. Copy and paste this. Hi time Mokaman. This is gonna why is why is that command coming up? Anyway. Yeah, so chatters, that's gonna be our copy pasta for sub only streams, okay? Why is that command coming up? What the fuck? Anyway, so chatters, copy and pasta. The oh my god, this is crazy. You won't believe what's going on. You can't miss this. <laughs> oh, because um, non subs can still see the chat. Like I said, they still get a stream preview, but I kind of want to egg them on a little bit, you know? I think it'd be funny. Um, <laughs> it's so stupid, isn't it? Okay. Hi, puppy lover. Welcome in, hun. Okay, now that we have that all situated, we can go ahead and get started with the meat of the show. If you're a sub, you know what we're doing. If you're a non-sub, this is going to be a surprise. Uh, yeah, so chatters, just spam the copy pasta of the whole stream. That's all you're going to do, okay? We can still talk normally, but keep spamming, okay? <laughs> we want the chat room to be filled. <laughs> and if any other chatters, if you have other copy pastas that are in that similar realm, feel free and spam. Okay. Are you guys having fun? <laughs> oh, um, what we're doing today is I have my driver's knowledge test on Wednesday. And to be honest, I haven't studied. <laughs> so what we're doing today is I'm going to read the whole entire Washington driver's guide on stream. And we're going to do a little study stream because... If I'm not doing it for content, then I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so, I honestly haven't read a book in forever either. What I do like about the text is that it's like a 16 point font. So it's fairly easy to read. You need to study for your written too? Oh my god, dude, we can study together. Holy shit. Um, yeah, so before we get started, we get free lessons. Yeah, this is, this is technically public IP. This is technically free. So hopefully I don't get copyrighted. <laughs> um, before we get started, let's go ahead and get our sub goal up for today. Right now we're at 109. Let's put our goal at 110. So maybe we can get one gifted and maybe a lucky motherfucker can get a gifted and watch the stream. <laughs> Thank you for doing the hard work for me. I mean, what you can do is this can just be like your study time. Okay. I haven't read out loud in a long time, so I don't know how good my speaking skills are gonna be but we're gonna try so yes exactly you're right max some information is different every state i also they had this little um paper tucked into where there's adjustments to certain rules um there's not too much difference the only rule that i looked through this that was different than like the tests i took was it says rules of the road there are traffic rules that say where when and how fast you can drive these rules help keep traffic moving safely. Rules of the road include traffic control devices, right away, and parking rules. And it says move over slash slow down lock. When passing emergency response vehicles on the side of the road with flashing lights activated, move over one lane if possible. And if not, then reduce your speed to 10 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. I, for the longest time, I thought you had to stop your vehicle, because I feel like that's what everyone does. But when was- actually, when was this updated? Oh, this is from November 2021 revisions. So, I guess instead of stopping your vehicle, you're supposed to just slow down. Yeah, so this is for Washington. I don't know if that's different. Because in all the practice tests, it said I have to pull over and stop. But this here, as of 2021, I just have to reduce my speed. So, I don't know. I mean, I feel like literally everybody, whenever like an ambulance goes by, everybody just stops. So, I don't think people actually do that. I don't know. We'll, we'll look through the revisions as we get through the book, because how many pages? <coughs> okay, th this is- <laughs> this sucks if we look at the page number. I don't know if it'll focus, but it doesn't say, like, page 60. It says chapter 5, page 4. So, I legitimately don't know how, how many pages this book is, but I assume it's probably, like, 100. So, I think this will take me, like, Maybe three or four hours to get through. So chatters, chatters. If you're out doing shit, this is a Sunday. It's the weekend. Go have fun. 
you know, don't hang out with me. Go do shit. Unless you want just, like, some chill, chill study stream, I guess. The PDF version is 140. Damn. <laughs> you guys, keep spamming. Keep spamming the copy pasta. We, we can't let the non-subs know what we're doing. Oh, um, Mac, at my, um, uh, what do you call it? At my place, the licensing center, they had Spanish versions. That was actually kind of cool. Because we have a lot of Spanish speakers here in Washington. <laughs> the copy boss is so funny. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Batty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I remember, like, it, this was months ago, Batty, but you had a copy pasta. That was like, oh my god, I met Peace in 17 at the grocery store the other day. And I was like internally freaking out because I was like, did you actually see me? But I didn't realize it was a copy pasta. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah, chatters, good, good one, Wolf. Like, RP that I'm doing like crazy shit. <laughs> okay, so it opens up with pictures of road signs. Maybe we can make flashcards. You know what my mom used to do? She, um, she printed out colored versions of signs and then she laminated them and she put them on a key ring. This was when I was like eight, and she was like, hey Megan, what's this sign? Or what's this sign? Um, this must be an old picture because look at how young Ainsley looks. He looks like 10 years younger in this picture. <laughs> I know a lot of people shit on Ainsley, but I think he's pretty decent. He's pretty aight. That's so smart, yeah. My mom was, ooh, I spilled water on my desk. It did not get on any electronics, so I'm fine. My mom was really good when I was younger. She had a lot of, like, engaging activities. Is that your governor? Yeah, Governor Ainsley. Governor Ainsley is pretty base. Um, he hasn't made any, like, crazy decisions. Like, his Twitter is, like, pretty, like, PC, though. It's like, ugh. Okay, let's see. What page did I start on? Oh, there's so, there's so many sections, like, <laughs> look at this, table of contents. Look at, look at how much I have to do. Oh my god. <laughs> Hi, Nix, welcome in, hon. Yeah, wasn't it? Fuck. What was your, what was the New York governor's name? Okay, now I'm actually at the first page. Page, chapter one, page one. <clears throat> yeah, he harassed people, I remember. Oh yeah, Cuomo! <laughs> Remember when he released like the apology video? And he's like, you know, I touch everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Actually insane shit. <laughs> okay. Focus on chapters three to six, got it. Man, we got another New York frog? Oh my god, you guys should be friends or something. Okay, enough stalling, enough stalling. I actually need to study now. Uh, what we're gonna do once we read the book, I'm gonna actually take a- wait! Should I take a practice test before I start, and then another one when we're done? Should we do that? That way we can see if the book is actually, <laughs> like, important? <laughs> chatters, chatters, chatters. Let, let's actually take a practice test before. I think that'd be better content. You've never read the book? Yeah, I, I haven't either. Okay, I bookmarked a test. Okay, I think we're gonna take the test first. I think that actually makes a lot more sense. Okay, chatters. <clears throat> you read it twice? Man. Okay. Um, I think this is from the DMV written test from Washington. And you can select whatever state you want. Okay. So I think this is pretty official. Let's see what you guys see. Okay. I don't- What's nice about this crop is I don't see ads, so. Okay. So chatters, answer along with me. Type A, B, C, or D. This sign means it's an orange diamond with a person supposedly digging in the ground. Watch for people working on or near the roadway. The road ends ahead. Expect a traffic signal ahead or yield the right of way. Um, I think, because like orange, I think typically means construction. So I think it's A. If traffic signals at an intersection are not functioning due to powder outage, 
Park your vehicle as far off the road as possible and wait for power to be restored. Actually, dumb shit. <coughs> Use hand signals to indicate your intentions to other drivers. Turn off your hazard or turn on your hazard lights and proceed through the intersection without stopping. <laughs> Treat the intersection as a four-way stop. Four-way stop. Hi, Titans. Get to prep for a match. Okay, no problem. Hope you have fun later today then. Um, obviously D because um in my part of town, like the power doesn't go often because I live near like essential infrastructure. So I usually don't go out of power. But there's been a few times. There was one time like a tree fell over on like the main road by my house. So then we didn't have power for like two days. Um Three Mac, you're fucking brain dead. They should take your license away. It's obviously four. Or date. What? Okay, chatters. It's A, B, C, or D. We're not doing numbers. You're gonna confuse me if you put numbers. <laughs> okay, on a freeway, you realize you missed your turn or exit. You should make the turn quickly from your lane of travel. No, that's brain dead. Stop and back up. Oh my god, imagine. Uh, continue driving until you reach the next turn, exit, or other location where you can safely turn around. Or signal other drivers to stop so you can turn. Um, say. Because you do B if you want to actually die. Uh, <laughs> And then D, you just have an ego complex. Um, when you're ready to change lanes, you should check your side mirror, check your rear view mirror, or click it, turn your head to check for other vehicles. Um, I feel like D. Okay. Blink. <clears throat> Limit your concentration, perception, judgment, and memory. Only a blood alcohol level greater than the legal limit can. Alcohol does not. Even the smallest amount of alcohol can. Only a blood alcohol level greater than 0.05% can. Um, I know, okay. I know people have, like, different tolerances for alcohol. But I know, like, the legal limit. I feel like it has to be C, right? Cause like okay, I've never had a drink before, so I feel like if I took a little sip, I'd be fucked up. I, I'm putting C. I think you're right. It's, it could be D, but legally that's the limit. But I feel like it'll affect different people. Well, I think the way that this test works is that it grades every like five six questions, so we'll be able to see right away. Hi, Lemon. Welcome in. <coughs> if you're driving in another driver's blind spot, you should move forward or drop back so the other driver can see you. Keep a steady pace, stay in the driver's blind spot, or honk to let them know you're there. Um, A. A makes the most sense. Hey, welcome in, Charlie. <coughs> okay. I, I see what you're saying, Issa. Okay, let's see. Did I get them all right? Hey, yo! 100% baby! Oh, what the fuck? I don't want an ad. Okay. Hey chatters, let's let's keep the copy pasta going. <laughs> let's keep the copy pasta going. Okay, I don't know why that command is no no do not do the do not do the do not subscribe one. That's the I'm I'm disa I'm disabling that copy pasta right now. Hold. No, I do not want the cheat sheet. I'm not a cheater. Oh no, I I don't even know where the poppy pot is. Shit. Wait, I should be on camera. <laughs> Where is the copy pasta? Okay, hold. I need to find it. She just did a flip? No. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, I did chatters. I did a backflip. Sorry, I'm trying to disable that copy pasta command because it's getting annoying. Guys, uh, sub only streams is god tier content. Oh, 
Oh, I found it! I found it. Now you guys- now that command should not come up. Okay, I disabled the command. I did it. I did it. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the test now. <clears throat> Peace I 2 flip when? Dude, I would literally crack my head in. I- my- <laughs> my depth perception is bad. I am way too heavy. I even struggled doing fucking cartwheels when I was in school. Okay, back to the test. <clears throat> okay, you guys are so stupid. When driving near a blind pedestrian who's carrying a white cane or using a guide dog, you should slow down and be prepared to stop, take the ride away, proceed normally, or drive away quickly. Um... I feel like it'd be nice to slow down, because you don't know if they're gonna accidentally walk off into the road, so... I feel like that'd be the, like, nice thing to do. <laughs> a marijuana that is smoked, a marijuana that is consumed by way of marijuana-infused feuds. Uh, so basically an edible versus smoking, I guess. Have identical risks, have different risks, have minimal side effects when combined with alcohol, will likely not affect your ability to drive. Um, I know some edibles go kind of crazy, so I think have different risks makes sense. Change my wallpaper? Okay. <clears throat> Hold on, this little boy. What, what's the stupid dog many of you guys are doing? Huh? <sighs> oh, um, at the end of stream today, we'll, like, we'll touch base and we'll talk about what we want to do for future sub-only streams. So that way we can kind of feel out the vibes and see how today goes. Because I want to make subscriber-only streams good enough to where people will want to subscribe, you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dumb. Um, yeah, so I, I know some edibles go kind of crazy. Okay, you're driving when it starts to sleet or snow, which happens every year. You should keep your windshield and mirrors clear. Allow additional distance between your vehicle and the vehicles that you are following. Approach all vehicles with caution or all the above. Obviously all the above. Anytime, tatters, anytime there's an option for all the above, it's obviously going to be that one. <clears throat> Using a handheld cell phone to make a phone call while driving is safer than using a hands-free cell phone. It may only be done by teenage drivers. Is illegal or is recommended? Obviously, it's illegal. Ave. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Okay. What are the colors of warning signs indicating upcoming hazards? Black letters or symbols on white. Black on yellow. White on blue. White on green. I feel like the only white signs you see are like speed limit. Only white on blue. I only see like for like hospitals. And then white on green, that's like exits and then highway signs. So I think it's B. Bay. <clears throat> okay. When you hear the sirens or see flashing lights of an approaching emergency vehicle, you must slow down until it passes you. Drive to the right side of the road and stop. Motion for the emergency vehicle to pass you. Merge into the right lane and continue driving. Okay. So this is the one. I took this test like three weeks ago just to see what my base knowledge was. Um. And I think it was B. But as we talked about earlier. This regulation changed it. Meaning. Now in Washington. 
you have to move over to the right or move over one lane to the right and reduce your speed to 10 miles below the regular steam s speed limit. So I think the last time I took this test, it said drive to the right and stop. Because, like, I feel like the only other answer it could be is D, merge to the right lane and continue driving. <laughs> Stupid dog, man. You guys shut up. Okay, let's see. Oh, I got them all right. Okay, so... <clears throat> okay, explanation. Let's actually read this. Yield the right of the way to any approaching emergency vehicle that is using its flashing lights or siren, regardless of its direction of travel. You must immediately drive to the right of the road and stop until the emergency vehicle is passed. If you are within an intersection, pass through the intersection before coming to a stop on the right side of the road. Okay. So, I I know, like, the, the rules changed last year to where you just merge right and slow down. But I feel like everybody still stops. Because I don't think many people got their license last year anyway. So, I wonder, I mean, if I get one question wrong on the actual test, fuck it, you know? I think there's like six or seven sections. Or maybe I'm stalling because I don't want to read the book. <laughs> okay. When parking your vehicle downhill on a two-way street, turn your wheels to the right, turn your wheels to the left, keep them pointed straight at ahead, or leave your transmission in neutral. Okay. So when, I, I need to like visualize this. So for downhill, it's a two-way, and we're parking this way. I think it makes sense to turn your wheels to the right. That way, if it does roll, it'll hopefully veer towards the sidewalk, right? Because if you have your wheels to the left, it'll potentially go into the road. And if they point straight ahead, it'll hit the car that's parked in front of you, right? I think it's A. <clears throat> when driving to an unfamiliar area, you should depend on road signs to find your way. Plan your trip in advance. Only generally know where your destination is. Or should always choose the most direct route. Yeah, this is, this question's dumb. Like it, it's kind of like it, it's stupid because all of these could kind of be right, right? I think a smart person- Okay, let's pretend we're going on a vacation. So if you're going on vacation, you're obviously going to plan out your route. So I feel like... B would be the most sense. Right? I don't know. <clears throat> okay. The act of turning your head and checking your blind spot before changing lanes, driving away from a curb, or merging your vehicle into traffic is... Wait, okay. The act of turning your head and checking your blind spot before changing lanes. I'd say good habits, right? I hate the stupid subjective ones. Stupid. Okay. A pedestrian starts to cross in front of your vehicle. You should flash your lights, slow down, speed up and pass in front of the pedestrian, or stop and let the pedestrian cross. Hey, you're psychotic if you try and cut off a pedestrian. <laughs> okay, compared to driving during the day, driving at night is obviously more dangerous. It's kind of scary. Hit them, batch. <laughs> Dude, I swear some drivers think that way. I had some motherfucker get mad at me. This is like a year ago. Um, It was a one-way road. And the road is like a two-lane road that goes from the highway through our town. So people go fairly quickly. Like, they definitely speed in that section of town. And I was in the crosswalk, and I see this nice, like, sports car, like, speeding towards this, the crosswalk. So I stop in the middle of the crosswalk. And I wait for him to come to a complete stop, because I don't know if he's gonna, like... You, you trust that they're gonna stop in time, but you don't know if it's gonna be a rolling stop or whatever. So I stop in the middle of the crosswalk. And I wait for him to stop his car, right? And then... He's, like, doing a rolling stop at a crosswalk, which... It's technically fine, but still kind of scary, right? So I, I wait for him to come to a complete stop. He rolls down his window. He's like, are you fucking stupid? Why don't you cross the sidewalk? And I'm like, bruh. 
If I were like a little old lady, would you yell at me like that? Like, come on. Absolutely crazy, motherfucker. Yeah, frick that guy. Looks like some cocky, like, 30 year old, too. Who probably, like, made money off of their dad's oil mine or something. Anyway, chatters. When you're at crosswalks, just come to a complete stop. Like, it's it's scary, because, like, I've walked and blacked everywhere my whole life. I use public transportation, so, like, it, it's hard. It's scary. Um, when driving under icy or snowy conditions, which driving techniques will help drivers avoid crashes? Add extra weight to their vehicles to improve traction. Get off the highways as quickly as possible. Engage the four-wheel drive in their vehicle. Or reduce their speed and increase their following distance. I- okay. I've never driven in snow. But these all kind of make sense. Yeah, I was thinking D2, but the- I mean, I think get off the highway as quickly as possible could apply to anything. Ayo, hey, 100%! Okay. Which, which of the following about winter driving is not true? Winter is the most difficult season. Checking your vehicle's antifreeze and windshield washer fluids is especially important during the winter. Using cruise control in winter weather is a safe thing to do. It's best to use snow tires on your vehicle. Okay, I don't know what cruise control is, but it sounds stupid, so we're going with that. <clears throat> the child restraint law requires children who are under the age of 8 and less than blank in height should be seated in an improved safety restraint system. Uh... Yeah, I don't know about y'all, but I've been a I was in a car seat till sixth grade. Okay, and I'm five two, so no way it's one of the five feet ones. Okay, 4-11 is very close to 5-2. So it's, got, it's gotta be 4-9. When passing another vehicle on the road with two lanes traveling in opposite directions, you should return to the driving lane when there's enough room between you and the vehicle you pass. Remain in the left lane you intend to turn left. Return to the right side of the roadway immediately, drive in either lane. Yeah, so this is like they're going like this. It's it's one lane on each side. I feel like it's A. Okay, because okay, if it's returned to the right to the road immediately, if there's not enough space, then you crash. Yeah, it's gotta be A. The correct way to use a freeway, freeway exit ramp is to slow down before entering the exit ramp. Slow down once moving onto the ramp. Keep your speed constant once in the exit ramp or pass slower traffic in the exit ramp. Slow down before entering because the, the speed changes on exit ramps. Go super fast, five head. Yeah, that's obviously it. <laughs> um, if you refuse to take a test determining your blood alcohol content, you'll lose your driver license for ninety days, six months, at least a year, at least two years. Um, if you look at like American legislation, they're pretty lax on people who get DUIs. So, I think ninety days. I think 90 days. They obviously do not give shit. <laughs> I think a year is kind of crazy. I think two years is very crazy. Six months is kind of like... 
I think that's kind of big for a slap on the wrist. I think three months is what they would do. I don't know. A red flashing traffic light has the same meaning as a solid light, a stop sign, a yield sign, or a caution sign. Doesn't... For the longest time, I thought caught, like the flashing light mean is like the battery's dead. Um... Okay, I'm not looking at chat because I'm genuinely guessing for this one. I'm gonna say yield. I don't know, because yield means like stop and look, right? Or proceed with caution, and then a solid. A solid, like assuming it'll change colors again, right? But if, if it's flashing. Because, like, okay, the only time I've seen like a flashing red light is near like construction areas sometimes. Or maybe I just don't pay attention. I don't know. Okay. If an aggressive driver cuts you off, you should call the police. <laughs> They're not gonna help you, dude. Um, stay calm and move out of the aggressive aggressive driver's way. Flash your vehicle lights to let the aggressive driver know he's wrong, if you want to be a petty bitch. Using a driving action of your own to get back at aggressive driver. Dude, do you want to get shot? This is America. You're gonna fucking die. Um, stay calm and move out of their way. There's nothing you can do. There's fucking dickheads. Oh no, fuck. I I got the rerun? God damn it. Oh no. Oh, what? What? Okay. The correct way to use a freeway exit ramp is to slow down once moving onto the ramp. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I've never driven a day in my life. What? If you refuse to take a breathalyzer, you lose your license for up to a year? Damn! That's crazy. Okay, Washington State has an implied consent law, which means that by operating a motor vehicle in the state, you have given your consent to take a breath test determining your um, BAC. You lose your license for at least a year if you refuse to take a test. Oh my god. Damn! That's actually pretty crazy. That's actually good. Okay, a flashing red means the same as a stop sign. When approaching a red flashing signal, come to a complete stop and proceed when it's safe to do so. A stop sign may sometimes also be posted when the signal is located. Okay, so what's what's a yield sign then? Because that, that's- okay. Roll the tape. I said, when you yield, you stop and then see if it's safe, right? Okay, what does yield mean? I don't know what yield means. No, chat- no, tell, tell me what yield means. I don't know what it means. I haven't read the book yet. Damn it. I failed. <clears throat> caution. Oh, so just proceed with caution the whole time, like even before you're stopping? I mean, we'll learn what yield is when we actually read the book. Go slow, check if anyone's going, then go. Okay, so just be slow. Okay, got it. Got it! This sign means it's a yellow diamond with a car and then two squiggly lines behind it. Does this mean slippery when wet, tow-way zone, sleep downgrade, or road work ahead? Slippery, obvi. Because he is just slipping and sliding. If somebody's already coming, you yield to them and they have the right away. Okay. <laughs> this is why we're learning, Shatters. I don't know shit. Um, BAC depends on the following, except your body weight, how much you drink, how much time passes between drinks, and how fit you are. I feel like some skinny motherfuckers could still get wasted, so I feel like how fit you are. And also, are, isn't it when you're like, uh, more heavyweight stuff travels to your body slower? Or something? <coughs> Texting while driving is always legal, but not recommended. Illegal? A safe activity, or illegal the driver is using voice to text. 
Uh... I feel like as a baseline it'd be illegal, right? But people have Bluetooth in their car. But I don't think... I think it means, like, if you physically pick up your phone and, like, read the message. I think that's what it's implying, right? You can only talk on the phone, answer? Oh, okay. But I know sometimes it'll read out a text message sometimes. But I feel like that's kind of, like, circumstantial. So, in general, it feels like it'd be illegal. <laughs> to turn right, you should be in the left, the center, the lane that's closest to the direction you want to go, or any one of the lanes. Um, I think you're psychotic if you try to make a right turn in the left lane. So I feel like closest to the direction you want to go. Just assume anything with your phone is illegal. Yeah. I told myself if I'm driving, I'm going to put my phone on silent and keep it in my bag and like put it in the back seat. Because I, I ain't going to touch it. You can talk to them, just don't touch it. Yeah, I feel like any dist I don't even know I don't even know if I want to play music in my car. Because I feel like that distracts me already. Okay. As you drive, you're required to stop your vehicle at an intersection with a stop sign where there's a red light when the there's traffic uh, uh, when a traffic officer orders you to stop. Obviously all the above. You don't want to run over the nicely paid government worker. This roadside means it's a it says reserved parking with a Handicap symbol. Parking spaces are reserved for people with disabled parking permits. Obvious. I don't need to look at the other ones. What I get? Hey yo, I got them all right, baby. Guys, I think I'm gonna nail it. Okay. If anybody gets this one wrong, you're literally brain dead. Go back to kindergarten. If when entering traffic from a private driveway, you must yield to vehicles already on the main road. You have the right of way over other traffic. Enter only if there's a traffic light. Have someone stop the traffic on the road you're entering. If it's a private driveway, you gotta watch out for kids and other cars, so obviously A. Yeah, I've seen people, like, put their makeup on in the car and it's like, bro. And, like, if I'm gonna listen to music, too, like, I'm a sucker for good audio, so... If my car does not have good speakers, I'm not gonna want to listen to the radio. Is it okay to watch the piece on 17th stream while driving? Um, I say no because that's gonna use a lot of your mobile data and I don't want to get blamed if you die in a car crash. So no. <clears throat> to turn right at an intersection with a steady red light, you should- okay. Turn right at an intersection with a steady red light. You should slow down and look for traffic before turning. Stop, signal, and then turn when safe. If no sign prohibits the turn, yeah. Right on red is fine here as long as there's no sign. Signal and wait until the light turns green. Wait until you have a green turn arrow before turning. It's it's right on red. It's fine as long as there's no sign. <laughs> a bicyclist who doesn't obey traffic laws is in the right because bicy bicyclists don't have to obey traffic laws. Can be ticketed. Will always receive a warning from law enforcement. Will have their bicycle impounded. Uh, I think can be ticketed because I know I could get ticketed if I don't wear my helmet. So I get so anxious. Even if I'm just going around my block to test out my bike, I still put my helmet on. I imagine getting in a crash and the police hear you, peace and 17, talking about eating glass and a drink. Dude, that'd be crazy. Imagine they take your bike away, yeah. Like the motherfucker who can't afford gas, who can't afford a car, who has to bike to and from work or to do errands and you take their bike away. That's why. Okay. I've had my bike stolen twice. I've had two cheapy Walmart bikes stolen. One behind my workplace, and then one at the actual bus station. So it's like... If you're taking somebody's bike... It's just so shitty. Because if homie, if they're driving a bike everywhere, their life is already shit. So, don't... 
if you're a teenager, don't take bikes for away for fun. That's not nice. You didn't get notified about stream? Hi, welcome in, Cokes. Um, it's a sub only stream, so only subs get notified. And also, sometimes, uh, Twitch go live notifications take up to an hour to like go out to people. So we're only at 50 minutes uptime. So <laughs> there goes my weekend plans. Batty, please don't steal bikes. It's not very nice. What do you even do? Okay, so my first bike that got stolen. It was, it was the one that got stolen behind my workplace. And I was hanging out with my friend in the downtown area. And he was jokingly like, Oh, if I see that motherfucker riding your bike around, I'm gonna beat the shit out of him. Jokingly. Joking. In Minecraft, right? Not even five minutes later. Yes, we saw some person who did not look very nice. They looked like they potentially didn't have a home. Riding my bike. And we both saw it and we were like, Oh my god. And like, I was kind of less upset when I saw it was... I know, the time it was actually crazy. It was insane. Um... At that point, I already bought myself a new bike because I, I only buy the cheapy Walmart bikes that are like 150 bucks max. But I was kind of glad that somebody, because what'll happen, and this happened to my sister, like somebody like took the rubber grippers off of her bike because the way they could sell it or melt it down or whatever. And a lot of the times people will like steal just like the frame from your bike or just steal the tires. That way they can sell the parts of it. But in my head, I was like, you know, even though that was a shitty thing to do, he stole my bike. You know, at least he's driving it around. At least he didn't sell it or whatever. At least he's using it. Um. So yeah, that was kind of my... I kind of like quickly rationalized I was like, you know. That was still really shitty that he took the bike, but... At least... He didn't like, scrap it immediately. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can be ticketed if you don't follow the rules. You're driving on a busy street and your vehicle's accelerator sticks open. Dude, I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> you should blow your horn, slam on the brakes, turn on your four-way flashers, turn off your ignition, taking care to not engage the steering wheel locking mechanism. Uh, I feel like the most complex answer is the right one. I have no idea. To check your blind spot when changing lanes to the left, you should glance... Okay. Um, over your right shoulder, at your side mirror, over your left shoulder, or at the rear view. Okay, I have no idea. Uh, I literally have no idea. I feel like rear view mirror is right- No! Nope, that's not it. I don't, dude, I've never driven. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. That's what people do. They just take everything but the fucking frame sometimes. Okay. To check your blind spot, glance over your shoulder in the direction you want to move. Okay, I've never driven, so I don't know. Dude, how long is this fucking test? Okay, before turning left, it's important to... So okay, there's an ant on my leg. I've been getting so many sugar ants in my room. I think it's from the cookie decorating stream. Okay, thoughts, chatters. What if I did cookie decorating once a month? Wouldn't that be fun? Type a one in chat if you think that'd be fun. Because I want to do that more often. It was actually really fun for me to do. <laughs> okay, before turning left, sound your horn. Yield to oncoming vehicles. Swing to the right side of your lane. Wait until oncoming traffic has a red light. I feel like yielding is the best thing to do. Because you have to consider, like, pedestrians and stuff, too. Yeah, I agree. The cookie one was definitely... Like, if that was sped up, I feel like that'd be good, like, TikTok content or something. Like, what if, when Megan becomes a millionaire, she opens just a cookie decorating business? Wouldn't that go kind of crazy? Yeah, I think yield is the right answer. Because, honestly... 
My sister really liked the cookies I made. So. We might do those monthly if people want it. Because I, I want to do art more. Um, I, I gotta think about it more. <laughs> okay. When encountering an aggressive driver, you should avoid eye contact, slow down, and let them pass. Cut them off to slow them down. Oh my god. Retaliate if I tell you any of them. <gasps> Make sure you know you disapprove of their behavior. Flip them off. Okay, obviously it's A. You know, you don't want to get shot here in America. Didn't, like, a state congressman... Wasn't there, like, a road rage incident and he got shot in the foot? Okay, I actually need to look it up. Okay. Legislature road rage shooting. I feel like that happened a few months ago. Oh, someone got killed? <laughs> no, that's not what I want. That's not- That's not what I want! S some representative got shot after, like, a road raid incident. It was in the foot or something. Okay, I'm getting way too many shooting stories. I don't- I don't want to look at that. I don't want to look at that. I don't want to look at that. But let's just show more subs, guys. Let's show more subs. <laughs> anyway, it was funny, because I remember, like, that specific legislature was pushing for, like, less gun restrictions. <laughs> motherfucker got shot by some crazy motherfucker. Okay, anyway. Wait, we have this question already. When the pavement is wet, re wait, oh. It, okay, it meant slippery roads, so I think it means wet. Okay, when approaching a traffic signal displaying a steady green arrow, drivers should merge in the lane of the direction of the arrow, should slow to a stop if it's safe to do so, may turn in the direction of the arrow after yielding to traffic and pedestrians already... Oh, like after they're... After they crossed, okay. May drive straight through the intersection. I feel like yielding... Wait, because the flashing red meant stop. So I feel like a flashing green would mean yield, right? That makes sense. <clears throat> if you're driving at the interstate and pass your exit, you should quickly cut across traffic to make your turn. Make a U-turn to go back to the exit. Continue driving to use the next exit. Or put your vehicle in reverse to go back to the exit. Oh, this is saying if you miss your exit, uh, use the next exit, I'll be. This sign means it's a yellow diamond with an arrow pointing down and then an arrow pointing up. I think two-way traffic makes the most sense. I don't know my road signs. Ah, oh, fuck, I got one wrong. Wait, what? Where is it? Okay, it says I got one wrong. But which one did I get wrong? I, I didn't get any wrong. What the fuck? Dude, I thought we were done. How long is this goddamn test? <laughs> okay, this sign means T intersection. Obviously, it has a motherfucking T on the sign. Okay, you come to an intersection with a flashing red light. You must slow down and drive carefully. Turn either right or left since the road is blocked. Stop at the intersection and wait for a flashing green. Stop at the intersection and proceed as traffic allows. Okay, the flashing red meant stop. I think day. Day. It's probably day. I'll be 40 questions. Fuck. We're not going to have enough time to read the book. I mean, I have all day to stream. I don't- I literally said three to four hours, but stream might go to four to five fuck. Dude. I mean, I had to study anyway, so might as well shill some subs, right? What color are pavement markings that separate traffic lanes moving in opposite directions? It's yellow, right? I think it's yellow. I don't think I've ever seen black lines in a road. This sign means two-way traffic, obvi. What does an orange-colored sign indicate? 
Start of no passing. Railroad. School zone or construction. Construction on If you need to stop quickly and your vehicle is not equipped with an anti-lock braking system, you should hold down the brake pedal, firmly pump your brakes, lightly tap the brakes, or release the brake pedal. I think firmly pump your brakes. Can there be black lines on a white road? I've never seen a white road. I feel like that would blind people, huh? Yeah, I've never heard of this anti-lock braking system, huh? It must be some fancy shit. When approached by an emergency vehicle that is using a siren or flashing lights, the driver must immediately pull to the right and stop. Um, if I were to take this wit test now, be pulled to the right and slow down. You what I get? What? I got one wrong? Oh, we're done. Oh, we're we're back in one. Okay, well, I think I only got like three or four questions wrong, right? So I think, how much do you need to pass? Somebody, I'm gonna look this up. Okay, driver's knowledge passing grade. Okay, the Washington knowledge test has 40 questions on it and you must score at least an 80 to pass. So chatters, let's do the math. 10% would be four. So I can get eight questions wrong, holy shit. I think I only got three wrong, right? I think that's good. But, you know, we still gotta read the book, because we gotta know all the specific shit, too. So, Chatters, it's time to get to the meat of the show. An hour in, <laughs> an hour in, we're gonna start reading. So everybody, get cozy, get your notebooks out, take some notes if you're gonna learn, or learning how to drive yourself. I know it says in Washington themselves, so. Um, our state test is 40. I think the practice test we took was like 20 something. Did I miss the prime announcement? No. Um, since it's a sub only stream, I don't think I need to run ads, right? I don't think so. I mean, we could. Wait, do we have any non subs watching? <laughs> Well, if we have any non-subs watching, I guess you guys have to see an ad. So, they get me through the day. Okay, just for Titans. Chatters, we are an hour into stream, so it's time for me to run a few minutes of ads. If you're a non-sub and you're watching with a free preview, get fucked. Because we're going to run some ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing for $4.99, just $5.00. Skip your copy and get ad for viewing all month long. Or, if you link your Twitch to your Amazon Prime account, you can hashtag set for free the Prime, and you can maybe actually watch today's stream. And future bonus sub-only streams. <laughs> so get some water, get a snack, we'll see some of you guys in a few. Uh, I don't think we have any non-subs watching. I mean, that'd be kind of crazy if they were. Still number one, I see. Yeah. Oilers, today would be the day to gift subs, just saying. So that way we can bless the non-subs with today's wonderful study stream. <laughs> Any Oilers mod check? Okay, let's stop. Let's stop stalling. Let's actually get to reading. Okay, I haven't read out loud in a long time, so be nice to me. Okay, chapter one, page one, the driver license. Okay, I'm going to try read like this. You must have a valid driver license to legally operate a motor vehicle, motorcycle, moped, or motor-driven cycle on public roadways in Washington State. You prefer bits than subs. I see that. I know for me... I think bits are cool, like the, you're out of focus. Am I really? Okay, well, I'll put the book down here. 
Um, I know the the income cut is greater for me on bits than subs. And I know the bits are cheaper, so if people want to support the stream, I would gladly take either. But I think subs are cool because then chatters will watch the stream more because when you receive a gifted, um, people are more likely to type in chat, they're more likely to resubscribe, they're more likely to watch the stream. But I will appreciate either. I Anybody who donates to the stream, you guys are crazy. So I, I, I will take anything then. <laughs> okay guys, enough stalling. Yeah, <laughs> we can give the non-subs the ability to punch each other. <laughs> okay. Washington residents. To legally operate a vehicle on public roadways, Washington residents must hold a Washington state driver license. You are a resident of... If you do any of the following, register to vote in the state, receive payments, financial aid, or other public welfare benefits from the state or local government, get any state license at the resident rate, pay in-state tuition fees as a student, and tend to live in the state for more than six months in any one year. Okay, you can ping me on Twitter later times. Or you can share the story in chat too. Uh, let's see, I'm registered to vote. I think my Twitch payments are technically from out of state. I do have a state ID. I've lived in Washington my whole life. Okay, new residents. You must get a Washington state driver license within 30 days of the day you become a resident. You may not take, wait, you may not need to take the knowledge test or the driving test if your out of state license is valid when you apply for a Washington license. If you're under 18, you must show proof that you've completed a driving training course meeting Washington state standards before we will issue a Washington immediate driver license. Visit this website for more information about our driver training requirements. Non-residents and visitors. If you are a non-resident or a short-term visitor, you can operate a motor vehicle in the state if you have a valid driver license from your home state, province, territory, or country, and you are at least 16 years old. This applies to members of the armed forces on active duty, for members of a foreign military on temporary duty with the armed forces, as well as their spouses and children. Students who are here to further the education and who are considered non-residents for tuition purposes. Employees of companies licensed to do business in Washington State, and who are here for a short time to receive or give job instruction. Foreign tourists, teachers, or business people who are here for up to one year. Yeah, this is already a lot of reading. <laughs> this is a lot! <laughs> Guys. You know like Mr. Beast's dream where he's like, I'm gonna say PewDiePie a million times. How did he not like lose his voice? All right, okay, I never actually watched the video, I just did the thumbnail. Okay. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to try voice acting and do like voiceovers. Because I not that it'd be easy, but I think it'd be fun. But having to read a whole book is kind of crazy. Okay. Real ID. By, oct by October 1st, 2020, standard driver licenses will no longer be an acceptable form of identification for boarding domestic flights or entering some secure federal facilities, like military bases and nuclear power plants. Go to, trans go to Transportation Safety Administration website for a complete list of federally approved forms of, of identification. Even though the effective date for Real ID is October 1st, 2020, it only affects people who want to travel by plane or access certain secure federal facilities. A standard driver license will work for the U.S. travel, like driving in Washington, across straight lines, or riding a train. Washington Enhanced Driver's License are Real ID compliant and valid for air travel within the United States. A full list of document options needed to obtain an Enhanced Driver License or ID card are available at this website. Okay, I'm going to skip the website parts. He types of driver licenses. Instruction permit. This permit allows you to operate a motor vehicle within Washington State while you are being supervised by a licensed driver with at least five years of licensed driving experience. The licensed driver must sit in the right seat passenger seat. This permit might be not be valid in another state. Contact the intended state of travel to determine if they honor the document. Intermediate driver license. If you are 16 or 17 and meet the requirements, we will issue an intermediate license with restrictions meant to ease you into your responsibilities as a driver. Standard driver license. This allows you to operate a motor vehicle on public roadways. Your license is valid for up to six years from the date of your last birthday. 
If you are 16 or 17 years old, you will first receive an intermediate driver license. The standard driver license is not real ID compliant. Yeah, Titans, you missed it, but make sure you copy and paste the copy pasta because we want to shit on the non subs. <laughs> yeah, copy pasta today. Dude, I'm gonna need to get more water. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> Enhanced driver license. Washington's enhanced driver license and identification card are real ID compliant and valid for air travel within the United States and can be used to cross borders of Canada, Mexico by land or sea. For more information, visit this website. Motorcycle or trike instruction permit. These allow you to operate a motorcycle or a three-wheeled three-wheeled motorcycle-based vehicle on public roadways. Commercial learner permit and commercial driver license. These allow you to operate a commercial vehicle on public roadways. I assume like Semi trucks and shit, right? Getting your license. You can get an instruction permit or a driver license at any driver licensing office. Some offices do not offer testing, so before you come in, be sure the one you plan to visit offers the testing you need. Yeah, how they took away the stupid testing stations. Okay, you know how I said before? Um, how I went in to apply for a learner's permit and they didn't offer the testing services? My friend went to the same clinic like two months ago and they offered testing. So in that two month window, they stopped offering knowledge testing. I didn't realize it was that soon. Like if I would have done it two months ago, I would have had like a lesser fee. So I had to be forty fucking dollars to take my knowledge test as a, at a private driving school. Annoying. <coughs> <sighs> In an effort to reduce wait times, legislation was passed to allow driving training schools licensed by the Department of Licensing and school districts that offer a traffic safety education program under the supervision of the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction to administer driving licenses examinations. A list of approved schools as well as driving license licensing offices can be found on our website. Please contact an approved school for their specific testing requirements. To be issued an instruction permit, you must be at least 15 and a half years old or 15 years old if you're enrolled in an approved driving training course. Pass the knowledge test unless enrolled in an approved driving training course. Complete the vision and medical screenings and pay an application slash examination fee. Wait. Wait. If I can't see, I can't drive? I think it... I think if your prescription is low enough, you have to have glasses, right? That that's it, right? Um If you are under 18, you must also bring your parent or guardian with you to the licensing office when you apply. They must show proof of identity and proof of relationship to you and must also sign a parental auth authorization af affidavit. When last names are different, we we, we fuck, I cannot talk. You can't drive without your glasses then? Dude, I can't see without my motherfucking glasses. <laughs> so they're staying on. Okay, when last names are different, we require more documents proving relationship. The permit is valid for one year and you can renew it. If you're enrolled in an improved driving training course, you can get an instructor permit at age 15. You'll need a waiver from your school, allowing you to apply for the permit up to 10 days before the class starts. The waiver allows you to be issued a permit without taking the knowledge test, however, You'll be required to take the knowledge and skills test as part of the, your future license application. Can I skip this shit talking about the minors driving? I'm honestly gonna skip it. I, I'm skipping the kid shit because I'm not a fucking kid. Oh, okay. Now I'm at the standard. And to get a standard driver's license, which I'm gonna get, guys, I'm gonna get that. You must be at least 18. Show us acceptable proof of identity and age. Provide your social security. Uh, show us acceptable proof of Washington State residence. Pay an application slash examination fee. Pass the medical and vision screenings, the knowledge, and the driving test. Turn in any other driving license, not have a currently suspended, revoked, or canceled driving privilege. Pay the licensing fee. You can get a first driver license without showing complete proof of identity. So you must show proof of your name, of, rec of record, and date of birth. You should sell your social security. No. 
<laughs> nice try, Jatters. Talking about leaking. Uh, you know how people will post pictures of like, Oh, here, I got my driver's license. You know, some people don't like cover like the essential information. Or another thing I saw is don't like take a picture with your key because people can like trace and copy the key shape. Um, I thought about it. Those people are branded, yeah, actually. And if I do get my license, I don't think I'll post like a picture of the car I'll get. Because I don't want people to know what car I drive. So I don't know if I'll post pictures like that. I'll just be like, guys, I got my license. People clap on Twitter or something. I don't think I'll post an actual picture. Um, because my dad, he likes to get used cars. And they're all fairly, let's say, unique. So I don't, I don't want to leak. Just post the VIN and registration number. Yeah, I'll be. <clears throat> Envision of medical screenings. We will check your vision before we issue a license. If corrective lenses are used to meet vision standards, your license will reflect this with the appropriate restriction. We will also we will also ask you whether you have a mental or physical condition or any take or taking any medication which can impair your ability to operate a motor vehicle. If so. We may require you to be examined by an ad care or medical specialist before you proceed with your application. Okay. So, as chatters know, I have difficulty moving sometimes. I.e., I feel numbness or brief paralysis. But I don't have a diagnosed condition yet. So, I don't have seizures. I just go numb sometimes. So, that was my biggest concern. Um... So I'm like, but I have to disclose that if I don't have a diagnosed condition. You know, if I don't snitch on myself, what's what could happen? Like, I don't know. I, I, I think I'll have to talk to my doctor about that, because... I figured you'd have to disclose that. I wouldn't think... Yeah, but I'm going to see my doctor in September anyway. So, I don't know. Because, like, imagine I go through all this effort and then I, I medically can't drive. I mean, that would suck. I don't know. I, because, like, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt anybody. Because, like, whenever I do get that paralysis, I can still, like, force myself to move. But there's, because, like, what will happen is, like, my arm will go stiff. Or like it'll like freeze here and I it like I struggle to move my hands or my elbow. But it doesn't happen often. So I think because my goal was to try and take my actual driving um like the actual driving test by the end of the month, so I, I for sure will be able to see my main doctor by then. But it's like, I don't know. It's not that I don't want to get in trouble for not disclosing it. I don't want to, like, hurt anybody, you know what I mean? Anyway, let's not overshare. <laughs> okay. The knowledge test. The knowledge test is used to ensure you understand road signs, traffic laws, and safe driving practices before you drive on the roadways. Everything you must learn to pass the test is in this guide. You may take the test at any approved driving training school in the state. If you take your test at a driving license officer, wait. If you take your test at a driving licensing office that offers testing, it'll be taken on a computer unless you need special accommodation. It is a multiple choice test with 40 questions, and you must correctly answer 32 of them to pass the test. A passing test score is good for two years. Okay, that's good. So I can take my knowledge and. Take the actual driving one, not right away. Share what you feel comfy with, yeah. Yeah. It's just hard, because, like, I'm not diagnosed yet, so it's, like... That's why, like, I can't get a job either. I've explained this before, but if you apply for, like, medical accommodations, 
if you don't have a diagnosis, like a doctor's note isn't as effective. So like your employer could still fire you for not performing up to par. So hopefully in a few months we'll get it all figured out. Maybe I'll be able to get some form of like government assistance, but dude, you know what I learned? You can get um disability, like government aid, if you're severely depressed or anxious. And I was like, dude. That'd be sick. <laughs> Dude, imagine getting money for being sad. That's crazy. But in order to do that, I was looking into the requirements. You have to be evaluated by a therapist for at least six months. You have to prove that your anxiety or depression is severe enough to where you can't, like, function daily, i.e., like, have a job, do stuff around the house. So basically, you have to be, like, really fucked up in order to get government aid for depression or anxiety. Like, it's very difficult to like prove and also be approved and evaluated for it but dude imagine <laughs> anyway guys this is a sub only stream that's why i'm sharing a bit more i mean it's nothing too crazy it's nothing i haven't like talked about before but yeah it's like the reason why i stopped working is because like my mental health was just like plummeting because of work um like i feel like everyone should be eligible for some form of government assistance especially if they're living at basically poverty wages like minimum wage is insane like it's not livable at all but like I hate the argument to where, oh, if everybody gets government aid, then they're not going to want to work. And it's like, well, if you give people enough money to, like, live and, like, provide for, like, basic housing or food, then they'd have more money to buy luxuries. So, therefore, it could potentially, over time, boost the economy. Like, it'll support smaller business and independence. So, it's like, I, I hate hearing the argument that UBI will kill the economy it's like no it's just gonna tax the rich more so just screw them honestly eat the rich yeah i mean like the current policies in place for government aid aren't good enough i think the only feasible one is ubi but it'll be take a long time for that to happen Okay, enough stalling. Let's go back to work. <laughs> Me and Rich. <laughs> okay, the driving test is used to ensure you are able to legally and safely drive on the roadways. An examiner will ride with you to ensure that the vehicle is safe to drive, that you maintain control of the vehicle, and that you obey the rules of the road. The examiner will not try to confuse or trick you. Bet. Kappa. And will not ask you to do anything that is illegal. <laughs> Imagine your driver's church is like, hey, you want to smoke some crack? <laughs> <laughs> you may ask questions before the test begins. But the once the test has actually begun, any unnecessary talking will only cause distractions for you and the examiner. Dude, what if I want to be social? Okay, what if I want to be buddy-buddy with my instructor? Scoring is done throughout the test. If you're testing for a Washington license, you must first pass the knowledge test. Bring a vehicle. Oh, shit. Dude, imagine. I know the private schools will provide a vehicle, depending on the school. But my dad, he has his big SUV. Dude, imagine if I roll up with that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That'd be crazy. There's, like, so much junk in it, too. The seats are all busted. But, I know if you take the test where they provide the vehicle, it costs more. It costs, like, an extra 50 bucks. Chatters. If you want me to get my license, I need, like, 50 subs right now. <laughs> Oilers magic? <laughs> Thank you.
They charge you to take the test? Yeah. Obvi? Wait. Maybe not. I don't know. Yours is free. Did you take it at the actual, like, licensing office? Because my license- my local licensing office doesn't, um... Doesn't offer testing anymore. How much is it on desktop for what? Gifting 50 subs? <laughs> no, I'm trolling. I'm trolling. I'm trolling. But that's like 250 bucks. I was trolling. If you fail two times, they charge you 20 for two more tries. I mean, I have to look it up. I think they charge you. Okay, let's actually look it up. That's gonna bother me. Okay. A driving test cost. Wait, what is the test called? Not the knowledge test. We do a little bit of trolling. Hi, welcome in, TJ. Huh. I don't know. I'm looking it up right now. I have to actually look at the driving school. I think it's because maybe it's a private school is why it costs more. Let's actually see. Because I, I had to pay 40 for my knowledge test. And at the actual licensing office online, it said it cost 25 So I got nearly a 100% upcharge because they didn't offer it at the fucking licensing office in my area anymore. Actually, fucking stupid. Let's see. Your permit test was free? Fuck you, Mac. I hate Washington. <laughs> yeah! Okay. So... At the school I'm looking at, it says road testing in our vehicle, $70. Bruh. Dude, I'm getting scammed. And then they have 30 minute warm up plus the road test for 120. Dude, I'm getting scammed. Cause like, no way, no way I can take it in my dad's fucking big SUV. No way. Nobody's gonna empty it out for me either. Dude, guys, I, I need 50 subs right now. <laughs> Dude, okay, $70? I can afford that. You know, I'll, I'll just- I'll do extra chores for my sister. I'll do that. Dude, that's- Jesus, I thought it'd be like 50. Bro. Okay, wait. Now that I think about it, the money I got from the subathon covers that whole test. So, chatters, I'm fine, I'm fine. The subathon went kind of crazy. Okay. Look how far we are in the book. We are like a millimeter in. If you fail, you're fucked. If you fail, you take it again. It's one attempt for $70, it said. Bruh. I can see if, like, the town next to me. But then I gotta take the bus and shit there, dude. I hate being poor. They are scamming you, yeah. Yeah, they are. I'm getting scammed. I mean, that's capitalism for you. Okay, let's go back to work. Uh, okay. If you're testing for a Washington license, you must first pass the knowledge test. Bring a vehicle. It must be legally licensed and registered. And it must have no defective parts. Okay. <laughs> no way I can bring the SUV then. <laughs> okay, not saying that it's busted, but... Um... <laughs> it breaks all the time. 
Imagine, imagine I bring it to this test and it fucking breaks down. How far are we in? Not even a millimeter. <laughs> you break at a gas station, the customers have derived you. Oh, not derived you. Scared you out of driving? I mean, I feel like people are just crazy. Anywhere you go, drivers are crazy. Yeah, so I would have to use their vehicle. And like, okay. Even if I went to a licensing center that had tests, I don't think they provide vehicles. So I think I'd have to go to a private school. Fuck! Guys, should we do another subathon? <laughs> should we go again? I don't have to stream barely the look, shut up. I'm stalling, okay? I'm trying to get my ad CPU in. I gotta get my hours and I skipped Tuesday stream. <clears throat> okay, present acceptable proof of liability insurance showing the- What? Wait. Another seven hour stream this month, maybe. Present acceptable proof of liability insurance showing the policyholder's name or the vehicle's description and the dates of insurance covering. Okay, what does that mean? Dude. I have no idea what the fuck that is. Okay. Only you, the examiner, a service animal, and an interpreter for the deaf or hard of hearing are allowed in the vehicle during the test. Foreign language interpreters, parents, children, or pets cannot be in the vehicle. <clears throat> during the test, you must show correct arm and hand signals when asked to do so. You may use automatic signals during the test. You must use hand signals when signal lights cannot be seen by other drivers. Signal even when no one is nearby to see it. <laughs> so only streams that ads every 30 minutes? I mean, I could. Do you want to do that? <laughs> Dude, three minutes of ads every 30 minutes? That'd be crazy. I mean, would it kind of force the non-subs watching to sub? Hmm. I don't think I can run more than three minutes every hour. Would I get in trouble? <clears throat> okay. Turn your head and look to the rear for motor vehicles, bicyclists, and pedestrians when they are backing when you are back backing your vehicle. If you cannot see the rear through the rear mirror, dude. If you cannot see the through the rear window, use the side windows and mirrors. Do not back the vehicle until you can do so safely. Stop completely at all stop signs and signals. Do not stop at crosswalks or beyond stop lines. Obey all rules of the road. Be attentive to surrounding motor vehicles, bicyclists, and pedestrians. Demonstrate safe driving habits throughout the test. If driving with a driving training school, you will need to schedule an appointment with the school to complete the required test. If testing with the Department of Licensing, you may make an appointment for the driving test only after you pass the knowledge test and provide a proof of residency. You should arrive 15 minutes early for your driving test. Let us know you have arrived if you have requested that you do so. <clears throat> your photograph! Your new driver license, instruction permit, or ID card will include a photo showing your full front view of your face. Before you take your photo, we will ask you to move anything that obstructs the full view of your face and head, like a hat, sunglasses, or hair in the face. If you choose to not remove it, your license will be marked not valid for identification. You will make exceptions for medical or religious reasons. As part of our ongoing efforts to uphold the integrity of Washington documents and prevent fraudulent activity as accurate and not obstructive facial recognition, FRS, is used. <gasps> oh my god. Surveillance state after 9-11? The FRS works behind the scenes after you've taken a young- taken your photo. Constructing a unique digital template developed from facial features that are difficult to alter. Eye sockets, cheekbones, and the sides of your mouth. Your unique template is then compared against all of the templates in our database and any possible matches that are detected will be, be reviewed by specifically trained Department of Licensing staff. Use of the service of the system and its results are not shared with other agencies without a court order unless DOL has determined that an applicant has committed a prohibited practice under RCW. So, TLDR, don't be bad because your face is monitored by the government. <clears throat> Dude, this is so much talking. I regret. I regret everything. Driver license renewal. Your renewed license can be valid for up to six years and will expire on your birthday. You may you may renew one up to one year before your license expires. 
We'll mail you, mail you a courtesy reminder notice to your address or record six weeks before your license expires. The notice will inform you if you may renew online by mail or if you missed instead renewed in person at a driver licensing office. If you renew in person, bring your current license or other proof of identity. If you wear contact lenses or glasses, bring them with you for the vision test. May, we may also require you to take the knowledge and driving tests. In addition to the cost of a license renewal, you will pay additional fees if you have motorcycle or CDL endorsements. If you renew your license more than 60 days after it has expired, you, may, you must pay an additional late fee. Replacement License If your license is lost, stolen, destroyed, or Ill illegible, you may apply for a replacement or at any driving license, driver licensing office. Okay, I cannot talk now. Change of address or name. You must notify the department within 10 days of an address change and legal name change. Name change may only be made in person. You must have bring documents providing identity in your new name. Washington State requires that all documents other than ID cards list your physical Washington resident ad address. Text to speech stream. Okay, you ever see those, um, uh, what do you call it? Those AI bots? Not deep fakes, but where it records people's voices. And then it can make like an AI generated version of their voice. This would be a perfect stream for that. Now that I think about it. Don't chatters. Don't don't be weird. Don't Is it synced? I get okay. Hello. I get so many comments. Less I get less of them now. Seeing that my mouth doesn't move when I talk and I, I literally I see it. it. I barely move my mouth. It's kinda crazy. Anyway, it it's weird. It's weird. Wait, I just realized. Wait, we need we need to chatters. We need to fix the copy pasta. Oh my god, this is crazy. You won't. I missed an asterisk. Believe what's going. I forgot to type in on. Why did nobody tell me? You can't miss this. All you need to do is hashtag sub for free with Prime. Chatters, new copy pasta. I fixed it. I fixed it. I fixed it. <laughs> copy and paste that new one. I forgot going on. <clears throat> Keeping your driver license. To keep your driver license, you must drive safely at all times. You can lose your license for... Driving or being in physical control of your vehicle while you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Refusing to allow a police officer to test you for alcohol. Leaving the scene of a collision in which you were involved without first identifying yourself. <laughs> Ooh, so if you hit run, you're dead. Not dead, but <laughs> you lose your license. Giving false information when you apply for a license. Being involved in a collision when you're unsure uninsured. We may suspend the license of an uninsured driver and or owner involved in a collision for up to three years. Oh, wow. Okay, bye, Lemon. Hope you have a good one, hon. Also, failing to settle a civil court judgment resulting from the collision can result in a suspension for 13 or more years? Okay. Guys, make sure you have insurance. Failing to appear and complete a re-examination that we have requested within the required period of time. Using a motor vehicle to commit a felony, or for causing the death of someone in a motor vehicle- wait. In a motor vehicle collision, so... In cases of manslaughter? I guess that makes sense. I mean, if you KI double ho hockey stick somebody in a car, it kinda makes sense to not let you drive anymore, right? Hmm. East side too. Hmm. Having too many moving violations on your driving record, reckless driving, or reckless endangerment of a roadway worker, racing, vehicular assault, or vehicular homicide, trying to elude a police vehicle. <gasps> what if I want to play GTA? <gasps> I will sing a song. Okay. Let us sing a song. Wait, let's finish this section first, <laughs> then I'll sing. <clears throat> <laughs> Leaving a gas station without paying for fuel you have pumped? Wait, really? It's actually kind of crazy. Um, failing to appear or failing to respond to traffic citation or notice of infraction for moving traffic violation. 
Driving where your license is suspended, revoked, cancelled, or denied. Carrying a license that shows a false name, incorrect information, or fraudulent alterations. Lending a license to another person or for using another person's license. <laughs> <laughs> using a driver license issued by another state while your driving privilege in Washington is suspended receiving two or more traffic offenses while driving with an intermediate license making, selling, or delivering a forged, false, counterfeit, altered, blank or unlawfully issued driver license or identification card interesting, I didn't leaving your gas station without pumping, paying for a few of pumped, that's interesting interesting okay, well chatter, it's, it's, I gotta sing a song so, oh, oh, so I thought I X'd out my streaming tab. <laughs> Let's find a song to sing. <laughs> I kind of want to do a weekend song. I'm going to try do Out of Time by the Weekend. It's going to be cringe. It's going to be bad. But I want to do it. So, chatters, if you could spam your favorite hype emotes, your favorite animated emotes, or your favorite sub emotes in the chat room. Because I assume everybody in chat is a sub. <laughs> I'm never singing WAP, guys. WAP at 2,000 subs. 2,000 subs. <laughs> okay, we're going to try. Your music has stopped. <clears throat> the last few months I've been working on me, baby. There's so much trauma in my life. I've been so cold to the ones who let me, baby. I look back now and I realize. And I... Remember when I held you, you led me with your drowning eyes to stay, and I regret I didn't tell you, now I can't keep you from loving him you made up your mind. Say I love you, girl, but I'm out of time. Say I'm there for you, but I'm out of time. Say that I care for you, but I'm out of time. Said I'm too late to make you mine. Out of See, it's bad. Like, his range is insane. I think it's also because, like, I don't like my higher pitch voice, and he, he does higher pitch voices for some of the lines. Oh my god, this is crazy! <laughs> okay, to make it up, I'll do another one. I'll do another one. <laughs> You're doing amazing. Thank you. I try. Uh, I love most of the singles from The Weeknd's most recent album. They're hard to sing. They're difficult. <laughs> I kind of want to try the chorus for Is There Someone Else? Guys, singing stream when? Is there someone else who knows? Cause I wanna keep you close. I don't wanna lose my spots. Cause I need to know if you're hurting him or you're hurting me. If I ain't what you I wanna be. 
Is this a monos or not? Ooh, or not? See, I think that one's a lot easier to sing, personally. Wait, wasn't a long term sub goal the singing stream? I think I removed that from the list because I did not want to do it. <laughs> I was like, no, I do not want to do a singing only stream. Have you had fried bread before? Huh? Like just fried bread? Like a donut? Is that a meme? Is that a joke? Is that a goof and a gaff? Um, but thank you to Issa for redeeming. I appreciate it. You know, back to study time. Pain? What? <laughs> what? I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, the lights in my room are bright. You love your mom's fried bread? Oh. If it's traditional food, then I don't know what it is. I've never had it. I had more Asian foods in my household because my mom is Japanese. But I'll look, I'll look into it later. Sorry, my shoulders season up. I'm not seizing. It's a bad phrase. I should not use that. It's like sometimes my right arm will twitch. It doesn't happen on stream as much because I usually am able to like suppress it a little bit. Okay, dude, there's so many pages. Oh my god. Use your my emails when you text. How? Like in Discord or something? I know Mac. What Mac does is they screenshot my emotes and put them on my Twitter replies. Is that what you do? Are you able- wait. iMessage lets you use them? What? Really? Okay, that's why I've never seen it, because I, I, I have Samsung. That's kind of cool. Guys, we need to spread my emotes everywhere. Oh, yeah, you can save the image. Oh, sorry. I, I'm just looking at this. If you right-click the emote, you can save it as an image, as a GIF. Okay, it's actually kind of cool. I didn't know that. How? I don't know. Ask, ask Wolf. I don't I don't know. That's actually kind of cool. Because I've only used Twitch emotes in Discord servers if they have, like, the emotes in their server enabled. That's actually kind of cool. Okay. Anyway, chatters, we need to spread my emotes everywhere that way we get more subs. Okay, all I want, I just want more subs. I, as you can see, I, I don't have nearly enough. I have too few subs, guys. <laughs> yeah, I have Samsung, so I don't know nothing about iMessage. Okay, let's go back to reading as you guys figure out how to spread my emotes everywhere. Failure to appear. A failure to no a failure to appear FTA notice is the result of failing to appear for, comply with, respond to, or pay a traffic infraction or criminal citation for a moving traffic offense. If you get a ticket, instructions to help you comply will be printed on the back. If you don't comply within 15 days, then the court notifies us and you will na mail you a notice of suspension. You then have 45 days to comply or we will suspend your driving privilege. <gasps> oh my god. That's crazy. Yeah, everybody, tell tell all your friends to make a Twitch account and sub to me with Prime. If you don't watch Twitch, just make an account, link your Twitch, and sub to me with Prime every month. Easy. <laughs> um, if you do not comply, we will suspend your driving privilege and you must not drive. You may be arrested and your vehicle may be impounded if you're caught driving while your privilege is suspended. A FTA violation will prevent us from issuing any license until it has been resolved and, and 
and an adjudic ad fuck adjudication is presented. Suspensions resulting from FT, FT violations will require a reissue fee in addition to the cost of your service. A re oh, there's so many difficult words in here. A reissuance of the license is required after your driving privilege has been released from a suspension. Uh, a blank offender slash kidnapping offender registration. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, what? State law requires state and local departments to notify the county sheriff or any person residing in the state who has been found or have committed or convicted of any blank or kidnapping offenses. Blank offenders and kidnapping offenders in Washington State must register within three business days of establishing or reestablishing residence. The duty to register under this requirement applies to those convicted under the laws of another state, foreign country, federal and military statutes, or Washington State law. Out-of-state offenders must register if convicted of any federal or out-of-state offenses that will be classified as a blank or kidnapping offense under Washington state law or the state of conviction unless the court in the state of conviction that has determined the offender should not be required to register. These persons must register with the sheriff, with the sheriff of the county in which they reside. Failure to register must reside in criminal prosecution. Contact your county sheriff for information. Dude, how, how can they let kidnappers derive? You're just giving them the way to take more people. What? What? So they can still drive. They just have to like self-report and tell their local sheriff office that, hey, I did these crimes, but I can still drive. <laughs> I think, okay. Isn't that fucking weird? How people who are like criminalized like molesters or like blank offenders or like kid touchers when they move to a new place i think it's required in my area they have to like put a notice or like talk to all their neighbors physically and inform them oh i'm a i'm an offender or i touch kids and it's like how how how, how can these people be allowed like in public like i understand if they went through therapy and the medical like screenings and shit to where they they won't do it again. But it it's wild. And also the people who are charged with those things, they don't get charged for a long amount of time. It's like crazy. Yeah, I've got a few letters in the mail from offenders. They're like, hey, I live two blocks away from you. It's like Oh well. Nice. It's almost like the American criminal justice system is protecting certain individuals. Or certain people who do certain crimes. Hmm. He said to. Hmm. Okay. Let's go. Can we go to the fun shit? Ugh, I hate reading all this jargon. Other licensing services. Identification cards. We issue photo identification cards to non-drivers of any age. You must show the same identification that we require for a driver license. It's not on the test. You're right. <laughs> okay. I think the rest is actual shit that's on the test. I, I should have just skipped that first chapter, huh? <laughs> I feel like those are only applicable to certain individuals or when you're actually applying. <gasps> Hi, hacker. Are you a sub? Oh, previously subbed. Oh, damn. Okay, well, hacker, I have to gift you a sub on mobile. Because, but thank you. Oh wait, hacker, you can't type in chat. Fuck. Oh. God damn it. Okay, hacker, hacker, I need you. Type in chat really quick. Type in chat really quick so I can click on your name. Type in chat, type in chat quickly. Quickly, quickly! <laughs> quickly! Because <laughs> I can't gift you a sub unless I can click on your name. <laughs> quickly! <laughs> Here. 
you're letting there you go okay <laughs> quickly <laughs> okay thank you Arthur. <laughs> okay let's see will it go through hold oh my god stop Just There we go! There we go, hacker. You can now chat. Okay, sub only one back. <laughs> but thank you for redeeming, hacker. Enjoy your monthly sub. Or enjoy your gifted sub. Let's go! Meg Esports has gifted you a tier 1 to the chat. Welcome in, hun. See, look now. Now Meg Esports is on the leaderboard, number 9, guys. The air got really dirty in here. What the fuck? Now Mac is being classed as saying non-subs are worse. But thank you for redeeming, Hacker. Okay. Um, since you just came in, Hunter, we're, we are learning how to drive today. Wait. Oh, shit. How many subs are we at? I think I fell off. Dude, I fell off five subs. <laughs> we're at 106. How far are we now? Two millimeters. Okay, back to rating. <clears throat> Before you drive. Chapter 2, page 1. Your safety and that of the public can depend on what you do before and while driving. Things like adjusting the seat mirrors, using safety belts, checking your vehicle, locking your doors, maintaining a clear view, and securing items in and on the road or in and on the vehicle minimizes the risk you present on the road. Two hours in the stream, barely in the book. We took a test. We take a pre-screening test. So. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. Any chatters who actually read this book, how long did it take you? And uh, consider that I have a chat room that I can babysit too. <laughs> Don't forget that. <clears throat> okay. Understand risk. Risk is generated... By all three components of the highway transportation system the driver the vehicle and the roadway environment even though risk is always present driving safety can resume it as a driver you should try to do everything possible to reduce risk the more risk factors that are present the more likely it is that you will be involved in a collision keeping the vehicle in good working order and wearing seatbelts can reduce risk safe driving habits will also protect you and reduce risk did you do good on the pretest yeah i think i only got three out of like 21 questions wrong so Okay, we'll see you in a bit, Issa. Took an hour and a half to get to chapter 3. Then you should shut the fuck up. Because we're on track. I've only been actually reading for like an hour. So, buzz off. <laughs> Stop giving me shit. Like I said, I gotta babysit you motherfuckers too. Okay. <clears throat> Each year, from 2009 to 2011, an oh, average of 469 people died and 2,421 people were seriously injured on Washington roadways. That is not... Stop. <laughs> Even though every collision is different, here are the most common factors that are present in fatal crashes. Driver impairment, 50.1%. Running off the roadway, 43.7%. Speeding, 39.5. Young driver, 16 to 25. Me. People, yo. Me. Wait, do I have the nib? What is snack time? In one minute. Do I have people, yo? I don't. There's a people emote where it's like, people, yo. And he just got his hand up. But yeah, talking about snack time chatters, we are nearly two hours in the stream. So it's time for me to run a few minutes of ads. If you're watching the stream and you're not sub, get fucked. Hashtag sub for free with Prime, and you can enjoy all the bonus content. Um, get some water, get a snack if you need. We'll see some of you guys in a few. For chatters, get something to eat. What the fuck is that about Cokes? What the fuck? What? Pee pee hug? Ew. Ew. Um, setting up a buffer stream. I personally use I 
I use stream stream labs for my on screen alerts and then stream elements for chat chat alerts. I think stream elements the UI for the bot is better than stream labs. Okay, <laughs> back to work. Driver distraction 30.3%. Unrestrained occupants 24.8 what? Are they like are the little 3-year-olds like jumping out of their seats and causing crashes? Errors at intersection 20.6. Unrestrained occupants? Oh, and fatal crashes. Okay, so that means... Oh, that's actually kind of sad. Sorry. Like... Like, if your kid isn't buckled in right, they fucking die. Uh. Okay. Overall, at least one of the top three factors were present in 72% of the all traffic fatalities and 17% involved in all three. Young drivers face increased risk due to their inexperience. Motor vehicles crashes are the leading cause of death for young people aged 16 to 25 in Washington. Drivers in this age group have the highest crash rate and the highest rates of speeding. Compare driving and distracted driving of any driver age group in the state. From 2009 to 2011, nearly 35% of traffic fatalities involved a young driver aged 20, 16 to 25. In that same time frame, young drivers were involved in 38% of all serious injury collisions, even though they only represented 40% of the driving population. Fuck. Dude, this is not- this is not helping. When was this written? What year? Okay, this doesn't say anywhere what year this was printed. But in one of the opening, like, letters, it says in 2018. So this probably came out, like, 2020. <clears throat> okay. If you are a young driver, you should be aware of the increased risk you face. Following all traffic laws and making safe driver decisions will help you avoid a crash. Yeah. Yeah, guys, be careful. Insurance required. If you operate a motor vehicle registered in the state, you must have liability insurance and carry proof that you have such insurance. Drivers of government vehicles, motorcycles, and common or contract carrier vehicles are exempt from this insurance requirement. You must have an automobile liability policy or bound from a state approved insurance or, or surety company that provides the following. <coughs> $25,000 or more payable for the bodily injury or death of one person in a collision in which only one person was injured or killed. 50000 or more payable for the body, body, bodily injury or death of two or more persons in any one collision. And $10,000 or more payable for injury to or destruction of property of others in any one collision. Check the vehicle. Your safety and minimizing risk on the road starts with the vehicle you're driving. It is the duty of drivers to make certain that the vehicles they drive are safe to operate. A vehicle that is not working properly creates risk, is unsafe, and costs more to run than one that is maintained. Dude, we can't afford to buy a new Lambo every year. It can also break down or cause a collision. If your vehicle is not working well, you might not be able to get out of an emergency situation. A vehicle in good working order can give you an extra safety margin when you need it most. <clears throat> you should follow the recommendations in your vehicle's owner's manual for routine maintenance. Some you can do yourself and some must be done by a qualified mechanic. A few simple checks will help prevent trouble on the road. Braking system. Only your brakes can stop your vehicle. It is very, very dangerous if they are not working properly. If they do not seem to be working properly, or are making a loud noise, smell funny, or the brake pedal goes to the floor, have a mechanic check them. Lights. Make sure that turn signals, brake lights, tail lights, and the headlights are operating properly. These should be checked from the outside of the vehicle. Brake lights tell the other road users that you are stopping and turn signals tell them you are turning. Passenger trucks, cars, vans, and sport utility, sport utility vehicles Manufactured after 1993 must have a third rear brake light mounted high in the center of the vehicle. A missing light headlight can shine where it does not help you and may blind other drivers. If you are having trouble seeing at night or if other drivers are constantly flashing their headlights at you, have a, mecha have, a have a mechanic check the headlights. Windshield and wipers. Damaged glass can easily break in a minor collision or when something hits the windshield. Have a, have a, have a damaged windshield repaired or replaced. Windshield wipers keep the rain and snow off the windshield. 
Some vehicles also have wipers for rear windows and headlights. Make sure all wipers are in good operation operating condition. If the brakes are not clearing water well, replace them. <coughs> tires. Worn or bald tires can increase your stopping distance and make turning more difficult when the road is wet. Unbalanced tires and low pressure cause faster tire wear, reduce fuel economy, and make the vehicle harder to steer and stop. If the vehicle bounces, the steering wheel shakes, or the vehicle pulls to one side, have the mechanic check it. <coughs> Worn tires can cause hydroplaning and increase the chance of a flat tire. Check the tread with a penny. Stick the penny into the thread head first. If the thread does not come at least to link its head, the tire is illegal and unsafe and you need to replace it. Check tire air pressure with an air pressure gauge when the tires are old or cold. Check the vehicle owner's manual for the recommended pressure. Steering system. If the steering is not working properly, it is difficult to control the direction you want to go. If the vehicle is hard to turn or does not turn when the steering wheel is first turned, have the steering checked by a mechanic. Never turn your vehicle's ignition to the lock position while it is in motion. This will cause the steering to lock if you try to turn the steering wheel and you will lose control of your vehicle. Suspension System Your suspension helps you control your vehicle and provides a comfortable ride over varying road surfaces. If the vehicle continues to bump after or to bounce after a bump or a stop, or it is hard to control, you may need new shocks or suspension parts. Have a mechanic check it. Dude, the suspension in my dad's SUV is dog shit. It's so bad. It's so bad. And it's like, I I hate driving and like being a passenger in a car. Because like, like I said, all the cars that we have are like used cars. Like, does your dad like this SUV? Of course he does. He loves it. Like he, it's, it can carry like a half size camper. It can lug tractors on a trailer. It's a very strong vehicle, but... No one else wants to drive it. I mean, that's just the way of the game. I would fight my dad if he drove a car like that. I mean... <laughs> I told my dad, if he's gonna help me look for a used car, I want I want a PT Cruiser. Kinda cringe, but I wouldn't mind a PT Cruiser. Because we used to have one, but we had to get rid of it because we had to replace the um, the engine. So he decided to resell it. Um, but I like the B2 Cruiser. It's cozy. So I think that that's the kind of car I want or something in that similar vein. And uh, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but you know the game you play when you're younger? And you're like, hey, I think it was like, it was either PT Cruisers or like some other small car. And you'd be like, oh, red one, and you punch him. Or blue one, and you punch your friend in the car. Yeah, I agree. I feel like the bar for being able to drive is very low on the intelligence scale. But the book is so fucking confusing sometimes. And like, when we did the practice test earlier, some of the questions are worded in a way that are meant to like trip you up. And like, kind of force you to like, pay attention. But... Yeah. <laughs> okay, back to it. Back to work. Exhaust system. The exhaust system helps reduce the noise from the engine, helps cool the hot gases coming from the engine, and moves these gases to the rear of the vehicle. Gases from a leaky exhaust can cause death inside a vehicle in a very short time. Never run the motor in a closed garage. If you sit in a vehicle with a motor running for a long time, open a window. Some exhaust leaks are easily heard, but many are not. This is why it's important to have the exhaust system checked periodically. Engine. A poorly running engine may lose power that is needed for normal driving in emergencies, may not start, gets poor fuel economy, pollutes the air, and could stall when you're on the road causing you in a traffic problem. Follow the procedures recommended in the owner's manual for maintenance. Horn. The horn may not seem like it is important for safety, but as a warning device, it could save your life. Only use your horn as a warning to others. Dude, okay. I've been in a few, like, rideshare programs, like a Lyft or an Uber. 
And there's been so many times where the driver will be like pissy and will like honk at people for no reason. Like I was in a lift ride, I think two weeks ago, and the guy, he honked his horn twice in the whole ride. And the first time was the car in front of him, the light turned green and the guy didn't go fast enough. So he honked at him. And then the second time was he missed a light, like it turned red, right? As he, like he could have made it, but he chose to stop and he honked again. So, yeah, so I haven't had any two crazy drivers. I think the scariest one I was in, um, because the road in front of my house, you, what people will do, because they'll, like, turn in front of the house and make a U-turn, but it's technically an illegal U-turn because there's not enough, like, the blind spot because it's, like, a T. Um, there's an immediate blind spot, so you're not supposed to make a U-turn there. And the guy, he made that U-turn, and he nearly collided into another car that was going like, so, okay. So if this is the road that my house is on. This guy, he made a U-turn like this and a car was coming this way. And there was like, no joke, like a foot between these two cars. And it would have hit it on my side because the guy was coming on the passenger side. So it would have collided right into me. And I was just, it was like a 40 minute Uber ride too, or Lyft ride. And... Uh, it was scary. I obviously reported the guy. Because I was like, fuck this guy. Like, he wasn't even paying attention. He didn't even look to, like, check his blind spot as he made that illegal U-turn. So I filed a report. And I got a follow-up saying, like, oh, this guy's been suspended for two weeks. And I was like, yeah, fuck that guy. So, like, anytime I get into a Lyft or an Uber that's from my house to anywhere, I always tell them, like, hey, can you please go straight down my road? Do not make a U-turn. It's an illegal U-turn. And they're like, okay, cool. Because, um, <laughs> which side is the blind spot, your mom? Um... Because, like, you know how those ride share, it tells them which way to go. And whenever they pick me up from my house, it tells them to go straight down my road. Not to make U-turn. But half of them will ask, can I make U-turn? And I'll be like, no. It's a legal U-turn, no. I almost got hit one time by a rider. And they're like, oh, okay, never mind. Um, but yeah. I hope that guy got suspended, because honestly, fuck that guy. And he was in a bad mood the rest of the ride, too. Like, he was pissy as shit. Cause like he almost got us into a crash and it was his fucking fault. Like dude. That's why like if I ever do like I've considered it. If I do get my license, I would love to do like DoorDash or Uber Eats or something, because then I don't gotta deal with people. Um I don't have to deal with passengers. I just gotta deal with like shitty like delivery sometimes, but that's fine. I think it'd be tolerable. Like I think that'd be a good transition into service work again so i don't think i'll be able to get any art job for at least another year but yeah chatters if we hit a million subs i can open an art studio and live my dream so <laughs> oilers i think to do doordash you can do any vehicle as long as it's clean I think if you're doing rideshare, like Uber or Lyft, then your vehicle has to be fairly new. Anyway, enough. Let's go back to studying, guys. <laughs> this might actually be a fucking seven hour stream. <coughs> oh, for Uber Eats, it has to be ten years? Oh, okay. Well, I don't like Uber as much anyway. I would do Lyft. Or no, I'd do DoorDash. I feel like customer service is better on DoorDash. Can't you bike? You can bike for those delivery services, but... Eh. I get so scared. Because uh, the sidewalks in my area are not good. Like, I feel like if I hit a bump, everything would fall out of my basket or whatever. Like, I know they give you, like, a tote. Like, a little cooler. And I feel like if I'm going to do delivery, biking would take too long. Oh no. Okay, stop. Stop distracting me, guys. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, loose objects. Unsecured objects such as groceries or luggage can become dangerous in a collision or a sudden stop. Put loose objects into the vehicle storage compartments or trunk. If this isn't possible, secure the objects in place. Make sure there are no objects at your feet or under your seats that can roll under the pedals or distract you while you drive. Litter. 
The fines for littering are severe. Oh, they're severe. Uh oh. You're gonna finish the book? Yeah, we're gonna read the whole fucking book. I have my test on Wednesday, so I have to read the whole book. <laughs> Vehicle drivers and passengers should always properly dispose of all waste paper, glass, plastic, and potentially dangerous materials. Guys, don't litter. The... The fines are severe. Watch it be like, what, 50 bucks? A secure your load. Driving with an unsecured load is both against the law and extremely dangerous. Drivers who fail to properly secure their load may face a costly fine and jail time if they cause it to crash. According to the Washington State Department of Ecology, roughly 40% of highway litter comes from unsecured loads, which causes hundreds of crashes per year on our roadways. A load must be securely fastened and is only considered con secure when nothing can slide, shift, fall, or sift onto the roadway or become airborne. Dude, uh, my uncle, this is years ago, he rented a car from the airport and he was here for like a week. Nothing happened. When we were driving to the airport, uh, we were on the highway. And this semi-truck that was transporting gravel, some gravel came off the truck and there was, it fell on our car. So there was like tens and tens of pings on the front windshield glass on the car. And it's like, damn. Of course on the rental car. Like, come on. Yeah, it was a bummer. He was fucking pissed too. <laughs> Okay. To secure the load in your vehicle or trailer, tie it down with rope, netting, or straps. Tie large objects directly to your vehicle or trailer. Consider covering the entire load with a sturdy tarp or netting. Don't overload your vehicle or trailer. Always double check your load to make sure it's secure. Don't forget the animal should also be properly secured. Before you drive, ask yourself these questions. Is there any chance of debris or cargo falling or blowing out of my vehicle? Is your load secured on the back, sides, and top? What would happen if my load had to break suddenly? And I hit a bump or another vehicle hit me. What about my loaded vehicle driving through my neighborhood? Would I feel safe if I were driving behind my vehicle? Hmm. What did he do? Oh, there's nothing he really do. He just had to pay a fine when he went to the airport to return the car. So it's a bummer. I think he had to pay like an extra probably 150 bucks or something. So, Sag. Okay, I'm skipping this section to talk about Maria's Law, which is basically it's a crime if you don't attach your or secure your ship properly. Okay. Clean glass surfaces. It is important that you're able to see through the windows, windshield, and mirrors. Here are some things you can do to help keep the windshield clean. Bright center headlights and a dirty windshield can make it hard to see. Carry a liquid cleaner and a paper or cloth so you can clean your windshield whenever it is necessary. Keep your window washer bottle full. Use antifreeze wash in areas where the temperature could fall below freezing. Keep the inside of your windows clean, especially if anyone has been smoking in the vehicle. Smoking causes a film to build up on the inside glass. So chat, don't smoke or vape inside your fucking car. Not cool. Um, what happened to Maria? Um, in 2004, a young woman was critically injured on I-405 in Renton when an entertainment center fell from the back of a trailer being pulled by a vehicle in front of her. A two by six foot piece of particle board flew through her windshield, hitting her in the face. She permanently lost her eyesight and has endured numerous surgeries, including complete facial reconstruction. Um, yeah, so she got fucked up. Even vaping? No, I don't know. It doesn't say vaping, but I feel like it would still leave residue. Um, clear snow, ice, or frost from all windows before driving. Dude, when I go out to. Or if we have to go out when it's snowing, and you see, we saw one motherfucker just clear the snow from, like, if this is our windshield, right? They only cleared snow from in front of them, and there was snow on all other windows on their car. Like, actually brain dead. <clears throat> Do not hang things from your mirror or clutter the windshield with decals. They could block your view. <gasps> but, what if I want to have an anime girl on my back window? Hmm. Keep the headlights back up, brake and taillights clean. Dirt on the lens can reduce the light by 50%. Adjust seats and mirrors. We should always check and adjust your seats and mirrors before you start to drive. 
You may not drive with more than three people in the front seat if it blocks your view or interferes with the control of your vehicle. You should have clear vision in all directions. All controls should be within reach and at least one third of the steering should, should be between your hands. Adjust your seat so that you're high enough to clearly see the road. If necessary, use the seat cushion. Dude, I'm gonna need a booster seat, to be honest. <laughs> Do not move the seat so far forward that you cannot easily steer. You should sit so the airbag will hit you in the chest if there's a collision. Also, sit so you can touch the floor below the brake, pedal with your feet. Adjust your rear view mirror and side mirrors. You should be able to see the back window with the rear view mirror. Adjust the side mirror so that you can see a small amount of the side of your vehicle when you can lean forward slightly. This will help you see the traffic behind you. Okay, I actually have to take note of that. <laughs> if you have a day nightmare, make sure to set for the time of day you are driving. Heat restraint or head restraints are designed to prevent whiplash if you are hit from behind. It should be adjusted so the head restraints can contact the back of your head. Always use seatbelts and child restraints. In Washington State, it is illegal to drive or be a passenger without properly wearing a seatbelt or using child safety restraints. Wait. It's illegal to be a passenger without a seatbelt? Imagine, imagine. Imagine the kid goes to Juvie for not being in a booster seat. <laughs> That'd be crazy. No feet in the doctor. My mom, my mom does it all the time and it annoys me. Like, it genuinely annoys me. Because if you get hit and you're in that position, you're fucked. Like, you're just, you're just gonna go, like... If you're, like, you're gonna go... Duh! And you're dead. Anyway. <laughs> Buckling up correctly is the single most effective thing you can do to protect yourself in a crash. Being correctly buckled helps keep you secure in the vehicle. Being thrown out is almost always deadly. Regardless of how brief the drive, always fasten your seatbelt to make sure all passengers are correctly using seatbelts, child safety restraints, and booster seats. Also, remember to lock the vehicle's doors. Locking reduces the risk of doors opening during a sudden swerve, braking, or crash. Oh, okay. I didn't think about that. If you lock the doors, then... That does make sense. Okay. I don't know why I'll... Even when the car is in park, I still buckle my seatbelt. Like, let's say we're at the gas station and my dad runs inside to get a snack and I'm in the car. I will still keep my belt buckled. Because I, I have a fear that even if I'm in a car... I'll still get hit even if we're parked. I don't know. You know, anxiety brain. You can get hit from behind anytime. Stop! I mean, stop. No, you're just validating my anxiety, so stop it. Stop it. <laughs> okay. Specifically, the law states every person 16 years of age or older operating or riding in a motor vehicle shall wear the safety belt assembly in a properly adjusted and securely fastened manner. Driver can be cited and fined if not properly wearing a seatbelt. Driver will also be fined for any passengers under age 16 who are not properly wearing a seatbelt or secured in a child safety restraint. Passengers over the years of 16 are responsible for wearing their own seatbelts and for paying any fine. Keep your seatbelt well indoors too. <laughs> airbags are designed to work with seatbelts, not replace them. People who are unrestrained when an airbag deploys risk serious injury or death because they will not be properly positioned to benefit from cushioning the air airbags provide. It chatters. Make sure you have your fucking seatbelts on. Okay? It's recommended to use a booster until you're 12. Really? I think early it said 8 or 4 or 9, right? Oh, wait. If you're in a different state, the regulation could be different, Hacker, because this is the Washington book. Yeah, I think... How old are you in 6th grade? Because I used to booster seat till I was in 6th grade. And I had to be like 11 or 12, right? <laughs> yeah, my ass was too big for my booster seat when I got to 6th grade. So, like... <laughs> I was, like, too fat. And my ass would not fit in the booster seat. Oh, I had to just pop my back. <sighs> okay. If your vehicle has a two-part seat belt system, be sure to wear and properly adjust both parts. If you have an automatic shoulder belt, be sure to buckle your lap belt as well. I'd wait until you're 22. Okay. Well, I'm obviously over the weight limit. And I am 5'2". So I think I'm in the clear. 
I don't think my ass would fit in a little kitty booster seat anymore. I think it said you can drive with a cushion if you're not tall enough, but I don't know about a booster seat. How to buckle up correctly for the best safety. Put the shoulder belt across the middle of your chest and away from your neck. Adjust the lap belt across your hip bones below your stomach. So under your beer gut, okay? <laughs> Never put the shoulder belt below, behind your back or under an arm. The Occupant Protection Law in Washington State is primarily in, is primary enforcement, meaning a law enforcement officer can stop and cite drivers when they or their passengers are seen to not be wearing the seatbelt. <gasps> Uh-oh. <clears throat> Restraining children. Car crashes are the number one killer of children 1 to 12 years in the United States. The best way to protect child passengers in the car is to put them in the right seat for them and use it the right way every time you or others travel with a child. Select a child safety registry based on your child's age and size. Choose the seat that fits in your vehicle and use it correctly every time. Always refer to your specific car seat manufacturer's instructions and read the vehicle owner's manual on how to install the child safety registry using the seatbelt or latch system. Also check height and weight limits. To maximize safety, keep your children in the child safety restraint that is right for them for as long as possible. As long as the child fits within the random factor's height and weight requirements. See? I was way too fat. I should have been taken out of the booster when I was like 10. <laughs> oh, this is so much talking. Thank you to anybody who, who is here right now. I appreciate you guys hanging out. We are now this far into the book. Look at that, we're so far. Okay, I'm gonna skip the booster seat part because I don't have any kids and I'm not planning on having kids for like ever. And I don't have any younger kids, like relatives in my family that live nearby, so. I think I can skip that. <laughs> You're watching the Fall Guys stream? Dude, that was a banger stream. I almost got two crowns. It's kind of crazy. The okay, Rules of the Road. Chapter 3, page 1. There are traffic rules that say where, when, and how fast you can drive. These rules can help Keep traffic moving safely. Rules of the road include traffic control devices right away and parking rules. Guys, this is gonna be a good chapter, okay? Are you gonna be on the You're gonna be on the edge of your seats? It's gonna be so exciting. Traffic control devices. Traffic control devices include traffic signals, signs, pavement markings, and roundabouts. Traffic control also can be provided by law enforcement, highway construction, or maintenance personnel or school crossing guards. You must obey directions from these persons. If a traffic signal is not working, come to a complete stop, then yield to traffic as if it were a four-way stop. Proceed only when you see it is safe or when a police officer, firefighter, or traffic control person directs you. Traffic signals. Traffic signals are lights to tell you where and when to stop and go. <coughs> a green light means you can go if it is safe. A yellow light means caution and red light means stop. Who knew? <laughs> I thought you did a sleeping stream. Imagine. How crazy would that be? I mean, how boring would a sleeping stream be? Like, everyone is like, oh my god, Megan, do a sleeping stream. I'm joking, but you, you should do it. And it's like, it'd be so boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, the way that Wolf worded the message was, it could easily be misinterpreted, so it's fine. Are you deciding to do a sleepy stream right now? No. I, I cleaned my bed sheets today. They're in the wash, so I can't go on my bed right now. And I'm gonna use that excuse anytime anyone brings up a sleeping stream. Bring out my trump card. <laughs> Traffic lights are usually at intersections and are red, yellow, and green, from top to bottom or left to right. There are some intersections and other locations where there are single green, yellow, or red lights. A green traffic light means you can go through the intersection. 
You must yield to emergency vehicles and others as required by law. If you are stopped and the light turns green, you must allow crossing traffic to clear the intersection before you go ahead. If you are turning left, you may turn only... Wait, you may turn but only when it's safe to do so. Oncoming traffic has the right away. Be alert for signs that prohibit left turns. A green arrow means you can safely turn in the direction of the arrow. There should be no oncoming or crossing traffic while the arrow is green. When turning left or right, watch for pedestrians or bicyclists crossing in front of your vehicle. You must stop for pedestrians or bicyclists if they are in or within one lane. Wait. Okay. Shouters, if you guys drive. If there's a pedestrian going through the crosswalk, and let's say there's three lanes that they have to cross, do you wait till the person finishes crossing? Or if they cross in front of you, do you go? Like, do they train people to wait till the person has completely crossed the crosswalk? Or, like, okay, let's say... This, the person starts here, they end here, your car is here, and as the person is crossing, if they pass you, do you go? I feel like the book is going to talk about that later, but I get so anxious because what kind of a stop? It depends on the stop now. Fuck. <laughs> Usually it's a stop with... I'm, I'm trying to think about, like, my daily routes. Because there's a few times... Because in order to get on the trail that I bike on... I have... There's, like, a crosswalk I have to go on... And the cars turn left and I almost get hit there. Because um, they don't look. Because they think... when the, Oh, when I turn left, I have right away, but I don't. Because there's pedestrians. Okay, if someone is in the crosswalk and it's not a red light. Or it's a red line they're walking on. If it's not a red light. Like, if they can turn, or if they can go. The book probably talks about it. <laughs> okay, it says right here, right here. Okay. When turning right or left, watch for pedestrians or bicyclists crossing in front of your vehicle. You must stop for pedestrians or bicyclists if they are in or within one lane of your half of the roadway. So, let's bring up the example if it's like a three-lane road, right? So, if I'm crossing here, then the people... It, okay, I need to put the book down. So if I'm crossing here in front of the first lane, so let's say the three lanes are here, the person here can still turn left. But once I they, I get here in the center, then they can't go because I'm within one lane, right? That That's what the book is saying, right? Because it said within one, within one lane on your half of the road. If they are almost done crossing, like about to touch the sidewalk, I'll go. But they need to be on the farthest side of the street. Yeah, okay, that makes sense to me. Because obviously you're not going to hit them. Like, at that point, you're probably like two or three lanes away from them. Okay. I, I'm just... I think that one's name right here. Where it says, you must stop for pedestrians or bicyclists if they're in or within one lane of your half of the roadway. That makes sense. Because if you walk everywhere, because one, one example for me is there's this one road, it's, it's a three lane, so there's, so it's three lanes, you cross here, there's one lane that goes left, one lane that goes right, and then the oncoming one is to get onto the highway. So it's got one going away and two going the opposite way. So if I'm here and I'm about to cross, the people here wanting to, to turn right to go on the highway will still go sometimes. And then sometimes they'll wait for me to cross. Yeah, there was one time on that specific crosswalk, I dropped my phone when I was on my bike. <laughs> and cars were still like turning right and 
Some cars almost rode over my phone. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, I think it's kind of my fault because I was wearing a coat with very small pockets that day. But... My thing is, when I drive, I'm going to wait till they're back on the sidewalk. Because, like, I don't, I don't want to hit them at all. Like, I don't want, like you said, if they drop something or if they trip. Like, I don't, I want to, I don't wait till they get on the sidewalk completely. Oh, dude, the people who, like, when you're crossing, they'll still, like, inch slowly towards you, like, the rolling stop. I hate, my dad does it, and I hate it so much. I hate it. Dude, look, we're this far, guys. We, we're gonna, we're speed running right now. <sighs> okay, drivers must take all necessary precautions to avoid injury when approaching users of wheelchairs, power wheelchairs, white canes, and guide dogs or service animals. Drivers who fail to take such precautions may be liable and damages for any injury caused to users of these devices. <clears throat> A steady yellow traffic light means the traffic light is about to change to red. You must stop it if, if it is safe to do so. If you're at the intersection when the yellow light comes on, do not stop, but continue through the intersection. A flashing yellow light means slow down and proceed with caution. A yellow arrow means that the protection of a green arrow is ending, and if you're turning in the direction of the arrow, you should prepare to stop and get the right away to oncoming traffic before <coughs> turning. A flashing yellow arrow means left turns are allowed, but you must yield to oncoming traffic, including bicyclists and pedestrians. Nice try, hacker. I literally almost glanced, but I looked at my viewfinder instead. And nice try. My Pikachu actually has been falling a few times on stream. Because, like, I had to retape it. So, nice try. You think your old tricks will work, but they won't. <laughs> okay. A steady red traffic light means stop. You must wait until the traffic light turns green and there is no crossing traffic before you may move ahead. If you are turning right, you may turn after coming to a full stop if it is safe and if there is no sign prohibiting the turn on a red light. You may also turn left onto a one-way street with the traffic moving left after coming to a full stop if there is no sign prohibiting turns, wait, prohibiting turns on a red light. Be careful of pedestrians and bicyclists crossing in front of your vehicle. A flashing red traffic light means the same as a stop sign. You must come... To a full stop and they may proceed when it is safe to do so. A red arrow means you must stop and you cannot go in the direction of the arrow. You may proceed when the red arrow goes out and a green arrow or light moves on. If you are turning right, you may turn after coming to a complete full stop if it is safe and there is no sign prohibiting the turn on a right arrow. You may also turn left onto a one-way street with traffic moving left and after coming to a full stop. If there is, n if there is no sign prohibiting turns on a red arrow where it is safe to do so. Driving... Drivers will lead to crossing bicyclists and pedestrians. Oh my god, there's a spider behind you! Oh my god! Nice try. Okay, traffic signs! Traffic signs tell you about traffic rules, hazards, where you are, how to get where you are going, and where services are located. The shape and color of those signs show the type of information they provide. The inside cover of this guide shows the shape and colors of common signs. Oh! Okay. Warning signs. These signs are usually yellow with black lettering or symbols, and most are diamond shaped. These signs warn you to slow down and be prepared to stop. If necessary, they warn you of sharp corns, Sharp curves, special situations, speed zones, or hazards ahead. Some coming warning signs are below. Guys, it's picture book time! Make sure everybody can see. Okay, it's not in color. Oh my god, picture book time! Dude, I would love to be a librarian and read books to kids all day. <sighs> okay. 
Railroad crossing warning signs. Many railroad crossings have signs or signals to warn drivers to slow down and yield to trains. Never try to beat a train across the tracks. Never start to cross until the traffic clears ahead. Wait until there is room on the far side so you will not have to stop on the tracks. It is wise to not shift gears when crossing railroad tracks, just in case you stall. Trains are large, obvi, <laughs> and may be moving faster than they look, obvi. They can take up to a mile for a train to come to a complete stop. Oh, trains cannot yield to cars. Be aware that trains can come from opposite directions at the same time. Some railroad, some railroad crossing signs, warnings and sign signals are a round yellow warning sign with an X symbol and a black RR letters placed along the road before you get to a railroad crossing. A white x shape shine or crossbook with a railroad crossing on it is located at the railroad crossing. This sign has the same meaning as a yield sign. You must yield to trains crossing the road. Picture time. Picture time. Guys, take notes. <laughs> at some crossings, along with the crossbook sign, you will see a side-by-side -side red light that will flash alternate alternate. Alternatively, alternately, when a train is approaching. When the lights are flashing, you must stop. At some crossings, there is also a crossing gate that will lower when a train is coming. Do not drive around the gate. Some crossings also have a bell or horn that will sound. Do not cross until the bell or horn has stopped. I think. I think most, because I, I live in a well-populated area, um, so all the railroad crossings that I've seen have like the drop down bar and like the blinking lights but when we went down to eastern washington some of the crossings just had one of these signs and it's just like bro imagine you're just blasting music in your car and you don't hear the train and you just go pop like i that was the first time i saw a railroad crossing without the drop down bars it was kind of scary to me Okay. Crossing with more than one train track will often post a sign that shows the number of tracks. These signs warn you that there is more than one track and there be there may be more than one train crossing. Not all crossings with more than a train track will have these signs, so it's important to check for more than one track before crossing. Safety at railroad crossings. If you approach a railroad crossing and your vehicle becomes disabled at the crossing, or if you observe an obstruction on the railroad tracks or at the crossing but no train is approaching or present, immediately call the emergency notification system. The phone number is located on the blue sign attached to the railroad crossing gate. After you've notified ENS, call 911 or report the issue to your local law enforcement. So that was if... If the lights aren't working, or if the lights are blinking and there's no terrain. Yeah, I thought that too. Like, the, the bar that goes down, I literally thought that was required. I feel like that should be illegal. Um, the crossings that I saw that didn't have a bar on it were just like a single lane dirt road that crossed over the tracks. Like, non-pavement in, like, the middle of bumfuck nowhere. So, it's not like it was a highly populated area. And, like, in that part of the state, you could literally hear like a two-person plane like, flying over you. Like, you know, if you're in the city, you, you see, like, the big commercial planes and you don't hear them at all? That motherfucker would be so loud if you heard it go over you in that part of Washington. Not crazy. It's so quiet where we were. Like, insanely quiet. Like, we could hear our neighbors talking on the front porch. And they were, like, a mile away from us. It was crazy. For people who don't know, my parents, they bought a property in eastern Washington to, like, retire at. So they're building it right now. But I, I don't think I could ever live in a place that's that, like, remote. Like, it's obviously a good place to, like, relax in. But I don't, I don't, I need to be in the city. Like, I need to have people, I need to have my Starbucks, you know. They kind of want to. I think it'd be fine. Like, if you're older and you don't need that, I guess, engagement with other people as much, but I don't know. Okay, slow moving vehicle sign. 
A reflective orange triangle on the, re on the rear of a vehicle means it's traveling less than 25 miles per hour. You may see this decal on construction equipment and in rural areas on farm vehicles, horse-drawn wagons, or carriages. Be this, this triangle, but orange. <laughs> Work area signs. These construction, maintenance, or emergency operation signs are generally diamond or rectangle shaped and orange with black letters or symbols. They warn you that people are working on or near the roadway. These warnings include reduced speed, detour, slow moving vehicles ahead, and poor or suddenly changing road surfaces. In work areas, traffic may be controlled by a person with a sign or a flag. You must obey these persons. Motorists, pedestrians, and bicyclists must yield to any highway construction personnel, vehicles with flashing yellow lights, or equipment inside a highway construction or maintenance work zone. Fines double. Removing violations in construction areas when workers are present. I wonder why the fines double just in construction zones. Does anybody know why? That that's probably like some law. Like wasn't it Maria's law? Like prob someone probably got hurt or injured due to a violation in a construction zone and they just made that law. To be like an extra fuck you to people who speed in construction areas. That's probably what it is. <sighs> Maybe because there's people and machines and such? I mean... It said specifically for construction zones, so... So why would they not double fines for people who are... Like, you know, sometimes there's... People who just... Manually... Direct traffic. Okay, I'm changing my position slightly. I get comfy. <laughs> okay. Regulatory signs. These signs are square, rectangular, or have a special shape that are usually white, red, or black with black, red, white, or green letters as symbols. They give you information about rules for traffic direction, lane use, turning, speed, parking, and other special situations. People with the glow sticks? Yeah. <laughs> Extra hazard or Mr. Hurt people? Who knows? I mean, true. Like, that's a reason, but, like, why would... I feel like all traffic infractions are bad. But why specifically for construction is it doubled? Like I said, it's probably... Like, something probably happened and they just added this law as, like, an extra deterrence. I think it's just, like, another thing to be like, Oh, you better not fuck up here. Like, don't screw around when there's people here. Probably that. I, I, I don't know. I'm very critical and analytical in the sense is like, I wonder why, like, certain rules or laws are in place. It's not that I don't denounce or invalidate why laws are made. I just like to know why they were enacted. I think it's interesting. Common types of regulatory signs are Speed limit signs These signs indicate the maximum safe speed allowed or the minimum safe speed required. The maximum limit should be driven only in ideal driving conditions and you must reduce your speed when conditions require it. For example, you should reduce your speed when the roadway is slippery, during rain, snow, or icy conditions, or when it is foggy and difficult to see clearly down the road. Some high-speed roads have minimum speed limits and you are required to travel at least as fast so you do not Oh, so you do not- so you are not a hazard to other drivers. If the minimum posted speed is too fast for you, use another road. <laughs> we looked at Maria's law, and the guy that caused the accident got away with no criminal charges, so I guess stuff like that happens, and they're like, huh? Yeah, like- like- Like, I think something happened in construction zones, they're like, oh shit, we need to have this not happen again. I mean, it's one of those things where- once deterrences, like whether it be fees or fines or laws are in place, hopefully people will act accordingly. Because, you know, the people who do drive recklessly, those people are selfish to some capacity. Like, they have lack of empathy for the safety for the people in their vehicle and also the safety of other people driving. And sometimes those people, they need like an outside deterrence or source to make them behave. 
TLDR, some people are selfish pricks and they need to like have empathy. I don't know. Like, I hate when people say or like are hypercritical of the government, like, oh, laws are stupid, but laws are in place to keep society functioning. Not necessarily to control you, but to prevent people from doing bad things and hurting others. Like, there's always a reasonable reason, typically, for most legislation. And we're not talking about legislation that restricts rights, because that's a whole different issue. We're talking about legislation that applies to safety and public welfare. And back to reading. Variable speed limit signs. These digital signs pose variable speed limits that help warn drivers of backups ahead in an attempt to evenly distribute the flow of traffic. The overhead signs can quickly close entire lanes and provide warning information to drivers before they reach slower traffic. This advanced notification of variable speed limits help reduce collisions that cause backups and stop and go traffic. Picture time! It's those signs up top. I see those all the time near Seattle. Lane use control signs. These signs tell you when you can go and where you can turn and often use an arrow symbol. These signs can be located on the side of the road or hanging over the lane of travel. Sometimes arrows may be painted on the road as a complimentary or as a compliment to the signs. Picture time. It's a sign with an arrow on it. Who knew? <laughs> no passing signs. These signs tell you where passing is not permitted. Passing areas are based on how far you can see ahead. Placement of these signs are considered at locations of unseen hazards, such as hills and curves, intersections and driveways, and other places a vehicle may enter the roadway. These signs, along with pavement markings, indicate where you can pass another vehicle, the beginning and ending of a passing zone, or where you may not pass. You shall not pass. Wait, that's that's a Lord of the Rings thing, right? <laughs> Where passing is permitted, you may only do you may only do so if it is safe. Be aware of road conditions and other vehicles. A triangular no passing zone sign can also be used. These signs are yellow or orange and are placed on the left side of the roadway. This is actually educational. Yeah, I'm reading from I'm reading from the Washington Driver's Manual. Of course. <laughs> Guys, we're an educational stream. No fun here, only learning. Stop sign, guys. Can somebody tell me what a stop sign does? Okay. An eight-sided sign that is marked with white letters. You may, you must come to a full stop at a marked stop sign or a stop line. But if none, before entering a marked crosswalk, or if none, what the fuck is this sentence, sentence structure? Or if none, at the point nearest the intersecting roadway where the driver has a view of approaching traffic. You must wait until crossing vehicles and pedestrians have cleared and pulled forward only once it is safe. <laughs> Peace say to stop. <laughs> Yield sign. A downward pointing triangle. It is red and white with red letters. It means you must slow down and yield the right of way to traffic in the intersection you are crossing or roadway you are entering. Imagine that. <laughs> that was the stop sign. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. Sorry, um, I'm getting ready to upload my TikTok. I feel like for sub-only streams, I feel like less pressure to be like super hyper. Because I know the people here are like the core people who like like me to some capacity. Parasocially, of course. <laughs> Megphone streamer. <laughs> Yeah, we vibing. Guys, we vibing. <laughs> New stop sign design. <laughs> oh, I had the book upside down. Guys, it's time to read! <sighs> Do not enter sign. A square sign with white horizontal lines inside a red ball means you cannot enter. You will see the sign at roadway openings that you should not enter, obviously. Such as exit ramps where you, where you would be going in the wrong direction and crossovers on divided roadways and in numerous locations on one-way on one streets. 
disabled parking sign. A rectangular sign with a white background and green lettering. In the international disabled parking person symbol in white on a blue background. Mark special parking stalls at businesses and stores. You or your passenger must have and display a disabled person's parking placard or license plate to park in these stalls. There's a $250 fine for parking in the stalls without displaying the required placard or plate and for blocking the access aisle next to a space reserved for physically disabled persons. I think it's kind of fucked um, when the disabled parking spots... Because you know how they'll have like an extra empty spot to where people can unload and get out of their vehicles? I think it's fucked that usually they'll only have two stalls that have access to the empty like space in between. There should be more spaces for people to get out of their vehicles. Because like, I was watching this one video where people were making fun of like, oh, you know, everywhere is still like, legally accessible by people who are disabled. But if you look at some of like the, the sidewalk structures that are either like way too steep or sometimes like the the sidewalks aren't like completely even, sometimes they'll be like like this, like you know the, the sidewalk blocks. Or if you look at you know the sidewalk kind of dips to get level with the road, like this dip right here is sometimes way too fucking steep to like actually have a wheelchair go over it smoothly. Because my grandpa um, in his final years, he was in a wheelchair, um, and we had to push him around most everywhere. And it was hard to take him some places because even though they were supposedly in code, it was still like hard to get him over some areas without him like either speeding up too much or potentially like the wheelchair possibly tipping into the road. Um, there's still a lot of work that can be done to making infrastructure better for people who are disabled. Traction Advisory Signs A rectangular sign with a white background and black letters. These signs tell you when chains are required. There's a $500 penalty for failing to use chains when required. Common types of guide signs are this destination signs. These signs are square, rectangular shaped and have a green or are green or brown with white lettering. They show directions and distance to various locations such as cities, airports, or state lines, or to special areas such as national parks, historical areas, or museums. Service signs. These signs are square, rectangular shaped and that are blue or brown with white letters and symbols. They show the location of various services such as rest areas, gas stations, campgrounds, or hospitals. Route number signs. The shape and color of a route number signs. The shape and color of route number signs indicate the type of roadway, interstate, U.S. state, city, or county road. Pavement markings. Lines and symbols on the roadway divide lanes. Tell you when you may pass through the vehicles or change lanes. Which lanes to use or turns? Wh wait. Which lanes to use for turns? Where you must stop for signs or traffic signals. And define pedestrian walkways and bicycle lanes. Edge and lane lines. Solid lines along the side of the road show you where the edge of the road or lane is located. White lane markings. Solid white lines are used to mark both edges of two-way roads, right edge of one-way roads, and the separate bike lanes from other traffic. In bold print, you should not drive to the right of the edge line or in the bicycle lane. End bold print. <laughs> A dashed white line between lanes of traffic means that you may cross it to change lanes if it is safe. A solid white line between lanes of traffic means you should stay in your lane unless a special situation requires you to change lanes. Yellow lane markings. Solid yellow lines mark the left edge of one-way roads and separate traffic moving in opposite directions. A dashed yellow line between opposing lanes of traffic means you may cross it to pass if it is safe to do so. Yeah, so stay in your lane. If it's dashed, you can cross over. Oh, okay, chatters. I thought this was the end of the chapter, but it's not. But hey, you guys know what time it is. We are three hours into stream, so it's time for me to run a few minutes of ads. If you're a non-sub and you're still here, shoutouts. Maybe you'll get lefty and get it gifted. But to avoid that ad break, you can just subscribe for four ninety nine, just five dollars. Um, or you can hashtag sub for free by linking your Amazon Prime to your Twitch account. Chatters, it's been three hours. Get some water. 
got a snack. We'll see some of you guys non-subs in a few. Got some pictures. It's picture time. Some passing zones have signs to tell you where passing is permitted and where you cannot pass. Where there is both a solid and a dashed yellow line between opposing lanes of traffic, you may not pass if the solid yellow line is on your side. If the dashed line is on your side, you are in the passing zone, you may pass if it is safe. You must return to your side before the passing zone ends. Two solid yellow lines between lanes of traffic means neither side can pass. You may cross yellow lane markings except meetings to turn left, but if it, if it is safe. Okay, so basically, if there's a dashed line on your side, you're allowed to pass. That's what I got from this. What is for a PSI 2 dinner? I don't know. Because, like... I, I, okay, I have been skipping dinner, but with my daily schedule, because usually, like, on a normal stream day, it ends at, like, 2 or 3, so then I'll have, like, a, a lunch and dinner at, like, 3 or 4, and then I just don't have dinner, because by the time dinner's done, it's at, like, 7 or 8 p.m., and that's way too late for me to eat. I don't know what's for dinner. I don't think what we have. But dad made fried rice for breakfast today, and it was yesterday, um, I made like four cups of rice, and we didn't eat much of it, so we made like hella fried rice this morning. So that's probably gonna be my lunch. It's pretty solid. Way too much garlic though, unfortunately. Wait, I forgot, chatters! During that ad break, I just uploaded a new TikTok! So go like it, go watch it, go leave a comment. Today it'll end at 7. If we're this far... Wait. I think I'm a third done. Guys, I'm a third done. I'm looking at it, I'm literally a third done. Okay, that means we got four hours left? Fuck. Dude, it might actually be a fucking seven hour stream. Man, Wolf was right. <laughs> See, if you subscribe, you get seven hours of extra content. Kind of crazy. I think it's a steal. So, non-subs, you might not hear me, but you should still hashtag sub for who at Prime. <laughs> yeah, this is surprisingly very difficult, because it's a lot of speaking. <laughs> My asthma is going hard today. Medians. When a highway is divided into two or more roadways, it is illegal to drive within, over, or across the space. The separation can be an open space, a highway divider, or a median island. It can also be formed either by an 18-inch solid yellow pavement marking or by yellow cross-hatching between two solid yellow lines. Crosswalks and stop lines. You're, when required to stop because of a sign or a signal, you must stop before your vehicle reaches a stop line or crosswalk, if there is one. Crosswalks define the area where pedestrians and bicyclists may cross the road. See, bicyclists! Bicyclists! Well, someone bitched at me. Okay, not in real life or in chat, in my head. <laughs> but bicyclists can be in the crosswalks too. Not necessarily on the sidewalks. I think, okay, I think it's fair to be on the sidewalk if there's no bike lane. And I literally never go in the bike lane because there's no bike lanes in my town. So, I think it's fine if I ride on the sidewalk. That, I mean, that's just what I keep telling myself. Um, some crosswalks may also have in-pavement lights that are activated by crossing pedestrians. You must yield when these lights are flashing. Not all crosswalks are marked every intersection is legally defined as a crosswalk regardless of whether a crosswalk marking is present. Oh. Okay. Interesting. 
Be alert for pedestrians and bicyclists when, qu when crossing intersections or turning. Bicycle lanes. Bicycle lanes are marked with a solid white line. Oh wait, bicycle lanes are marked with the solid white lines and bike symbols. Some bike lanes are further separated from the adjacent motor vehicle travel lane and or parking lane with a buffer consisting of two solid white lines and a diagonal cross hatching or chevron markings. This buffer is considered part of the bike lane width and should not be en encroached on by motorists unless executing a, a legal turning maneuver after checking that it is safe to do so. Protected bike lanes are further separated from passing traffic by some method of physical protection such as both bollards, posts, or planters. Bicycle lanes may be filled with green paint. Bicycle boxes. Bicycle boxes are pavement markings that are installed at intersections to allow bicyclists a safe way to turn when approaching a red light. Bicycle boxes are green and have an image of a bicyclist. At intersections, they are painted on the pavement before the crosswalk and they cover the entire travel lane. Drivers must stop the behind the bicycle box even when it's empty and wait for a green light. Bicyclists who are turning left should stop in the bicycle box, move to the left side of the box, signal the turn, and wait for the green light. Okay, I've literally never seen this in my life. So it said this is there if they're trying to turn left at an intersection. I literally have never seen this marking in my goddamn life. Bicyclists traveling straight or turning right should stay to the right of the bicycle box in a staggered formation and wait and wait for the green light. Bicycle boxes can also be used by bicyclists to make a two-stage two left turn. So I guess that bike box is only there at like intersections that where they can make a left turn. A two-stage left turn allows bicyclists to make left turn in two separate steps, rather than crossing multiple lanes of traffic. Step one. Cross straight through the intersection on the green light and stop in the bicycle box for the road you're turning onto. Step 2. Wait for the green light and go straight through the intersection. Other traffic control devices. There are other traffic control devices used to discourage speeding and reduce collisions. These devices have a variety of shapes. If you see speed bumps, curbing that, curbing that narrows the roadway, or circular islands at intersections, slow down and keep to the right unless otherwise posted. <gasps> Roundabouts! Dude, I hate roundabouts. They're so scary. <coughs> a roundabout is an intersection control device with traffic circulating around an island. Approaching vehicles must yield to the traffic in the circle. Always yield to pedestrians and bicyclists who are legally crossing the road. Inside the circle, always drive around the circle to the right. How to drive in a roundabout. Guys, everybody take notes, because I feel like nobody knows how to use a roundabout. <coughs> Slow down as you approach the intersection. Roundabouts are designed for speeds of 15 to 20 miles per hour. Enter the roundabout where there is a gap in traffic. Once inside, do not stop. Follow directions on signs or pavement markings about which lane to use. You may exit at any street or continue around if you miss your exit. Reversible lanes. Some traffic lanes are designed to carry traffic in one direction at certain times and in the opposite direction at other times. These lanes are usually marked by double dashed yellow lines. Before you start driving in them, check to see which lanes you can use at, at that time. There may be signs posted by the side of the road or overhead. Special lights are often used. A green arrow means you can use the lane beneath it. A red X means you cannot. A flashing yellow X means the lane is only for turning. A steady yellow X means that the use of the lane is changing and you should move out of it as soon as it is safe to do so. Okay, this makes no sense to me. Picture time, reversible lanes. I... I have never seen this ever. I don't get this. I don't understand. I can't think of any instance where I've seen a reversible lane. What? I assume this must be in areas where they have like fewer lane highways or something. Yeah, so I assume this is... I've literally never seen this. Maybe this is used in like lower populated areas. Because if there's less people going in either direction, then they can allow it to go different directions, right? I, I've only lived in high populated areas. I've never lived in your rural areas. I don't know. I'm not a country kid. Dude, this chapter's so long! Sorry. Ugh! <sighs> Reverse lanes. On various roadways, one or more lanes may re be reserved for special vehicles. Reserved lanes are marked by a sign stating
Wait, sorry. This- okay. I always get scared whenever I hear a Mario Odyssey song. Because one song always gets copywritten, and it's the wood song, not this song. That's why I, that's why I froze for a second. Um, reverse lanes are marked by signs stating that the lane is reserved for special use. These lanes often have a white diamond posted at the side of the road or painted on the road surface. So transit or bus means the lane is for bus use only, obvi. Bicycle means the lane is reserved for bicyclists. HOV stands for High Occupancy Vehicles and indicates the lanes reserved for vehicles with more than one person in them. Signs say how many people must be in the vehicle as well as the days known and hours as long as the days and hours to which it applies. For example, HOV3 means there must be at least three people in the vehicle. Two-way left turn lanes. There's a picture here. Two-way left turn lanes. These shared center lanes are reserved for vehicles making left turns in either the direction from or into the roadway, or U-turns where they are permitted. These lanes cannot be used for passing and cannot be used for travel further than 300 feet. On the pavement, left turn arrows for traffic in one direction alternate with left turn arrows for traffic coming from the other direction. These lanes are marked on each side by a solid yellow and dash yellow lines. Enter the lane only when it is safe to do so. Hot lanes are express hot lanes, high, high occupancy toll, HOT lanes, and express toll lanes are high occupancy vehicle, HOV lanes, for carpools that are also open to solo drivers who choose to pay a toll. Oh. I didn't know that. So you can pay a dollar and take the fast lane. I didn't know that. I always wonder. Okay, here's here's the sign. I always saw that and I was like, why does it say a dollar? Well, basically, you can take the fast lane if you pay. Toll rates adjust electronically to ensure that traffic in the hot or express lane is free flowing even when the regular lanes aren't congested. It provides toll-free express trips for buses, van pools, car pools, and motorcycles while giving solo drivers the option to pay for a faster, more reliable trip. I literally had no idea. It's actually cool. <laughs> One dollar car, fuck you. <laughs> Those who choose to use the hot lanes or express toll lanes as a solo driver must have a good-to-go account. Oh. So it's like a special club. Oh. Yeah, that's not as cool. Oh, and if you- okay. Carpools, vampools, buses, and motorcycles may also need a good-to-go account if they want to use the lanes of that charge. Okay. So if you're gonna use the hot lane at all, you need to have a good-to-go account. Okay. Noted. General rules. Wait, chatters, I forgot to tell you guys. I drew something the other day. I posted it on Twitter. But look at this. Can anybody guess who the reference is? Isn't this pretty? I drew this on Friday, I think. Because I was just in a mood to draw. And the reference picture I used... It looks literally nothing like him. I used Hassan. It looks nothing like him. I mean, it's hard for me to do line art, but this looks fucking nothing like him. It just looks like a really masculine man. That's beautiful, thank you. I think the eyes came out really well. I don't know if you can really see it, but... Focus. Wait. Hello. Uh, I don't think it's gonna focus on it. Okay, there we go. But see how... Oh, there we go. I put dots on the edge of the lines to kind of make it fade out a little bit. That way it's not a harsh line. So, chatters, if you want me... If you want a portrait card like this, all you need to do is gift five subs to the channel by the end of the month. Right now, we have Mac, Emmy, Deacon, and Potato who are eligible. Yeah, I, I posted it to Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. 
So if you follow me on my offline socials, you'll see extra stuff. It's really good. Thank you. I try. I was watching a stream that I drew it. I think I was watching a Mizkif stream that day. Because they've been doing Camp Canoe, so I've been watching a little bit of them. I need to readjust. It's getting uncomfy now. Yeah. I decided I'm not going to do solid fill backgrounds. I like the look of a pattern tile background. I think it adds a lot of texture to it. Uh oh, Pikachu might actually fall. Okay, back to work. General rules! No, my Pikachu did not fall. Does it count if one of those subs is a resub? No. The rules say five gifted. Okay, if you think about it, how much would you pay for an actual drawing commission? Probably 20 bucks. So five gifted, $25? About the same. Uh, general driving. If you back your vehicle, look carefully and move slowly. Drivers do not expect the vehicle to be backing towards them and may not realize it until it's too late. <gasps> If you miss your turn or exit, do not back up, but go on to the next turn or exit where you can safely turn around. It is ILLEGAL to back up on a shoulder or a freeway. Do not stop in travel lanes for any reason. Confusion, breakdown, letting out a passenger. Keep moving until you can safely pull off the road. In Washington State, it is illegal to give or to seek a ride on any limited access roadway, such as a freeway, unless otherwise posted. No person seeking a ride may stand on or along. A public highway or street where a vehicle cannot safely stop off the main travel portion of the roadway. On a road with two lanes traveling in opposite directions, you must drive on the right side of the road except when you are illegally passing another vehicle. On a road with two or more lanes traveling in the same direction, stay in the right lane except to pass. On a road with three or more lanes traveling in the same direction, if there is a lot of entering or exiting traffic, use the center travel lane. Unless directed to do so by officers or signs, Never drive on the shoulder of the road. Law enforcement stops. <gasps> the popo. Yeah. Police vehicles attempting to stop drivers will do so by turning on flashing lights and or siren. If law enforcement does pull you over, drive as close as you safely can to the right side of the road. Stop and turn off the engine. Do not stop in an intersection or pull into the center median of a highway. Limit your movements and any of those of any passenger so they don't kill you. Keep your hands on the steering wheel so they don't kill you. Passengers should keep your keep their hands in plain view. Show your driver license and or vehicle registration only when requested. So they don't shoot you. Uh, stay in your vehicle. Do not get out unless requested. In all caps, do not get out unless requested. I do you. If it is dark, turn on the vehicle's interior dome light after stopping and before the officer approaches your vehicle. Do not argue with the officer at the scene. Traffic violations and traffic crimes charging at you are decided in court. So, you can try your best to not escalate, but statistically, if you look a certain way, they're more likely to escalate. So, guys, be safe. Be compliant. Don't be like the debate Andy's just like, Well, do you have the right to pull me over? Or, you have the right to ask for my license? Just don't, like... I don't see the point of, like, arguing police on that if they're gonna fucking kill you. What if I just tell them I have a license from God? They would kill you. <laughs> what if I tell them you have no license? They would- They would probably detain you. Or some shit. Cause you- you have to have a license, dumbass. That's why they always- they always tell you put your license in your documentation of your, like, car ownership in a easily accessible place. Like in the glove box or something. Because you don't want to give the police any reason for them to escalate. Because the police force will always take their side and not yours. They'll automatically kill you for any reason. Literally. 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 I'm putting it in the trunk. <laughs> Be like, um, officer, it's in my trunk. Dude, the moment you get out of the cow, they'll bop you. <laughs> 
Oh my god. Guys, let's, let's, let's not joke about this. This is very serious. People do get killed. You want to hear something based that my sister said? Let me actually pull it up. Because we were talking about law enforcement and all that cool jazz. And something that she said that really resonated was, and I quote, The police protect by killing. And I was like, damn. I was like, slow clap, that is very true. Anyway, before we get into political Andy, let's go back to learning, right? <laughs> Emergency zones! Emergency zones are defined as the adjacent lands of the roadway 200 feet before and after a stationary emergency vehicle with a siren or flashing lights. Uh, tow truck using red lights, emergency assistant vehicle using warning lights, or police vehicle using emergency lights. The fines for traffic infractions issued for speeding in an emergency zone or proper passing of a designated stationary vehicle are doubled. And the driver license of a person who recklessly endangers a worker or property in an emergency zone is subject to a 60 day suspension. And yo, don't fuck with ambulances! Protect themselves, yeah. I. Okay. Another argument that me and my sister were talking about is like, okay, okay. The police are so, like, Second Amendment. They're so, like, everybody should have a gun. But if the general populace in America, in America, didn't have firearms, wouldn't they be less scared of, bench of potentially getting shot by civilians? Hmm. Sub only. <laughs> hi, Claire. Welcome in. <laughs> yeah, we're testing out sub only streams, but hi, honey. Like, if the populace didn't have guns, wouldn't the police be less scared of getting shot by civilians? Hmm. Peace out, too. Hmm. So why are they so pro-gun? Hmm. Dude, where was that? Okay, there was this one story. What was it? I think Hassan talked, to, talked about it on the stream. <laughs> See? Stop, bro. Stop. Stop. It's not funny. It's not funny. Chatters, we're in sub only mode. <laughs> God, what was the story? It was like. I might have to actually pull up Hassan's tweet. Uh, let me actually find that tweet. <laughs> nice. Emo only! Thank you, Wolf! <laughs> yeah, Chatter, shut the fuck up for five minutes. Let's let's change the the direction of this conversation. Okay, let me find. Wolf is looking out for me right now. Dude, Hassan was the first person I ever followed on Twitter. That's kind of crazy. Okay, where is it? Hey, Meg phone streamer, guys. Meg phone streamer. Okay, where is it? He tweets so much. Hard to find stuff. Okay, it had to be less than five days ago. Oh, we're here, we're here, we're here! Um... Okay, uh, a now suspended Miami firefighter was basically critical of the police force. Let me try and give like a teal deer. I'm trying to find like the actual article. Yes. Go to the actual website. Wait, what time? One minute ago. Yeah, I'm trying to find the actual article because I don't want to just l read blurbs from Twitter posts.
Dude, I could never follow, like, a local news station. It seems like so much shit happens. Like, um... My friend and I, the other day, we saw Spoke, and we were trying to see if, like, our local police department, um... What you call it? Like, posted, like, a warning on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And we found this one account from, like, our local EMT. And they tweet out every single time an ambulance leaves or enters the hospital. And it's literally, like, every five minutes. Well, like, a dispatch for a fire truck or an EMT. And it's just like, oh my god. If I followed this Twitter account, I would think the world is ending. Okay, this news account tweets so fucking much. I'm trying to find the story. I'm also gonna find the story, like, on their website. Dude, so much bad shit happens. I understand why people get fatigued from the news. Come on, I just want to hear the way too base take from this guy. Dude, local news is actually insane. There's so much, like, sensationalist stories. Oh. Come on, where is it? Where is it? Oh, right here, right here! Right here, right here, right here! I found it! After three minutes of scrolling. Okay, Miami firefighter relieved of duty after... Incendiary tech surfaces following death of NDPD officer. Courtesy of WSVN.com. And honestly... Kind of some base takes. Basically criticizing the hypocrisy... Of how so many police officers and law enforcement refuse to get vaccinated or wear masks. And also... Uh, so a city Miami firefighter has been relieved of duty after he was accused of making controversial remarks about police officers in a text commenting on the passing of an officer. Oh shit, it's like... Like I said, the article is courtesy of WSVN, so if you want to look it up yourself... I'm not gonna read some of them because some of them are very controversial. Um. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna re I'm gonna skip the first line of the quote because I think it's a bit much. Um. Cops exist for the government to exercise this monopoly on violence. They want the whole world to stop when one of theirs goes down. How many ads ads transport with an honor guard their dead bodies from coronavirus because they were way too stupid to wear masks or get vaccinated? All cops. Our good force protecting the rich property owners and the status quo. Everything else is a farce. Screw the police. Dude, actually crazy. Kind of base take, but... Oh my god! Thank you for the 100 bits, Wolf. Thank you. I appreciate that, hun. And also, Ema only chat is over. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate that. Like I said, the article's on WSVN.com. It, it's insane. Like... Because basically those takes are very leftist in the sense of being anti-establishment in terms of police force. And for me, like, I would recommend reading the little article to read, like, the criticisms and the actual quotes that the guy had. Um, but I would have to say way too based. Way too based. Um, like, my opinions on establishment is I don't think any officer should be able to kill any civilian. It doesn't matter. I don't think... I don't think anybody should take another life. Like, I don't believe in death penalty. There's been several instances in which people were wrongfully convicted and have been on death row for many years, and it is horrible. Um, but I, I was gonna say this. How much money do you get out of every 100 bits? I get a dollar. Because one bit equals one dollar. Or one penny. Um, for me. Um, so basically the way the bits... <laughs> stop! Stop, Crow! Stop! I know you're a hoss and I'll be head, but stop. 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 This is sub-only stream. Sub-only stream. Um, I always said this, but fire, er, policemen, they choose to 
do that job. They choose to enforce the laws and regulation. They're trained how to crowd control. They're trained how to kill, and I think that's psychotic. Um, but like, if you think about emergency situations, <laughs> no, you're fine. Clint, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. I know you're trolling. Um, but like firefighters, they're actually EMT trained. Like they're trained how to actually save people. But police, they're just there to enforce the rules, not actually save people. Like, I know in our area, our fire department is a lot more active than the actual police force. So, like, if there's an emergency, the, the firefighters will show up first. Like I said, they're EMT trained, so they will actually help you if you're injured. Cops will do fuck all. Uh, anyway. I just don't think any person, whether it be a civilian or law enforcement, should be able to kill another. I think it's crazy. Uh, I don't like how... Americans, it's somewhat normalized to like, you know, self-defense laws where somebody's trespassing or if you feel like your life is in danger, you can kill them. I think it's like, I think that's a bit much because you, you talk to any gun person and they always bring up the argument of self-defense, self-defense, but do you legitimately think you can kill somebody to defend yourself? Like, you can think that all you want, but in the actual moment, do you think that you'd be able to muster up that courage, but also set aside your humanity and take another life? I, I don't I don't think so, a normal civilian could do that without proper training. Training! Brainwashing. I don't know. The people who join the Marines are fucked up. If you're gonna join the, like, armed forces or military, do not join the Marines. They will fuck you up. Um... Uh, so don't. Like, join something cool like the Air Force or Navy. Don't join a force that will train you to kill people. Like, one of my mom's friends, like, her son, he joined the Marines. Like, he explicitly said to her, he's like, you know, I want to be able to shoot people. And it's like, whoa, dude, you got some problems. Um, cops are trained to injure said Basically. 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 I was talking to my friend about it, and... Because this friend is very pro-gun, and I, I always question them and challenge them on their ideas, and it's really fun to fuck with them. Um, in a respectful way, most of the time. Um, but he was telling me that, oh, you know, police officers, some of them have, like, orange guns that are basically used for, like, stun or, like, a taser, right? But I literally, I literally have never seen a cop with that type of weapon. I've only seen them with a firearm. I've never seen them with, like, a taser or anything of that matter. It's just like, hmm... Hmm. Hmm. I think it's also because in my city, the police have killed civilians. They have killed homeless people. That's why it's like, it's hard to see them in a positive light in, in that circumstance. But You're not American, so you don't know anyone who's actually pro-gun. Exactly. You talk to foreigners about gun policies and like, oh my god, take them away, or there should be more restrictions in America. It's because if you're foreign, you did not grow up with the attitudes of feeling like it's your right to have a firearm. And I feel like gun ownership is so ingrained into American like ideology and also identity. Like some people's whole personality is like being a hunter or having a firearm or that's your hobby. It's kind of like how some people identify with knitting, because that's all they do. And for a lot of people, guns are their hobby, and it's hard to separate it for them. And in other countries, it's not part of their normal, everyday culture. So... My, my thing is, I just don't want to go outside and be scared that I'm going to be a victim of mass shooting. That's all I want. I don't care if you have a gun at home, I don't care if you shoot at a range. I just don't want to go to the mall and be scared that I could die. That's all I want. Like, it's not... It's not that reasonable of a request. Uh, anyway. I assume most people here are left-leaning. Because we do have LGBTQIA tagged. <laughs> but... It... It's a difficult topic, and... My main thing with any sort of belief I have, at its core, you have to live your life in a way 
where you care about yourself and also in turn caring about others, whether it be, you have to, in some capacity, think about the greater good. That's why I'm very pro government aid. I'm very pro, um, I guess, taxing when you have a significant amount of income. Because if policies are in place that will help the people who are lesser off, whether it be the homeless, the poor, the people who are facing home insecurity, then it's very humane policies that are based on empathy. And I think that's very important. Because you need to think about, even if you have the privilege of like coming from a wealthy family or having a, like, living in a house or having like adequate food, that's a privilege and it can all go away if there's one casualty or mass event that happens and you need to make sure that all people are protected because that could be you one day. Like imagine you have a fight with your parents and you're kicked out. Where are you going to go? Because if you're couch surfing, you're technically homeless. You don't have an address. So if your values and beliefs aren't based on empathy, you need to evaluate your opinions and look back and think why you think this way. You might not necessarily agree with everything in terms of like Democrat or progressive policy, but advocate for the ones that will protect the ones that are in a worse situation than yourself. Based Megan, yeah. That's actually one of my, uh, my Twitter drafts. Basically, a shorter condensed version of that take that base your beliefs off of empathy. It's like there's been times where we've been close to homelessness. There's been times where I've been close to getting kicked out and I I can't imagine what my life would be if I didn't have like support. Cause if you don't have an address, you technically can't have a license. Like as we talked about earlier in the book, you have to have a legal residence to get a license. You can't get a job because most um like job applications are required to put a home address. If you don't have a house, you don't usually have money to pay for a phone, so you can't contact a workplace. You don't have a shower to wash up for work. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that more people won't advocate for people who are in a lesser situation than themselves. Like, I keep saying this, but if I were a millionaire, I would invest in Nonprofits that would allow more resources for people who are struggling. Like it seems like the right thing to do. Anyway, let's guys. If you don't know, I'm a lefty. Pretty cool. We're not very well loved, but you know, we're the ones actually advocating to protect people. Empathy is key. Exactly. Exactly. That's why a lot of younger people are left-leaning. <laughs> back to the book, yeah, let's go back. <laughs> because a lot of younger people... Like, if you just look at looking, living situations, income, it's worse than it was 30 years ago. That's why more young people are progressive, or democratic. Simple as that. <clears throat> okay, where were we? Oh, we were talking about how the police might kill you if you don't... <laughs> Law enforcement stops. Um. <laughs> okay, let's go back to studying, guys. You see, this is a sub only stream, so chatters don't clip it. <laughs> don't clip it. The right will kill me. Yeah, Democrats are left leaning, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, passing! On a road with two lanes traveling in the same direction, the left-hand lane is intended to be used passing or to be used for passing slower vehicles. On roads with more than two lanes traveling in the same direction, use the right lane for slower speeds, the middle lane for higher speeds, and the left-hand lane for passing only. Never pass on the shoulder, whether it is paved or not. Other drivers will never expect you to be there and may pull off the road without looking. The shoulder can also be used by pedestrians and bicyclists. On limited access roadways of three or more lanes in one direction, vehicles towing a trailer or vehicles over 10,000 pounds may not, may not use the left-hand lane unless otherwise posted. However, this does not prevent these vehicles from using the HOV lanes. <laughs> Why do you need to read the Washington Driver Book in Philly Mario Kart at least once a week? I mean... Okay. 
In Mario Kart, there is no oncoming traffic, typically. That's why. And... I have yet to get my license from Nintendo. Oh, I forgot to mention it. Wolf, once since you cheered bits, you do get your name written in our sub only journal. So thank you, hun. I feel like I didn't thank you enough, but thank you, Wolf. That's your first cheer ever! So thank you. <laughs> Toad's turnpike? Yeah, but it's, I don't play that all the time. <sighs> okay, driving on beaches. Driving is allowed on ocean beaches in Grace Harbor and Pacific counties. The beach is considered on state highway. What? The beach is considered a state highway, so all road, vehicle registration, and driver licensing regulations apply. The speed limit is 25 miles per hour, and pedestrians and bicycles have the right of way at all times. You may only enter the beach where your vehicle through marked beach approaches, and you may only drive on hand packed sand. What? Oh, hard! <laughs> hard packed sand, not hand packed. Watch for beach closure signs and signs that occasionally prohibit beach driving. Toll bridges. Currently, tolls are collected when crossing State Route 520 Bridge in either direction and State Route 16 to Comanera's Bridge from driving eastbound. When crossing the SR520 Bridge, the tolls are either collected through your Good to Go account or a bill that is sent to the address of the vehicle's owner. SR16 to Comanera's Bridge is similar with the additional option of toll boost, allowing drivers to pay cash on site. Why are tolls a thing? Um, I feel like it's for the maintenance of the bridge. Uh, that's what I hope it's for. I don't know. Maybe it's because they don't tax us enough. That's why they got to take a toll. I was going to say something else. What was it? Why can't public transportation be free? That's another thing. I feel like I feel like public transportation would be free, but you have to have like a licensed account or something. I think that'd be cool. <clears throat> Because imagine if all trains and shit were free. I feel like more people would use the trains if they were free. Those are good as long as they're public transit alternatives. Um, I think the both toll bridges that are listed here in Washington, they're over, like, rivers and shit. So you, you kind of need to use the toll bridge <laughs> to get to those areas. Tolls are too much. I'm trying to think. Let's actually see, why is there- Why is there a fee for toll bridges? Yeah, exactly! They, they make dog shit off of public transportation anyway. Or be cool. I know what they do here in Washington. Um... They do, like, you can buy, like, a summer pass where it's, like, 50 bucks for unlimited bus rides. If they had something like that, like, an annual plan or something, I think that'd be great. Okay. The practice of collecting tolls on bridges harks back to the days of ferry crossings where people paid a fee to be ferried across stretches of water. As boats became impractical to carry large loads, ferry operators looked for a new source of revenue. So it's just for profit. It's just for profit. Hmm. I wonder how much it actually costs. I think it costs like five bucks, maybe. Okay, so to cross the one in Tacoma, it ranges from five dollars to seven dollars. If you don't have a good to go account, it costs six twenty five. Okay, so basically it's for profit. What does the money go to? Is it publicly funded? Let's see. I've heard that some people say tolls are to help with traffic, so the more people will train or bus instead of drive. Interesting. I feel like that'd be more applicable in like a less populated area. What is it called? Okay, 16.
Okay, so for the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, I'm looking at an article. The legislature finds funding of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge faculty to be a distinct Mother Washington State tolling facilities due to its increasing debt service costs, which is the primary driver of the facility's escalating costs. So basically, the toll is for profit and also to pay off the construction of it. Okay, yeah, so it's privately funded then because it's saying they do that to cut back on like government funding costs. Okay. So the Tacoma Narrows is one of the privately funded, meaning it's it's funded off of toll costs to maintain it. All the other ones are publicly funded. Interesting. Okay, so there's a toll in some instances for profit and then also to maintain the actual crossing. That, okay, that makes sense. I think that's what I said earlier. That's what I guess what it was. Anyway, this is Washington, so it's local shit. It might differ from different states, but... Okay. Next is ferries. Washington State Ferries is a part of Washington's highway network, sometimes referred to as the state's marine highway system. As part of the state highway system, all rules of the road apply and must be followed at all times. Approaching the terminal WSF operates 20 ferry terminals on 10 routes of Washington State in Canada. As you approach the ferry terminal, you may see signs directing you to a designated ferry holding lane on the road leading up to the terminal. Other vehicles may already be lined up in this lane to catch the ferry and then in the line may be, bit, may be at some distance before you reach the terminal. If other vehicles have already lined up in the ferry holding lane, do not cut in front of these vehicles. Find a safe place to turn around and go back to the line. Ferry line cutting is a traffic offense that can lead to a fine. <gasps> Don't cut people off. If you're in a ferry holding lane in a residential area, please do not block residential driveways or intersections. Passengers on bicycles may proceed past cars to the terminal. Terminal layouts vary. Bicyclists receive priority loading on most ferries and have a bicycle waiting area in front of a motor vehicle. I've never... I think the last time I went on the ferry was when I was like 10, so I have no memory of it. <clears throat> Guys. We are nearly halfway through... We're getting there. <coughs> turning! Turn from the lane that is closest to the direction you want to go, and turn into the lane closest to the one you came from. When making turns, go from one lane to the other as directly as possible without crossing lane lines or interfering with traffic. Once you've completed your turn, you can change to another lane if you need to. Okay. My whole thing is you can read the book, but you don't know unless you actually drive, right? My biggest concern is, like, depth perception. So, you know how you have to, like, allow adequate time for your car to come to a stop? I feel like that's going to take me a long-ass time to learn. Okay, right turns. On right turns, avoid moving wide to the left before going to the turn. If you swing wide, the driver behind you may think you're changing lanes or turning left or may try to pass you on the right. If you swing wide as you complete the turn, drivers who are in the far lane will not expect to see you there. Yeah, exactly. The book seems like... This is for the nerds. This is for the people who want to, like, ace the test, but it's... it's it doesn't seem as helpful unless I actually start driving. <laughs> and left turns. When making a left turn, avoid starting the turn so soon that you're turning on the right side of the street. However, be sure to leave room for oncoming vehicles to turn left in front of you. Multiple lanes turning. If there are signs or lane markings that allow for two or more turning lanes, stay in your lane during the turn. U-turns. You should only make a U-turn when you feel it is safe. Your turn should not be made on any curve or when approaching the crest of a hill when your vehicle cannot be seen by others. Some towns and cities do not allow U-turns. Check with local police to be sure. Turns across bike lanes. It is illegal to drive in a bicycle lane. Tell that to all the motherfuckers who drive in the bicycle lane. Ooh, those be battery electric vehicles. Both neighborhood electric vehicles and medium electric vehicles are electric are electrically powered, four-wheeled vehicles that be, can be driven on roads. 
They can reach speeds of 20 to 25 miles per hour. Wait, they can reach speeds of 20 to 35 miles per hour. And it's equipped with a roll cage or crush proof body design. Persons operating these, these vehicles are permitted on roads with a posted speed limit of up to 35 unless banned by local law. The operators of such vehicles must not cross the roadway with a speed limit that is excess of 45 miles per hour unless the crossing occurs at an intersection of approximately 90 degrees. The operator may not cross an uncontrolled intersection of a roadway that is part of a state highway system unless authorized by local authorities. If you drive these, you must have a vehicle registered as such and have plates, a valid driver license, liability insurance, use of seatbelts, child restraints, and other safety equipment. Motorized with scooters. So, the segways. They must have handlebars, two 10 inch or smaller wheels, and a gas or electric motor. Operators are not required to hold a driver license, vehicle license, or insurance. State Patrol approved reflectors are required if the vehicle is driven at night. No endorsement. If you operate any vehicle without having the required endorsement, the vehicle may be impounded. Operating golf carts. A person may operate a golf cart on the public roads if in approved golf cart zones if they are at least 16 years old and have either completed a driver education course or a previous experience driving a licensed driver. So, TLDR, I would not be able to drive a golf cart. Sag. Big sad. No person who has a revoked license can operate a golf cart on public roads in golf cart zones. Golf cart zones must be identified by a sign. Golf carts operating in golf cart zones must have seatbelts, rearview mirrors, and reflectors. Operators must also use the seatbelt. Got it? Um, right of way. There will be many times we will need to slow down or stop a vehicle to allow another vehicle, pedestrian, or bicyclist to conclude to continue safely. Even if there is no signs or signals to regulate traffic, there are laws governing who must yield the right of way. Infractions for failing to stop or yield the right of way for a pedestrian or bicyclist within a crosswalk that is marked as school or playground speed zones receive twice the scheduled penalty. The law says you must yield the right away. It does not give anyone the right away. Failure to yield the right away is the number one citation in city collisions. You must do everything you can to prevent striking a pedestrian. You must do everything you can, guys, <laughs> on foot or in a wheelchair, a bicyclist, or another vehicle, regardless of the circumstances. Guys, you must do everything in your power to avoid a collision. <laughs> Sorry, it's just the way it's worded is really funny to me. Guys, can we get the spam going again? <laughs> okay. For their own safety, pedestrians should walk towards oncoming traffic and off the roadway. You should be ready to yield to pedestrians in case they step into your path. A pedestrian crossing a roadway at any point other than in a marked crosswalk or within an unmarked crosswalk at an intersection must yield the right of way to other vehicles on the roadway. Pedestrians and bicyclists have the right-of-way at crosswalks and intersections, whether the crosswalk is marked or not. Drivers must yield when necessary to avoid striking pedestrians or bicycles who are crossing the road, obviously. Okay, so this, this answers the dilemma we had earlier, this diagram. This bottom one. Right here. Because you know how we talked about earlier? So basically, that one says, once the pedestrian or bicyclist is behind one lane of their half of the roadway, the drivers may go. So, as we can see in the picture, right here, since these cars, there is no way they could potentially hit the pedestrian because they're going the opposite way. It's fine for them to go because they're off their half, or the pedestrian is off their half of the road. Have I played Kirby's Dream Buffet? No, but it is a sub goal stream. So if we hit 120 subs, then I will play it on stream. I, I'm avoiding watching gameplay of it because I kind of want to do a blind reaction. But it looks it looks fun, but like not a game I would replay, you know what I mean? Just based off of the gameplay clips I have seen. Have you played it? If you have, if anybody's played it, what would you rate it out of 10? <clears throat> Okay. 7 out of 10? Yeah, it looks kind of mid. But, like, I feel like a little kid would like it a lot. Pedestrians using a guide dog or other service animals or carrying a white cane have absolute right of way. 
It is unlawful to interfere with or distract a service animal. Do not use your horn as it as if it could as it could confuse or frighten the pedestrian or the service animal. Drivers turning left must yield to oncoming vehicles, pedestrians, and bicyclists. Drivers entering a roundabout must yield to drivers and bicyclists already in the circle. At an intersection where there is no stop sign, yield sign, or traffic signal, drivers must yield to vehicles in the intersection and to those coming from the right. Drivers must follow the rules for yielding to pedestrians and bicyclists in this crosswalk whether or not it is marked. At a four-way stop, the driver reaching the intersection first goes first after coming to a complete stop. If more than one vehicle arrives at the same time, the vehicle on the right goes first. Drivers entering a road from a driveway, alley, parking lot, or roadside must yield to vehicles already on the main road. Drivers must not enter an intersection unless they can get through it without having to stop. We should wait until traffic ahead clears so you're not blocking the intersection. Going back to if the light is yellow, you should go if you're already in the intersection. Drivers passing a vehicle going in the same direction must be ready to yield in case the other driver suddenly turns, slows down, or stops. You must yield the right away to trains crossing the roadway. Trains cannot stop for you. Imagine. You must yield the right away to a police vehicle, fire engine, ambulance, or other emergency vehicle using a siren, air horn, or red or blue flashing light. Pull over to the right edge of the road and or as near to the right as possible and stop when you hear or see or hear an emergency vehicle approaching from any direction. As we talked about earlier, um, last year they changed the reg regulation to where if there's an emergency vehicle approaching, all you need to do is go to the right and slow down 10 miles slower. You don't need to necessarily stop anymore. If you're in, in if you are in an intersection, drive through the intersection before you pull over. If the light is red, stay where you are. Follow any instructions given over the emergency vehicle's loudspeaker. <clears throat> you must stop for a school bus that is stopped with its red lights flashing, whether it is on your side of the road, or the opposite side, or at an intersection you are approaching. You are not required to stop for a school bus with red lights flashing when the school stop or when the stop school bus is traveling in the opposite direction in the roadway. Has one of the three. Has three or more marked traffic lanes, is separated by a median, or is separated by a physical barrier. <clears throat> you should never pass a stop school bus on the right hand side because there might be kids coming out. After the school bus has after the school bus's red lights have stopped flashing, watch for children along the side of the road and do not proceed until they have completely left the roadway. Do not be running over kids. The risk of injuring a child crossing the road is increased during the loading and unloading of a school bus. Be alert for children that may try to return to the bus after unloading. If Susie forgot her lunchbox. <coughs> Fines are doubled for anybody that passes a stop school bus. The penalty for failing to stop for a stop school bus may not be waived, reduced, or suspended. You must yield to any transit vehicle, parentheses, a bus, that is signaled that is pulling back onto the roadway. <coughs> You know what else it is time for? I mean, a signal for? <laughs> Guys, it's time for me to run a few minutes of ads because we are another hour to stream. We are four hours in, guys. Why is it not loading? There we go. So, you can avoid the ad break by subscribing for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee, get ad free viewing all month long. Or if you have an Amazon Prime, you can hashtag stuff for free by linking your Twitch to your Prime account. So, chatters, stick around. We're gonna. We're now halfway through. Yeah, my voice started to hurt. We'll be fine. So guys, hashtag sub for free with Prime, and you can actually see what we're doing on stream. Let me know. <laughs> but thankfully, since we're doing Switch Sports tomorrow, it does not require a lot of talking, so I think I'll be fine. Bro, this chapter is long as fuck. We're still in chapter 3. Can I just skip to the drugs part? That seems fun. <laughs> okay. Parking. Drivers are responsible for making sure their vehicle is not a hazard when it is parked. Wherever you park, make sure it is... Whenever you park, be sure it is in a place that is far enough from any travel lane to avoid interfering with traffic and visible to vehicles approaching from either direction. Always park in a designated area if possible. Always set your parking brake when you park. 
Leave the vehicle in gear if it has a manual transmission or is in park if it has an automatic transition. Longest chapters are always the most boring, yeah. This one is... Oh, we only got two pages left in this chapter. Let's go. <coughs> uh, I was going to say something else, but I forgot. Anyway. Check traffic before you open the door. Get out of the vehicle on the curbside if you can. When opening a vehicle door, drivers and passengers should do the following. Number one, check your rear view mirror. Number two, check your side view mirror. Number three, open the door with your far hand. The hand farthest from the door. This is called the Dutch reach method, which originated in the Netherlands. It forces your body to turn, which will better allow you to see approaching bicyclists. It also prevents the vehicle door from being open too fast. Huh. Never thought about that. <clears throat> this not only protects bicyclists, but also can prevent you do, but can also prevent your door from being damaged or turned off by an approaching motor vehicle. Shut the door as soon as you can after getting out. So I'm, I'm trying to like picture how that'd work. Oh, because when you- okay, so if, if the door is here, the door is here, I reach over, it makes my body turn so I look behind me. Okay, that makes sense now. Never leave the ignition key in a parked vehicle. It is a good habit to lock the doors whenever you leave a vehicle. It is against the law to leave children under the age of 16 alone in a parked car with the engine running. Guys, do not leave your pets in the car. Do not leave your children in the car. They will fucking die. I'm not joking. They will die from heat exhaustion. It's People do not understand how quickly a car heats up. So do not ever leave your child or pet unattended in the car. Even for five minutes. Do not do it. Do not do it. If you must park on a roadway, park your vehicle as far away from traffic as possible. If there is a curb, park as close to it as you can. No parking zones. There are many areas where you cannot park. Check for signs that may prohibit or limit parking. Some parking restrictions are indicated by color, by colored curb markings. Do not park in an intersection, on a crosswalk or sidewalk, in a bicycle lane, in a construction area if, you, if your vehicle will block traffic, within 30 feet of a traffic signal, stop sign or yield sign, within 20 feet of a pedestrian safety zone, within 15 feet of a fire hydrant, within 50 feet of a railroad crossing, more than 12 inches from the curb, Within 20 feet of a fire station driveway on the same side of the street. Within 75 feet of the fire station driveway on the other side of the street. <clears throat> within 5 feet of a driveway, alley, private road, or area of the curb removed or lowered from for access to the sidewalk. On a bridge or overpass or in a tunnel or an underpass on the wrong side of the street. In a space marked for the disabled unless you have a disabled license plate or a placard. On the roadside of a parked vehicle. On railroad tracks. Yeah, don't, guys, do not park on the railroad tracks. That'd be D.U.M. On the shoulder of the freeway, unless you have an emergency. There's been so many times where, like, our car has busted and we had to pull over on the highway, and it's fucking scary. Well, there's not much you can do when your car breaks down, right? <clears throat> where there's a sign that says you cannot park. Obvi. Parking on a hill. When you park on a hill, but the curb... And are facing uphill, set your parking brake and turn your steering wheel away from the curb. This way, if your vehicle starts to roll, it will roll into the curb. Wait, what? Oh, turn the steering wheel, not the wheels, the steering wheel. Facing downhill, set your parking brake and turn your steering wheel towards the curb. And if there is no curb, set the parking brake and turn your steering wheel towards the edge of the road. This way, if your vehicle starts to roll, it will roll away from traffic. <laughs> Parallel parking, picture time! This makes no sense to me. <coughs> Stop even with the car ahead. Turn the wheel sharp turn the wheel sharp right and back slowly toward the car behind. When clear of the car ahead, turn the wheel sharp left and back slowly to the car behind. Turn the wheel sharp right and pull toward the curb in the center of the parking space. <gasps> finally, chapter four, chapter three is done. Finally, finally, finally. <coughs> Safe driving tips. No driver manual can teach you how to operate a vehicle or be a safe driver. 
Driving requires skills you can only gain through instruction and practice. The following offers some basic driving information. Get chatters. I think everybody can benefit from this. So everybody take notes. Get your notebooks out. Get your highlighters. It's starting. Check the vehicle owner's manual to determine the best way to start the vehicle. Make sure the parking brake is on before you start the vehicle. If the vehicle has a manual transmission, it must not, it must not be in gear. In most vehicles, the clutch must be depressed. <laughs> like me. <laughs> For a vehicle that has an automatic transition, you must have the shift, selector, and park. Accelerating. Accelerate gradually and smoothly. Starting too fast can cause your wheels to spin, particularly on slippy surfaces, and cause the vehicle to slide. With a manual shift vehicle, practice using the clutch and accelerator so the engine does not over rev or stall when accelerated or shifting gears. So we also have another car, but it's a manual, and no way I'm going to learn with a manual car. It's a lot smaller than the SUV, but it's an MG. I don't know what the fuck it's called. My dad calls it an MG. But it also breaks down all the time. And it's manual, so I'm not, I'm not going to practice with that. <coughs> Steering. Place your hands on opposite sides of the steering wheel. This position is comfortable and on the high speed roads allows you to make turns without taking your hands off the wheel. It also positions your hands out of the way of the airbag. Leaning against the door, putting your elbow out of the window, and driving with one hand can keep you from reacting quickly in an emergency. Look well down the road at least 15 seconds and look to both sides of the road and rear, not just on the road in front of your vehicle. Look for traffic situations where you will need to steer before you get to them. Being aware of line and sight blockages that may conceal a pedestrian, bicyclist, or another vehicle. A driver can look in, under, and around parked cars for feet, wheels, shadows, and movement. When looking far enough ahead, it allows you to see all potential situations before they create a surprise. This way, you have time to steer smoothly and safely. When turning sharp corners, turn the steering wheel using the hand over hand technique. When you complete a turn, straighten out the steering wheel by hand. Letting it slip through your fingers could be dangerous. Ooh, scary. <coughs> speeding and speed limits. Speeding is defined as traveling above the posted speed limit or too fast for conditions. Heavy rain, snow, or ice on the roadway, or limited visibility due to fog are a few examples of conditions where you may need to adjust your speed below the posted speed limit to drive safely. If you speed, you are substantially increasing injury and fatality risk for yourself and the others on the road. Speeding is a factor of nearly 40% of all traffic fatalities in Washington. The best way to avoid speeding is to know your speed and the speed limit. Check the speedometer often. People are, not, people are not very good at judging out how fast they are going. It's easy to be traveling much faster than you think. This is especially true when you leave high speed roads and are driving on much slower local roads. Be prepared to accelerate, decelerate, slow down, or stop based on traffic, traffic control devices, or other road conditions. Obey speed limit signs. They, they are there for your safety. Speed limits, unless otherwise posted, are 20 in school zones, 25 on cities and towns, 50 on county roads, 60 on highways. Parts of interstate highways may be posted with higher maximum speeds. Stopping. <coughs> Be alert and aware of the traffic conditions around your vehicle and along your intended path of travel. Stopping suddenly is dangerous and usually points to a driver who is not paying attention. <gasps> Developing an awareness of how to stop safely in traffic is a valuable skill to have. When you brake quickly, you can skid and lose control of your vehicle. You can also make it harder for drivers behind you to stop without hitting them. Try to avoid sudden stops by scanning ahead well in advance. Most collisions happen when somebody wasn't aware of the changes in traffic around them. The sooner you begin the braking practice process the more you have the sooner you begin the braking process the more time you have to control the situation by slowing down and changing lanes you may not have to stop at all and if you do you can make a more gradual and safer stop imagine seeing well which i can't most of what you do while driving depends on what you see to be a good driver you will need to see well you must not drive with more than three people in the front seat if it blocks your view or interferes with your control of the vehicle the single biggest contributor to collisions is failing to see what is happening. You must look down at the road to the sides and behind your vehicle be alert for unexpected events. At night, or when weather conditions diminish your vision, use your headlights. You must be alert to what is going on around you. Many collisions occur because drivers do not pay attention to their driving. In many collisions for motorcyclists, bicyclists, and pedestrians, drivers reported that they were looking but did not see them. Distracted driving! 
The start of driving is an activity that takes the person's attention away from the primary task of driving, sometimes referred to as inattentional blindness. All distractions endanger the driver, passengers, and others who share the road, including pedestrians. Some distractions could include using a personal electronic device, eating or drinking, talking to passengers, grooming. What? It's a weird word to use. Okay, thank you for the lurk, Mac. That that is a really weird word to use there. I assume they mean like fixing your hair or some shit. Reading, including maps and navigation systems. Watching a video while driving. Adjusting vehicle controls. While some of these aren't against the law on your own, on their own, you should still recognize how these behaviors may impact your driving and cause you to violate a traffic law. A law enforcement officer may stop and ticket you for violating the distracted driving law. The minimum fine for violating one or more of these restrictions is $124 and can be more if you cause a crash. Second and all sub subsequent second is all sub second and all sub subsequent violations are subject to have the fine doubled. Dangerously distracted driving is when a driver is engaged in any activity not related to the actual operation of a, of a motor vehicle in a manner that interferes with the safe of vehicle. With a safe of a vehicle. There's a typo, there's a typo, there's a typo. Okay. Right here. This dangerously distracted driving is when a driver is engaged in any activity not related to the actual operation of a motor vehicle in a manner that interferes with the safe of a vehicle. It's supposed to be safety. Got him. Are you still reading? Yeah, we're, we're a little over halfway now. We've got on side tangents. But, you know... We, we're, we're pushing through. A law enforcement officer may also include a violation for dangerously distracted driving as secondary action when a driver or motor vehicle has been sought for a suspended violation for a separate traffic infraction. Okay, what are you guys' thoughts of the cars that have, like, the tablets in them? Like, you know, Teslas and shit. I don't like it. <clears throat> I think it's a bit much... I mean, I know people aren't playing mobile games on them, but it feels like too much of a distraction. They're too big, yeah. Because oh. I think the only thing we've had in our car was like... Like a tiny GPS. It didn't have any other functionality to it. Just the GPS. You can actually play games on the Tesla ones? Okay, that's not good. <laughs> that is very bad. They need to have parental controls on it to where you cannot play games. <clears throat> okay, personal electronic devices. Any use of a personal electronic device while driving is especially dangerous. This is why Washington state law restricts the use of personal electronic devices when driving. Personal electronic devices include, but not limited to, cell phone, tablet, laptop, two-way messaging device, or electronic game. Using a personal electronic device in your hand, both hands are held to your to compose, send, read, voice, view, access, browse, transmit, save, or retrieve email text, text messages, instant message, photographs, or other electronic data while operating a motor vehicle is against the law. However, these activities may be permissible. Reporting illegal activity, summoning medical or other emergency help, preventing injury to another person or property, operating an authorized emergency vehicle, Damn it! So you know the, the cop cars that have like the tablets in them? They're fine. Damn. <laughs> you can also sub for free with Twitch Prime in a Tesla. Dude, let's go. Any Tesla watchers in chat? I think I saw like a video of some streamer watching Twitch on their Tesla. It was funny. I think it was Connor or something. Like as a gag. I need, I need a break. It's been four hours. I need my designated 10 minute break. <clears throat> Relaying information between a transit or for hire operator and that operator's dispatcher using a device permanently affixed to the vehicle. What? 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 Using a voice operated global positioning or navigational system permanently affixed to the vehicle. 
and that allows the user to send or receive messages without diverting visual attention from the road or engaging the use of either hand. So GPS. Other activities that may be permissible are operating a tow truck responding to a disabled vehicle, operating a citizen's band or two-way radio, or an amateur radio using under a federal communications commission license. Okay, so chatters, you can't talk on your phone, but you can use a walkie-talkie. So if you want to talk to your friend while you're driving, use a walkie-talkie. No more iPhones. <clears throat> Guys, I don't ever want to play Cuphead. That's why Cuphead is such a high sub goal. I, I would literally get so mad playing the game. I legitimately- I don't think I can get past like the first few bosses. I think I- I think I would give up. I think Cuphead is like 170 or 180 subs. It's a big goal. So we are- we're never hitting it. Cuphead is fun. It's fun to watch people who are good at it, which I am not gonna be good at it. I'm gonna be dog shit. <laughs> okay. The minimal use of a finger to activate, deactivate, or initiate function of the device is permissible. Oh, okay. A hands-free device can also be an acceptable alternative. So like the Bluetooth phone connected to your, to your car, or... I guess if your phone is on the dashboard and you like click answer call or something, and it's on speaker, I guess this... Guys, just don't- just put your phone in your pocket, you don't need it. You don't need it. Your friend can wait. The other distracted driving laws. Um, when we play Cuphead, I might be open to some tips, but if you tell me not, I'm gonna forget. <laughs> so, hold. Hold for now. Also, I noticed in the Cuphead community, there's so much fucking backseat gaming. There's so much backseat gaming. I'm gonna lose my shit if I have randos come in and backseat. That's another reason why we're on follow 10 minute mode normally, is because I don't want people coming in and like telling me what the fuck to do or how to play the game. It annoys the fuck out of me. I I'm not talking about my regular shadows, I'm talking about new people coming in. It annoys me so much. Um... No person is allowed to operate a motor vehicle with equipment capable of receiving a, a television broadcast when the moving images are visual are visible to the driver while the motor vehicle is on a public road. An exemption is provided for live video of the motor vehicle backing up. Do not drive with head or earphones on the cover or go in your ears. These are illegal in Washington and many other states and make it hard to hear emergency horns and vehicles. Wait, what? What? No way. Okay, chatters, if you live in Washington, it's illegal to have AirPods in. Holy shit. Wow, guys, that's actually important. No way. Wait, let's let's see if that's a revised law. Wait, I got scammed because this was just like a little leaflet that was put inside the book. If you look here at the bottom, it says page four. 42. That means there's a second sheet to this pamphlet. I got scammed. Okay, well, Chatters, you're not allowed to have your AirPods in when you're driving, apparently. Huh. Okay, but this law does not apply to motorcyclists wearing a helmet with built-in headsets or earphones. Or hand-free cellular phone systems. Oh, wait. Okay. So, this law does not apply to hands-free cellular, cellular phone systems. So, does that mean the people who have, like, Bluetooth headsets that connect to their, their phone to their car? So, maybe AirPods are fine? Hands-free cellular phone systems. I mean, 
I guess, just don't have AirPods in at all, then you won't get pulled over. I mean, I see so many people with headsets in. I generally don't think you'll get in trouble, but if you do get pulled over, you don't want to get in trouble for anything more than you're already in trouble for, you know? Hmm. <coughs> Collisions and roadside activity. Do not slow down to look at a collision or other roadside activity as it could result in your own. If you take your eyes off the road to look at something, you could run into a vehicle ahead that has slowed or stopped. This can also increase congestion. When you pass these roadside activities, keep your eyes on the road and get past them as soon and as safely as you can. Yeah, Bluetooth con descriptions? It's very broad. I think... It said no, like, earphones. Yeah. I mean, just to be safe, don't have any type of headset in. I wonder... I think what they mean is you can have, like... Because you know how they have the Bluetooth that, like, hooks around your ear? And the speaker is, like, right outside your ear, but not in your actual ear, so you can still hear? Maybe those are fine? Hmm. I don't know. You can avoid distracted driving by remembering the five Ds. Dangerous. Deceptive. Destructive. Disabling. And deadly. That how how's that supposed to help me? That just makes me scared. <laughs> Deadly. <laughs> Scanning. To be a good driver, you must know what is happening around your vehicle. You must look ahead to the sides and behind the vehicle. Scanning helps you see problems ahead, vehicles, and people that may be in the road by the time you reach them. Signs of warnings. Signs warning of problems ahead and signs giving you directions. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. More than 80% of all crashes can be avoided if drivers had one additional second time, second of time to react. The average driver looks only 3 to 5 seconds ahead of the car. If you scan at least 15 seconds ahead, you'll be able to gather critical information earlier and respond sooner to problems and hazards. Look ahead. In order to avoid last minute braking or the need to turn suddenly, you should look well down the road. By looking well ahead and being ready to stop or change lanes if needed, you can drive more safely, save on fuel, help get traffic moving at a safe ex at a steady pace and along and allow yourself time to see better around your vehicle and along the side of the road. This will also help you steer straight with this will also help you steer straight with less weaving. To give you a clear picture of what lies out of your vehicle, scan for stopped and moving traffic, red or green lights, if the road is curving to the right, left, or crossing a hill. So basically just pay attention. Easy. Safer drivers tend to look at least 15 seconds ahead of their vehicle. Judging space or distance in, in seconds is important for drivers. The ability to measure distances in seconds will help drivers solve problems from further away. Control their approach to intersections, curves, stop traffic, traffic controls, judge for caps, tight turns, and help create open space when following others. How far is 15 seconds ahead? It is the distance that your vehicle will travel in 15 seconds. No fucking shit. Sorry. In the city, 15 seconds ahead is about one block. When you drive in city traffic, you should try to look at least one block ahead. On the highway, 15 seconds is about four city blocks or a quarter of a mile. Okay, that's a little bit more helpful. <clears throat> how do you know how many seconds you're looking ahead? Practice judging the space your vehicle will travel in seconds by following these steps. Guess, guess where you think 15 seconds ahead is. Okay, easy. Pick out a marker such as a roadside, mailbox, or a telephone pole, and then space and then spacing counting. Until you reach the marker. Okay, that's actually good. Taking a guess before you count helps you to develop the ability to make accurate assistance of the space your vehicle will travel in seconds. Accuracy will improve the more you practice this method. Okay, just start driving and then you'll figure it out. Easy. You can be a safer driver by looking well ahead. You can avoid the need to stop or turn quickly. The less you have to stop or turn quickly, the less likely you are to run into somebody or have someone run into you. By looking well ahead, you can save on fuel. Every time you have to stop quickly, it takes time and fuel to get your vehicle back into speed. A gradual approach into a stop situation puts you into a win-win situation. You will use the least amount of fuel, you will put the least amount of wear on your tires and braking system, and you'll have the best opportunity to control the traffic to your rear. Most of all, you'll be developing a good habit that will eventually occur even when you don't think about it. Traffic will flow more smoothly if everything looked well ahead. Making driving changes before the last moment gives drivers behind you more time to react. The earlier you act, the less often someone behind you has to react quickly to your vehicle. By scanning ahead, you can assess the problems and hazards your intended path of travel may create and choose the best action. 
such as changing lanes or adjusting your speed to achieve the lowest degree of risk. Look to the sides. As other vehicles, pedestrians, or bicyclists may cross onto your path anytime. <coughs> so I need water. Most often within a four second range, look to the sides to make sure no one is coming. This is especially true at intersections and railroad crossings. When a driver gets within four seconds of potentially crossing or intersection, it is time to evaluate the decision that was made at the 15 second range. There is time for the driver to evaluate whether it is, it is still the best decision for speed control, lane positioning, and communications. Intersections. Any place where two or more roads come together, they can be any shape, controlled with lights and or signs, or uncontrolled. Every intersection has a higher potential for collision. Conflicts can occur to left, right, front, or rear of you. You should actively scan every intersection and be ready to adjust speed, lane position, or both for entering that space. Intersections include cross streets or roundabouts, climbing circles, side streets, driveways, shopping center, or parking lot entrances. Over 30% of all crashes take place, or that take place in the United States each year occur at intersections. Before you enter an intersection, always look to the left and right for vehicles, pedestrians, or bicyclists. Just because you have the right of way does not mean that you are given the right of way. If stopped, look to the left and right before you start moving. If stopped before crossing an intersection, ensure there is space to cross completely, so that you do not block the intersection if you have to stop. Before you turn left or right across the oncoming traffic, turn on your signal at least 100 feet ahead and look for a safe gap in the traffic. Check the street you're turning in to make, to make sure there are no vehicles, pedestrians, or bicyclists are in or approaching your path. If you're on a street with a bicycle lane, check behind you for oncoming bicycles and yield to them and yield to them before making your turn. Dude, there's so many typos in this in this guide. There's a missing period. There's a hyphen in B4, so B E hyphen F O R E. They may be mo moving towards you faster than you realize. Be sure you have time to execute the turn safely. After stopping, you may turn right and right unless prohibited. You may also turn left from one way or two way street into a one way street unless prohibited. Do not rely on traffic signals or signs to tell you that no one will be crossing in front of you. Some drivers do not obey traffic signals or laws. At an intersection, look right and left, even if other traffic has a right lead, light, or a stop sign. This is especially important just after the lights turn green. This is when people in the cross street are more likely to hurry through the intersection before the light changes to red. Make sure you can clearly see crossing traffic before entering an intersection. If you are stopped and if you are stopped and your view of a cross street is blocked, edge forward slowly until you can see. By moving forward slowly, crossing drivers can see the front of your vehicle before you can see them. This gives them the chance to slow down and warn you if needed. Whenever there is a lot of activity along the side of the road, there is a good chance that somebody will cross or enter the road. Therefore, it is very important to look to the sides, looking within that 4 second range. When you are near shopping centers, parking lots, construction areas, busy sidewalks, playgrounds, parks, and schoolyards. Railroad Crossing As you approach a railroad crossing, slow down and look up and down the tracks to make sure a train is not coming. If you're not sure it is safe to cross, Turn your radio down or off. Stop talking, put the window down, and look and listen for a train. Never start to cross until the traffic clears ahead. Wait until there is room on the far side so you will not have to stop on the tracks. At crossings with more than one track, wait until the passing train is well down the track before starting to cross. A train that just passed may hide another train behind it. Yeah, I think my closest railroad track has like... It has three tracks. I think it's got three tracks. It's kind of crazy. Changing lanes. Before changing lanes, you must check to ensure there are no vehicles in the lane you want to enter. This means you must check for traffic to the side, behind your vehicle, and in your blind spots before changing lanes. Changing lanes includes changing from one lane to another, merging onto a roadway from an entrance ramp, and entering the roadway from the curb or shoulder. When changing lanes, you should turn up. Turn on your turn signal in the, in the direction you're moving. Look in your rear view and side mirrors. Make sure there are no vehicles in the lane you want to enter. Make sure that nobody is about to pass you. Look over your shoulder in the direction you plan to move. Be sure no one is near the rear corners of your vehicle. These areas are blind spots because you, not you cannot see them through your mirrors. You must turn your head and look to see vehicles, bicyclists, or pedestrians in your blind spot. <coughs> Check quickly. Do not take your eyes off the road ahead for more than an instant. Traffic ahead of you could stop suddenly while you're checking traffic to the sides, rear, or over your shoulder. Also, use your mirrors to check traffic while you're preparing to change lanes, merge, or, or pull onto the highway. This method will also allow you to keep an eye on the vehicles ahead of you at the same time. 
Check your blind spots for traffic before you change lanes. Look several times if you need to, but not for too long a period at any one time. You must keep track of what traffic is doing in front of you and then the lane you are entering. That paragraph literally repeated itself. I'm not crazy, right? It repeated the fucking opening statement ahead. I'm tired. <coughs> check the far lane. Be sure to check the far lane if there is if there is one. Someone in that lane may be planning to move into the same lane you want to enter. Check for other road users. Remember, there are other road users such as motorcyclists, bicyclists, and pedestrians that are harder to see than cars and trucks. Be especially alert when you are entering the roadway from a curb or driveway. Large trucks or commercial vehicles have a longer stopping distance than that of a standard vehicle. It is important that we leave extra space between you and the commercial vehicle and the merge position of a vehicle in case the commercial vehicle needs to stop suddenly. For attempting to merge in front of a commercial vehicle, it is recommended that one car length of space for every 10 miles of speed be used. Slowing down. You must check behind your vehicle whenever you slow down. This is very important when you slow down quickly or at points where, the, where a falling driver will not expect you to slow down, such as your driveways or parking spaces. Backing up. Backing is preferred on a daily basis or performed on a daily basis and, and oftentimes in crowded areas such as parking lots or busy streets. Here are some tips that will help you. Okay, chat, write down these tips. Backing up. Oh, I read the sentence again. Check behind your vehicle before you get in. Children or small objects are difficult to see from the driver's seat. Place your right arm on the back of the seat and turn around so you can look directly through the rear window. Do not depend solely on your rear view or side mirrors to help you see directly behind your vehicle. Back slowly. Your vehicle is much harder to steer while you are backing. You must stop before backing across the sidewalk or into the street. Look left, right, and yield to any pedestrians, bicyclists, or vehicles. Whenever possible, use a person outside the vehicle to help you back. Got it. Driving downhill. Check your mirrors when you are going down hills or mountain roads. Vehicles often build up speed at going downhill. Be prepared to adjust or slow your speed and be alert for large traffic trucks and buses that may be going too fast. Let's see how far we are. Okay, we are about two thirds. Okay, it looks like half. We're about two thirds done, guys. <laughs> Can I get the copy boss to go in again? <laughs> It's just so many goddamn words. <clears throat> okay. Use your lights. By law, your vehicle's headlights must be turned on from half an hour after sunset until half an hour before sunrise. Lights must also be on any time conditions make it difficult to see people or other vehicles. Here are some things you could do that will help you see better. Use your high beams whenever there are no oncoming vehicles. High beams... Let you see twice as far as low beams. It is important to use high beams on unfamiliar roads, in construction areas, or where there may be people along the side of the road. Dim your high beams whenever you come within 500 feet of an oncoming vehicle. Use your low beams when following 300 feet or less behind another vehicle. Use the low beams in fog or when it is snowing or raining hard. Light from high beams will reflect back, causing glare and making it difficult to see ahead. Some vehicles have fog lights so you can also see, that you can also use under these conditions. Okay, so only use high beams when there's nobody on the road. If a vehicle comes towards you and you with if a vehicle comes towards you with their high beams on, look away from the headlights and turn and toward the right side of the road until the car is passed. This will keep you from being blinded by the other vehicle's headlights and allow you to see enough of the road to stay on course. Do not try to get back with the other driver by keeping your bright lights on. If you do, both of you may be blinded. So just basically look to the side and keep the road or their headlights in your peripheral, I guess. <coughs> Letting others know that you are there. Collisions often happen because one driver does not see another driver, or when one driver does something that the other driver does not expect. It is important that drivers let other road users know that they are there and what they plan to do. Communicate your intentions by using your headlights, brake horns, or brake lights, horn, emergency signals, lane position, and vehicle speed. Some drivers do not always pay attention to what is going on around them. It is important that the other road users know you are there. Use headlights. Besides helping you see at night, headlights help other people see you. Turn on your headlights whenever you have trouble seeing others. Such as, on rainy, snowy, or foggy days. It can be difficult for other drivers to see your vehicle. In these conditions, headlights make your vehicle easier to see. Remember, if you turn on your wipers, turn on your headlights. Remember, we use low beams when it's rainy, snowy, or foggy. Turn on your headlights when it begins to get dark. Even if you turn them on a little early, it will help other drivers see you. 
Whenever driving and lights are necessary, use your headlights. Parking lights are for parked vehicles only. When driving away from a rising or setting sun, turn on your headlights. Driving coming towards you, drivers coming towards you may have trouble seeing your vehicle. If you stop along the road at night, turn on your emergency flashers and leave your low beams on. Using your horn. Ooh, controversial. People cannot see you unless they are looking your way. Your horn can get their attention. Use it whenever it can help prevent a collision. If there is no immediate danger, a light tap on the horn should be all you need. Give your horn a light tap if a person on foot or a bike appears to move moving into your lane of travel. Okay, type of one in chat if you're walking on the sidewalk like normally and motherfuckers drive past you and blast their horn. Type one if that's happened to you. It happened to me like twice in one day the other week and I got so fucking mad. And it's like, I know women in general, they voice more harassment. And it's like, even when I dress fucking normal, I get honked at. And it's like, bruh. And they always honk when they're right by you, so they always, like, scare the shit out of you. I've never been catcalled. I don't think. I think the weirdest thing I had someone yell at was like, Hey cutie! But then that was when I was, like, walking home in middle school. And it, it's kind of catcalling, but not really, you know what I mean? I didn't know who was in the car, so... But still weird for somebody to be catcalling the minor. Kind of weird. Kind of weird, champ. Uh, anyway. Uh, when you're, when you're passing a driver who's just to turn into your lane, when a driver is not paying attention or may have trouble seeing you. When coming to a place where you cannot see what is ahead, like a steep hill, a sharp curve, or exiting a narrow alley. If there is danger, do not be afraid to sound a sharp blast on your horn. Do this! When a child or older person is about to walk, run, or ride into the street. When another vehicle is in danger of hitting you. When you have lost control of your vehicle and are moving towards someone. When not to use your horn. Encouraging someone to drive faster or get out of the way. Letting other drivers know of an errand. Greeting a friend. Around blind pedestrians. Passing bicyclists. When approaching horses. Oh yeah, a horse would like freak out, right? So chatters, just because you get cut off doesn't mean you can honk at them. They're gonna come out and shoot you. If you live in America, I mean, more likely to happen there than anywhere. Use emergency signals. If your vehicle breaks down on a highway, make sure that other drivers can see it. All too often, collisions occur because the driver did not see a stalled vehicle until it's too late to stop. If available, use your two-way radio or cellular phone to notify authorities that your vehicle or someone else's vehicle has been broken down. Many roadways have signs to tell you that the CB channel or telephone number to call in an emergency. If you're having vehicle trouble and have to stop, get your vehicle off the road and away from traffic, if possible. Turn off your emergency flashes to show you are having trouble. At night, leave your headlights on. Try to stop where the drivers have a clear view of your vehicle. If you cannot get your vehicle off the roadway, do not stop just over a hill. Or just around a curve. Try to warn other road users that your vehicle is there. Place emergency flares 200 to 300 feet behind the vehicle. This allows other drivers to change lanes if necessary. <laughs> if you do not have emergency flares or other warning devices, stand by the side of the road where you're safe in traffic and wave traffic around your vehicle. Never stand in the roadway. Do not try to change the tire if it means you're in the traffic lane. Lift the hood or tie a white cloth in the antenna side mirror or door handle to signal emergency. A white cloth? Oh yeah, because the red cloth means the uh, oversized lobe, right? Stay out of the blind spot. Drive a vehicle where others can see you. Do not drive in another vehicle's blind spot. Avoid driving on either side of another vehicle and do not tailgate. You'll be in the driver's blind spot. Speed up or drop back so the other driver can see your vehicle more clearly. When passing another vehicle, go through the other driver's blind spot as quickly as you can. The longer you stay there, the longer you're in danger of the vehicle turning into you. Never stay beside a large vehicle such as a truck or a bus. These vehicles have large blind spots. So, yeah, I'm looking at the diagram. There, there's so many no-no zones for semi-trucks. Uh, should we just not be the by them at all?
letting others know what you are doing. Hand signals! Generally, other drivers expect you to keep you to keep doing what you're doing. You must warn them when you're going to change direction or slow down. This will alert other drivers of your intentions and give them time to react if needed. Signal when you change direction. Signaling gives other drivers time to react to your moves. Use your turn signals before you change lanes, turn right or left, merge into traffic, or park. Get into the habit of signaling every time you change direction. Signal even when you do not see anyone else around. It is easy to miss someone who needs to know what you are doing. Signal at least 100 feet before you make your move. If another vehicle is about to enter the street between you and where you plan to turn, wait until you have passed it to signal your turn. If you signal earlier, the other driver may think you plan to turn where they are and they might pull into your path. Yeah, you don't debate people. <laughs> oh, the peace I do vibe hand signals. I was like, why are you spamming peace I do vibe? That's actually good. Good one. <laughs> I, I just move out the peace I do L. Wait, peace I do L? After you have made a turn or lane change, make sure your turn signal is off. After small turns, the signal may not turn off. If the signal did not turn off automatically after you completed your turn, turn it off manually. If you did not, others may think you plan on turning again. We tag down the signals when drivers cannot see signal lights. Okay, so right turn, a left turn, and then stop speed. Okay, chatters. Type a 1 in chat if you have your license. Type 2 if you don't. And type 3 if you're learning right now. When you run someone over? Oh my god. Type a 1 in chat if you have your license, 2 if you don't, and are potentially learning. How many of you guys are actually benefiting from this? I know we got some younger people. I mean, I'm 23 and I'm still learning how to drive, so... Don't feel bad if you're older and don't know how to drive or aren't progressing in life as see as fast as everyone else. Everyone does things at their own pace. Maybe three someday? Hog you. <clears throat> Cause you like I could have driven sooner, but I was so anxious, but I'm at a point where like if I want to be more independent, I I need to drive. Okay, we don't have any drivers in chat. Kind of concerning. <laughs> Fuck it. Okay, signal when you slow down. Your brake lights let people know that you're slowing down. Always slow down as early as it is safe to do so. If you're going to stop or slow down at a pace where other another driver may not expect it, tap your brake pedal three or four times to quickly let those know behind you you're about to slow down. Signal when you slow down. When... Oh, to turn off a roadway which does not have a separate turn or exit in lanes. To park or turn just before an intersection. Following traffic expects you to continue to the intersection. To avoid something in the road, stop traffic or slowing vehicles that the driver behind you cannot see. Adjusting the road conditions. The faster your vehicle is going, the more distance it will take to turn, slow, or stop. For example, at 60 miles per hour, it may take you three times as far to stop as it takes to stop at 30. Driving safely means obeying speed limits and adjusting for road and traffic conditions. There are various road conditions where you must slow down to be safe. For example, you must slow down before a sharp curve, where the roadway is slippery, or where there is standing water on the road. You're almost done with the book? Not really. We're about three quarters. Uh... The only contact your vehicle has with the road is through the tires. The quality of the tires tracks or the road depends on the type and condition of the tires and road surface. Many drivers do not pay enough attention to the condition of their tires or the condition of the roadway. It is important that your tires are in good condition and have an affair. See the vehicle's owner's manual for, co for correct tire pressure. You do not have as much traction on gravel or dirt roads as you do on concrete or asphalt roads. When driving on gravel or dirt, you must slow down. It will take you much longer to stop, and it is much easier to skip and turn. Wait, chatters, if you don't have a license, this could be your free lesson. Guys, I mean, it's not free because it's a sub-only stream. It's a $5 lesson. <laughs> I need water. My, my water cup is almost empty. Big Sedge. Oh, also. We're doing the Meg Esports Mario Kart Tournament next Sunday. 
So this upcoming Sunday. It is free for you? Oh yeah, you're right. You got the free gifted sub. Let's go. It feels weird wearing my hair down for this long. It's usually up by now. Ooh. At least I too yawn. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh my god, we're getting there. We're like three quarters. <laughs> Curves. A vehicle can travel much faster in a straight line than it can on a curve. It is easy to go too fast in a curve. If you go too fast, the tires will not be able to grip the road and the vehicle will skid. Always slow down before you enter a curve so you do not break in a curve. Breaking a curve can cause the vehicle to skid. Slippery roads. Slow down at the first signs of rain, snow, or sleet. These weather conditions create additional hazards and risks on the roadway. When the road is slippery, the vehicle's tires do not grip as well as they do on a dry road. On a wet road, you should reduce your speed about 10 miles per hour. On packed snow, you can cut your speed in half. Use snow tires or chains when the road has snow in it, and, it, and any time is required on posted signs. On ice, you must slow to a crawl. It is very dangerous to drive on ice. If possible, do not drive when the roads are icy. In Washington, stub tires are legal, or studded tires are legal during winter months. Tires that have retractable studs may be used year-round, but the studs can only be used between November and March. Must retract to below the wear bar of the tire when disengaged. Some road surfaces are slippery at certain times or places. Here are some clues to help you spot slippery roads. On cold, wet days, shady spots can be icy. These areas freeze first and dry out last. Overpasses and other types of bridges can have icy spots. The pavement on bridges can be icy even when other pavement is not. This is because bridges do not have earth underneath them to keep to help insulate against cold. Oh, I didn't know that. When the temperature nears the freezing point, ice can become wet. This makes it more slippery than at temperatures well below freezing. If it starts to rain on a hot day, pavement can be very slippery for the first few minutes. He causes the oil in the asphalt to come to the surface. The road is more slippery until the oil washes away. <coughs> Water on the roadway. When it is raining or the road is wet, most tires have good traction up to 35 miles per hour. However, as you go faster, your tires will start to ride at the water like water skis. This is called hydroplaning. In heavy rain, your tires can lose all traction when the road is about 50 miles per hour. Bald or badly worn tires will lose traction at much lower speeds. The best way to keep from hydroplaning is to slow down when the road is wet. If you feel like your tires have lost traction with the surface of the road, you should ease your foot off the gas pedal. Keep the steering wheel straight. Only try to turn it if it is an emergency. If you must turn, do it slowly or you will cause your vehicle to skid. Do not try to stop or turn until your tires are gripping the road again. So basically, keep your wheel straight and cross your fingers you don't skid. Adjusting to traffic. Collisions involving two or more vehicles often happen when driving is going faster or slower than other vehicles on the road. Depending on the conditions of the roadway, reduce risk and avoid hazards by creating time and space around your vehicle by controlling your speed, adjusting lane position, and using best possible communication options such as turn signals, headlights, or hand signals if necessary. Keep pace with traffic. If you're going faster than traffic, you will have to keep passing others. The vehicle you are passing may change lanes suddenly, or on a two-lane road, an oncoming vehicle may appear suddenly. Slow down and keep pace with other traffic. Do not speed. Do not try and weave. You're not cool. The world does not revolve around you. Going much slower than other vehicles can be hazardous as speeding. It tends to make vehicles bunch up behind you and causes the other traffic to pass you. Either drive faster or consider using another road with slower speeds. If you're driving a slow moving vehicle on a two lane road where it's unsafe to pass, to pass, and five or more vehicles are in a line behind you, you must pull over and stop when safe to let them pass. Entering into traffic. When you merge into traffic, signal and enter at the same speed that traffic is moving. High speed roadways generally have ramps to give you time to build up your speed for merging into traffic. Do not drive to the end of the ramp and stop, or you will not have enough room to get up to the speed of traffic. Additionally, drivers behind you will not expect you to stop and you may hit and you may be hit from the rear. If you have to wait for space to enter a roadway, slow down on the ramp so you have some room to speed up before you have to merge. Emerging seems so scary to me. Like genuinely. I feel like that's a common fear, but even when I'm a passenger in the car, I get scared when we have to merge. 
<sighs> Stretch. Dude, my chest hurts. I think I'm talking too much. Get back to it. You're leaving traffic. Keep up with the road of traffic as long as you are on the main road. If the road you're traveling has exit ramps, do not slow down until you move onto the exit ramp. When you turn from a high-speed two-lane roadway, try not to slow down too early if you have traffic following you. Tap your brakes and reduce your speed quickly, but safely. Slow moving traffic. Some vehicles cannot travel very fast or have trouble keeping up with the speed of traffic. If you, stop, if you spot these vehicles early, you have time to change lanes or slow down safely. Slowing suddenly can cause a collision. Watch for large trucks and small underpowered cars on steep grades or in your traffic. They can lose speed on, on long or steep hills. And it takes longer for them to get up to speed when they enter traffic. Farm tractors, animal drawn vehicles, and roadway maintenance vehicles usually go 25 miles per hour or less. These vehicles should have a slow moving vehicle decal and an orange triangle on the back. Trouble spots. Wherever people are traffic gatherers, room to maneuver is limited. Here are some places where you may need to slow down. Shopping centers, parking lots, and downtown areas. These are busy areas with vehicles and people stopping, starting, and moving in different directions. Rush hours. Heavier commute times often have heavy traffic and drivers that always seem to be in a hurry. Narrow bridges and tunnels. Vehicles approaching each other are close together. Toll plazas. Vehicles are changing lanes and preparing to stop, then speed up again when leaving the plaza. The number of lanes could change both before and after the plaza. School playgrounds, parks, and residential streets. These areas often have children present. Always be alert for children crossing the street, running, or riding into the street without looking. Railroad crossings. Always treat railroad crossings with caution. Trains often can't be heard as they approach. Never go around activated crossing arms. Even if you've seen a train pass in one direction, and never try to outrun an oncoming train. They are heavy and cannot stop as quickly as vehicles can. Work zones. Slow down and pay attention to orange warning signs. Expect slowdowns or stop traffic and obey directions from flaggers. Most work zone crashes are due to speeding, following too closely, or distracted driving. Traffic fines are double in work zones and recklessly endangering workers other motors or property in a work zone can lead to a 60-day license suspension. Don't run over children? I know. Imagine. You should follow them you play Mario Kart. They'll give you the driver's license. Dude, I tried. Nobody laughed at me. Dude, I wish. Okay, so when I went to the DMV to, like, try and get my knowledge or learning permit when I did it wrong, the guy who, like, let people in the office, he was so nice. We're goofing and gaffing. And then the people at the desk were... Not rude, but just very, like, blunt. Like, they didn't want to joke around. <laughs> I, I should have done, like, a Mario Kart joke with the guy at the desk. That would have been funny. That would have been a good... A good bit. How well can you see? If something in your path... If there's... Wait, if something is in your path and you need to stop, you need to see it in time to be able to stop. It takes much longer and further to stop than many people think. If you have good tires and brakes and dry pavement. At 50 miles per hour, it can take about 4 to feet to react to something you see and bring your vehicle to a stop. That is about the length of a city block. At 30 miles per hour, it can take about 200 feet to reach to react and stop. That is almost half a city block in length. If you cannot see 400 feet ahead, it means you may not be driving safely at 50 miles per hour. If you cannot see 200 feet ahead, you may not be driving safely at 30 miles per hour. By the time you see an object in your path, it may be too late to stop without hitting it. Here are some things that can limit how well you can see and tips you can follow to be a safer driver. <laughs> You've gotten first in online? That's a good job you asked me. Dude, there was one stream where I got first twice in online. It was crazy. I mean, I think the only way to prove that I'm a good driver is if I get first in one of my own tournaments. Because everyone seems to, like, rush me every single month. So I think if I get first in a Meg Esports tourney, then I think I could prove myself and get a license. Sorry, I got bored. <laughs> Dude, my chest is actually hurting. Maybe I need to, like, eat. Hi. 
Hi, Mac. Welcome back. Darkness. It is harder to see at night. You must be closer to an object to see it at night than during the day. You must be able to stop within the distance you can see ahead with your headlights. Your headlights will let you see about 400 feet ahead. You should drive at a speed that allows you to stop within this distance, or about 50 miles per hour. Rain, fog, or snow. In a very heavy rain, snowstorm, or a thick fog, you may not be able to see more than 200 feet ahead. When you cannot see any further than that, you cannot safely drive faster than 30 miles per hour. In a very heavy downpour, you may not be able to see well enough to drive. And that, if that happens, pull off the road in a safe place and wait until it clears. Guys, if it starts pouring, GG's. Everybody, stop driving. All society must stop because of the rain. Hills and curves. You may not know what is on the other side of the hill or just around a curve, even if you are driven on the road many times. If a vehicle stalls on the road just over a hill or around a curve, you must be able to stop. Whenever you come to a hill or curve where you cannot see over or around, adjust your speed so you can stop if necessary. Parked vehicles. Vehicles parked along the side of the road may block your view. People may be ready to get out of a vehicle or walk out from behind parked vehicles. Give parked vehicles as much room as you can. Sight Distance Rule Drive at a speed where you can always safely stop. To tell if you're driving too fast for conditions, use the 4 second sight distance rule. Pick out a stationary object as far ahead as you can clearly see, such as a sign or a telephone pole. Start counting. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, etc. If you reach the object before you finish saying 4, 1,000, you need to slow down. If you're going too fast for your sight distance, the 4 second sight distance rule allows you to cope with the countless number of dangerous moments drivers operate in and out of on a continual basis. You should also use the 4 second sight distance rule at night to make sure you're not overdriving your headlights. Thank you, I'm glad you've been enjoying it, Mech. I feel like this would be good for a voiceover interview, huh? Any publicists in the chat want to hire me? Anybody? No, but seriously, if we have any Washington residents, they could literally just watch the VOD on YouTube and this could be their study. Just me reading the whole fucking book. <clears throat> any publicists in chat want to give me a voiceover job? Anybody? <laughs> publicists. <laughs> oh, I thought you said sucks. Publicists subs. I mean, if you can subscribe to The Daily Wire, you can subscribe to me! Am I right? <laughs> I hate The Daily Wire. I'm trying to see if I have any snacks. Oh, wait, actually... I'm gonna have a cookie. Longest mech stream ever. Uh, I think our longest stream was the subathon we did at the beginning of the month, which was about seven hours. I have Japanese Oreos that I bought last year that I didn't eat. These expire February 22, 2022. So these are bad. Guys, we're going to do a taste test live. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, so it's got two little pouches in the box. I think these are raspberry cream flavored. That is very pressurized. You can see it's like about to pop. <laughs> okay, it's actually kind of hard to open. Oh, they're thins. I love Oreo thins. Okay, it looks to be about. Oh no. Shit, they're so bad. Yeah, this one broke. Hold. Hold. So these are Oreo Thins. See how thin that guy is? There's like no filling. You, you can't even see the filling on camera. Look at that. There's like no filling. It's such a thin amount of filling. Oh my god. And like the filling, it's not even pink anymore. It's like... It's like a purpley almost. Oh, you can see it. Okay, this the filling is actually pink. Because this one broke. Let's try it.
Okay, I didn't really taste the filling because there's like no cream, but it smells so much like raspberry. I can't really taste the filling, but the smell of the raspberry made me think it tasted like raspberry. Are they good? They're fine. They'd be a lot better if, if it had more filling. Like, if we look, look at how there's like nothing. The amount is of filling is like half of the width of the thin Oreo cookie. So I'm disappointed. I mean, if we look at the box, it doesn't look like they're filled very much either. Like, look how thin that is. This- I feel like you'd eat this- wait, how many- Okay. So, one of these little pouches, so about 8 to 10 cookies, has 15 grams of sugar. 7% daily sodium, 9% daily carbs. Dude, that's a lot of fucking sugar. Yeah, you're right. These are like doubly thin. Okay, so I, sh I should not be getting more of these. You know what else is disappointing? Me having to run an ad. But you know what? It's part of the show because chatters, we are five, five hours in the stream. So it's time for me to run a few minutes of ads. You can avoid the ad break by subscribing for $4.99, just $5, or you can hashtag sub for free with Prime by linking your Amazon to your Twitch account. Um, I think most people here are subs anyway, but if you're a non-sub watching and you're here, subscribe! Five bucks, it's it's not nothing, because for some people it can be a lot, it does add up. But sub for free with Prime, see if you got a Prime available, check that box, see if you got a Prime. Um, we are getting close. We probably have at least another hour of the book to read, so we're getting there. You'll see some of you guys in a view. What I do like about thin Oreos is that they're easy to eat. Because what I don't like about regular Oreos is that the cookie is too big. Like, it's too much cookie. I think Oreo thins are perfect. They almost taste like chips. Because if I want a thick cookie, I want like an underbaked cookie, you know what I mean? Um, Chatters, we're five hours into stream. To be nice to my body, I'm going to take a courtesy bathroom break. So, I'll be right back. I'm also going to fill my water cup. So, Chatters, if you could hold for like a minute or two. Everybody, you know what to do. Everybody, peace I two spin. I need to take my obligated bathroom break before I piss myself. So chatters, everybody, peace out to a spin, spin.
Hello. I'm surprised nobody left, Flamo. So I'm just looking through what you guys said. <laughs> I think it's funny, the nice chat and then evil chat meta is so funny to me. Thank you guys for sticking around though. I didn't piss myself today, so let's go. Oops. Yeah, that was a piece of paper. I got one more cookie, then I'll go back to reading. I told my mom, because she was in the kitchen, and she was like, what are you doing on stream today? And I was like, I'm reading the driver's manual. And she's like, oh, that's funny. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's a good gimmick. Obviously, I scroll up. Because what if somebody actually says something bad, and then I gotta ban them? Because, like, you guys spam a lot, but it's not like you spam, like, hundreds of messages, so I can easily look up. Okay, there's two cookies left. I'll eat them when I'm done. Also, I'd like to point out, on the back of the book is some quick facts. <laughs> In fatal crashes, male drivers outnumber female drivers roughly 3 to 1. So, Andrew Date was wrong. Women are better drivers, statistically. Okay, let's go back let's back to study time. You know what I should've done? I should have been reading out the page numbers as I'm reading. That just dawned upon me. I mean, I don't know how many Washington viewers we have. But too late now. <coughs> okay, I need water. When was this book published? It doesn't say. Like, it doesn't say what year it was published, but the, like, one of the opening letters from, like, the head of licensing, she had a quote from 2018, so it's probably, this is probably came out in 2020. <laughs> okay, let's go back to it. Keep right, except to pass. On roadways of multiple lanes going in the same direction, the law requires you to keep right, except to pass. Traveling to the far left lane when you're not passing is dangerous. It frustrates other drivers and may contribute to road rage and aggressive driving behavior. Sharing space. You must always share the road with others. The more distance you keep between yourself and everyone else, the more time you have to react to an emergency. The space is like a safety cushion. The more you have, the safer it'll be. This section describes how to make sure you have enough space around you when you drive. <laughs> I live kind of near Washington, so this isn't completely useless, yeah. I feel like most rules are the same. The only thing that might differ is like there's a whole section about marijuana and driving because marijuana is not legal in every state yet. Um, and like the whole thing with like not having earbuds in or what was the other one? It was like a Washington only law. Uh, I forgot. Okay, space ahead. Rear-end collisions are very common. If you follow too closely and the vehicle in front of you slows or stops suddenly, you may not have enough time to avoid a collision. If you are driving at 30 miles per hour or less, a following time of 2 or 3 seconds may be enough to stop safely. However, at higher speeds, the best rule to use is the 4 second rule. Maintaining a following time of 4 seconds improves your line of sight, allows more time to avoid hazards or risks, and gives an idea of, an idea of path of travel problems that may arise from other vehicles, weather conditions, or unforeseen emergencies or situations. Oh, you're right. Speed limits are different, too. Oh, yeah, because it went through, like, the speed limit in a school zone. In a city. On the highway. That's another thing, yeah. Watch when the rear vehicle... <clears throat> Watch when the rear of the vehicle ahead passes a sign, pole, or any other stationary point. 
Count the seconds it takes you to reach the same spot. One, one thousand, etc. You are falling too closely if you pass the mark before you finish counting. To one to four. If so, drop back and then count again at another spot to check the new falling distance. Repeat until you are falling no closer than four seconds. <clears throat> there are situations where you need more space in front of your vehicle. In the following situations, you may need to log your falling distance to be safe. On slippery roads. Because you need more distance to stop your vehicle on slippery roads, you, may leave, you must leave more space in front of you. If the vehicle ahead stops suddenly, you'll need the extra distance to stop safely. When the driver behind you wants to pass. Slow down to allow, allow room in front of your vehicle. Slowing will allow the path for the pass to be completed sooner. When following motorcyclists or bicycles. If the motorcycle or bicycle rider should fall, you need extra distance to avoid the rider. The chances of a fall are greater on wet or icy gravel roads or metal surfaces such as brid bridges, gratings, or streetcar or railroad tracks. Guys, I fell off my bike on a railroad track one time. Funny story. So, you know how... Like, if the track is like this and the bar goes down. It, uh, obviously, I didn't cross on my bike when the train was passing, okay? I'm not stupid. Um, so, on this specific track, there was two rails on the road, right? So, instead of crossing straight, I crossed diagonally. I had no idea why I crossed diagonally. So, when I crossed on my bike diagonally, my bike got caught in, like, the little groove of the rail... And then I fell <laughs> and I got so scared because I, I fell on my hands. So thankfully I was able to get back up quickly. But like, what if I like the bike fell on my leg or some shit and then I got stuck and then I got hit by a train. Um, so chatters, if you're crossing a railroad track, do not cross diagonally. Because the reason why I crossed diagonally is because I didn't want to. It was like construction ahead at the crosswalk. So I couldn't cross the crosswalk. So I was like, oh, I'll just cross on the actual tracks. Don't, don't do it. Like I said, my bike got stuck in the grooves because when I went diagonally, my, my tire, like, turned. That would make a crazy story. <laughs> I almost got hit by a train! <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a crazy, like, YouTube video. Imagine, guys. I should've... Nope. Let's not joke like that. Let's not... Guys, do not... Do not cross diagonally on a railroad track. It's not worth it. Do not do it. Don't be D.U.M. One billion views! Yeah. I mean, I think that hit a uh, fat melee. <clears throat> when following drivers who cannot see you, the drivers of trucks, buses, vans, or vehicles pulling campers or trailers may not be able to see you when you are directly behind them. They could stop suddenly without knowing you were there. Large vehicles also block your view of the road ahead. Falling back allows you more room to see ahead. When you have a heavy load or are pulling a trailer, the extra weight increases your stopping distance. When it is hard for you to see. When it's hard for you to see ahead of because of darkness, bad weather, or large vehicles, you need to increase your following distance. When followed closely. When being followed closely, you, sh you should try to allow extra room. You'll be able to stop without being hit from behind. When following emergency vehicles. Police vehicles, ambulances, and fire trucks need additional room to operate. Do not follow closer than 500 feet to a fire truck. <coughs> When approaching railroad crossings, leave extra room behind vehicles required to stop at railroad crossings, including transit buses, school buses, or vehicles carrying hazardous materials. When stopped on a hill or incline, leave extra space when stopped on a hill or incline. The vehicle ahead may roll back when it starts up. Space behind. We just finished talking about space ahead, or we're talking about space behind. To maintain a safe distance between your vehicle, be aware of the vehicle behind you. If it has fallen closer than four seconds, or whether or not the vehicle is closing in. Additionally, keep a steady speed and signal in advance of turning. Stopping to pick up, stopping to pick up or left off passengers. Find a safe place out of traffic to stop. Parallel parking. If you want to parallel park and there is traffic behind you, put on your turn signal, pull next to the space, and allow following vehicles to pass before you park. Driving slowly. When you have to drive so slowly that you slow down other vehicles, pull to the side of the road where it's safe to do so and let them pass. There are turnout areas on the, on some two lane roads you can use. Other two lane roads sometimes have passing lanes. Being tailgated. If you're being followed too closely and there is a right lane, move over to the right. If there is no right lane, wait until the road ahead is clear, then reduce speed slowly. This will encourage the tailgater to drive around you. Never slow down quickly to discourage a tailgater. Doing that increases your risk of a collision from behind. Space to the side. 
You need space on both sides of your vehicle to have room to turn or change lanes. Be ready to adjust your speed and position if necessary. Avoid driving next to other vehicles, especially with our trucks on multi-lane roads. Someone may crowd your lane and try to change lanes and pull into you. Move ahead, drop back and behind the vehicle, and change lanes. Always check your blind spot when changing lanes. A vehicle occupying your blind spot creates risk. If road or traffic conditions on one side of your vehicle changes, check the opposite side in case you need to respond quickly to a new hazard or risk. Keep as much space as you can between yourself and oncoming vehicles. On a two-lane road, this means not crowding the center lane. Generally, it is safest to drive in the center of your lane. Make room for vehicles entering a roadway that has two or more lanes. If there is no one next to you, move over a lane. Keep extra space between your vehicle and parked cars. Someone could step out from a parked vehicle, from behind vehicles, or a parked vehicle could pull up. Use caution when approaching a stopped coach truck or roadside assistance, emergency or police vehicle that is using flashing lights or sirens. On highways with at least four lanes, two of which are for traffic moving in one direction, change lanes or move away from the stopped vehicle if it is safe to do so. On highways with less than four lanes, slow down and pass to the left if it is safe to do so. To reduce risk, choose only with the most open space to the left and choo choose only with the most open space to the left and right of your vehicle. Give extra space to pedestrians or bicyclists, especially children. They can move into your path quickly and without warning. Do not share a lane with a pedestrian or a bicyclist. Wait until it is safe to pass in the adjoining lane. Split the difference between two hazards. For example, steer a middle course between ongoing and parked vehicles. However, if one are more dangerous than the other, leave a little more space on the dangerous side. For example, if the oncoming vehicle is a trailer tractor, leave a little more room on the side that the truck will pass. When possible, take potential hazards one at a time. For example, if you're overtaking a bicycle and an oncoming vehicle is approaching, slow down and let the vehicle pass first, so you can give extra room to the bicycle rider. Here's a picture. Picture time! Yes, so the whole class can see. Guys, would I be a good librarian? Step one. <clears throat> Space to merge. Anytime you want to merge with other traffic, you need a gap of about four seconds. If you move into the middle of a four second gap, both you and the vehicle behind you have a two second following distance. You need a four second gap whenever you change lanes, enter a roadway, or when your lane merges with another tra travel lane. Do not merge into a small gap. A small gap can quickly become smaller and dangerous due to the lack of space if the driver in front needs to stop or slow down. If you want to move over several lanes, take them one at a time. Like going up and down stairs one step at a time, it is safest and easiest to merge one lane at a time. When other traffic is trying to merge into your lane, move to another lane to give them space when it is safe. Space to cross or enter. When you cross traffic, you need a large enough gap to get all the way across the road. When you enter traffic, you need enough space to first turn and then get up to speed. When you cross traffic, you need room to get all the way across. Stopping halfway across is only safe when there is a medium divider large enough for your vehicle. Do not stop in a divider where part of your vehicle is sticking into traffic. If you're turning left, make sure there are no vehicles, bi bicyclists, or pedestrians blocking your path. You do not want to be w waiting for a path to clear while stuck across a lane that has vehicles coming towards you. Even if you have a green light, do not start across an intersection if there are vehicles blocking your way. If caught in an intersection with a light changes to red, you will block traffic. You can get a ticket for blocking an intersection. Never assume another driver will share space with you or give you space. For example, do not turn just because an approaching vehicle has a turn signal on. The driver may plan, may plan to turn after they pass your vehicle or may have forgotten to turn the signal off from a prior turn. This is particularly, do, particularly true of motorcycles because their signals often do not cancel by themselves. Wait until the other driver actually starts to turn, then proceed. When you cross railroad tracks, ensure you can cross without stopping on the tracks. Okay. Space to pass. Whenever signs or road markings permit you to pass, you will have to judge whether you have enough room to pass safely. Do not count on having enough time to pass several vehicles at once. Be safe. Generally, only pass one vehicle at a time. Oncoming vehicles. At a speed of 55 miles... <laughs> At a speed of 55 miles per hour, you need about 10 seconds to pass another vehicle. This means you need a 10 second gap in uncommon traffic and slight distance to pass. You must judge whether you have enough space to pass safely. When passing another vehicle on a two lane roadway, you must return to the right side of the roadway when there is enough room between you and the vehicle you have passed. Okay, all this specific shit does not make sense to me, but it'll make a lot more sense once I actually drive. That That's the conclusion I've come to. So hopefully everybody listening this will be like brainwashing, so when you actually get behind the wheel, you'll be like, Oh, I heard that before. Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. <clears throat> At 55 miles per hour, you and an oncoming vehicle will travel over 800 feet in 10 seconds. That means you need over 1,600 feet or about one third of a mile to pass safely. 
It is hard to judge the speed of an oncoming vehicle at this distance. They do not seem to be coming as fast as they really are. A vehicle that is far away generally appears to be standing still, and in fact, if you can actually see that it is coming closer, it may not be too close for you to pass. If you are in doubt, wait to pass until you are assured that there is enough space. Hills and curves. You've been able to see at least one third of a mile, <clears throat> or you have to be able to see at least one third of a mile, or about 15 seconds ahead. Assume there is an oncoming vehicle, out of sight if your view is blocked by a curve or a hill in the roadway. Do not start to pass if you are within one third of a mile of a hill or a curve. Intersections. It is dangerous to pass when our vehicle is likely to enter across a road. Such places include intersections, road crossings, and shopping centers. When passing, your view of vehicles or trains can be blocked by the vehicle you are passing. Drivers turning right into the approaching lane will not expect to find you approaching in their lane. They may not even look your way before turning. Yeah, I am in the same boat as you, a hacker. I don't understand any of this shit. <laughs> Hopefully me just reading it. This makes me feel like I don't know how to drive, dude. I feel like nobody actually reads the book. As an adult who like takes their driving test. I know if you're a minor and you take like the driving classes, they give you worksheets and they give you the book and shit. But if you're an adult, I feel like nobody reads the book. That's why I'm reading it. Large trucks, buses, and vehicles pulling tractors swing wide and sometimes must cross the center line to make turns. Do not crawl the intersection or attempt to pass these vehicles, especially on the right side. Lane restrictions. Before you pass, look ahead for road conditions and traffic that may cause other vehicles to move into your lane. You might lose your space for passing because of people walking or bicycling on the road or shoulder, a narrow bridge or other situation that causes reduced lane width, ice, a pothole, or something on the road. Space to return. Do not pass unless you have enough space to return to the driving lane. Do not count on other drivers to make room for you. Railroad gate. <laughs> I'm gonna say gay. Railroad grade crossing. Do not pass if there's a railroad grade crossing ahead. When you return to the driving lane, be sure to leave enough room between you and the vehicle you've passed. When you can see both headlights of the vehicle just pass in your rear view mirror, it is safe to return to the driving lane. Space for bicyclists. The safety of bicyclists on the road is a responsibility shared by both motorists and bicyclists. All bicyclists have the same rights, duties, and responsibilities of a motor vehicle driver. Motorists and riders who do not pay traffic laws will be ticketed. Every year, over 38,000 bicyclists- Oh my fucking god. Every year, over 38,000 bicyclists are killed or injured in the United States. How many vehicle deaths were there? Jesus Christ. Is it safer on the bike than the fucking car? Jesus. Oh my god, sorry. Uh, that's actually concerning. Can you go back to the stats? You have no respect for bike people? Yeah, that's why I don't ride on the fucking road. I don't want to die. Let's go hit on the sidewalk a few times. Wait, hold on. I, I need to actually find the stat. Keep driving sense. It's a chapter that I talked about. Okay, so... Wait, what the f Okay, hold, hold. Okay, this stat said every year over 38,000 bicyclists are killed or injured in the States. Okay, from the years of 2009 to 2011, 469 people died and then 2,421 people were injured. So, but that's in Washington. It's 10 that sounds 50, 100,000. Okay, so I can only assume from the stats that a bike is less lethal than a car. But Jesus Christ, 30,000 people? How many people is that a day? 365? BRB, no problem. Wait, 38,000 divided by 360. That's 100 people a day. Divided by 50 states. About two people per state. Oh my god. Oh my god. Bruh. I've had some close calls, but... Jesus Christ. <laughs> and there's like triple that of car accidents every year. Holy fuck. 
We should just get rid of cars. Can we just, like, scratch that, get rid of them? We should just have all self-driving cars. But then, the people wouldn't get sued, and the car would get sued. Imagine if we had an all-bike society. That'd be kind of crazy, wouldn't it? I'd like that. Okay, because if we had an all-bike society, then theoretically, cities would be more... They'd be easier to, like, walk around and bike in. That'd be great. It'd be like EU. It'd be great. Let's go back to reading. Dude, 38,000. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna be one of those 38,000, no, no. It is essential that motorists understand their responsibility to do their part for safety on the road. A driver who seriously injures or kills a vulnerable road user, pedestrian or bicyclist, may be subject to civil as well as criminal penalties. Yeah, fuck the manslaughter people. Will I have more bike rats? Yeah, I think in my town. There's... Okay, there's three in the park in the downtown. That doesn't count. But... I think... Okay, I think there should be a bike rack at any, like, mall or store. Because... Or, like, any parking lot. I don't think we have a bike rack at our local Walmart anymore, either. Because, like, there's obviously people who bike to the store, you know? Will there be sport bikes, like sport cars? I mean, there's some pretty epic bikes you can buy. We used to have a bike shop in town, and, like, one of the more expensive bikes they had started at 2k. I mean, I was gonna buy it, but then I was like, nah. <laughs> I'm kidding, I would never. It's way too much. Drivers must stop for bicyclists crossing in a painted or unpainted crosswalk where the bicyclist is within one line of the within one lane of their half of the roadway. Drivers crossing a sidewalk must yield to bicyclists on the sidewalk. Drivers crossing a sidewalk must yield to bicyclists on the sidewalk. Oh, I, I okay. So I was like, where were they driving the sidewalk? Okay, so you're like you know when you go into a parking lot. And there's sidewalk, and then there's like a ramp for cars to get out. Okay, that's it. That's okay, that makes sense. Bicycle lanes are marked with solid white lines. Drivers must yield to bicyclists in a bicycle lane. Do not drive in a bicycle lane except when making a turn or when you need to cross the bicycle lane to park near the curb. Never park in a bicycle lane. At intersections, drivers must yield to bicycle riders the same as you would for any motorist. Allow at least three feet of space between any portion of the vehicle and the bicycle when overtaking or passing a bicycle. Pass to the left of a pedestrian or bicyclist that is on the right hand shoulder or bicycle lane at, in a, at a distance that will clearly avoid coming in contact with them. Until you are safe to clear the bicyclist, do not return to the right side of the road. Do not drive on the left side of the roadway when you see an approaching pedestrian or bicyclist if the width or condition of the roadway shoulder or bicycle lane makes it unsafe. If parked in a curb, look before you open any door in the path of a car, bicyclist, or pedestrian. Drivers must take responsibility for knowing the laws that apply to bicyclists and for operating their vehicle safety. In addition to state law, the following safety tips will help motorists prevent injuries and collisions with bicyclists. Look for bicyclists. Imagine. Scan intersections before entering or turning and yield to bicyclists when necessary. When changing lanes, making turns, or when backing motorists need to check carefully for bicyclists out of the normal range of view. Use the Dutch reach to position yourself to look back before opening the door. Create a safety buffer with space. Do not attempt to share a lane with the bicyclist. Follow the bicyclist and wait for a safe opportunity to pass. If there is more than one lane for traffic proceeding in the same direction, move the vehicle to the lane to the immediate left. If the lane is available, moving it to the lane and is reasonably safe. The higher the speed limit, the more important this additional space is. When calculating the passing space, remember to think about projecting mirrors, loads, and other potential hazards that are part of your overall vehicle space. Create a safer buffer with time. Recognize that a bicyclist may be traveling faster or slower than you estimate or may need to change position in a lane to avoid a hazard you can't see. By leaving extra space, you also create time in which you can react safely and avoid seriously injuring or killing someone. Think before you pass. If you're about to make a right turn, do not pass the bicyclist immediately before the turn. Slow down a little bicyclist, clear the intersection before making your turn rather than cutting in front of the rider. Be careful after you just pass the bicyclist. Bicyclist is so difficult to say. It's not just me, right? It's so fucking hard to say. Do not slow down or stop quickly. A motor vehicle's brakes are more powerful than a bicycle's, and if you stop suddenly, you can cause a crash. Imagine. Bicyclist responsibilities. 
A bicycle is defined in Washington as every device propelled solely by human power upon which a person or persons may ride, having two tandem wheels, either <coughs> either of which is 16 inches or more in diameter, or three wheels, any of which is more than 20 inches in diameter. State bicycle laws also allow people to ride an electric assisted bicycle. Electric assisted bicycles are defined as bicycles that can be operated pedals, but also have an electric motor capable of propelling the bike no more than 20 miles per hour on level ground. My friend is one of those, and it's fun as fuck. It is essential that bicyclists understand their responsibilities to, to do their part for safety on the road. Bicyclists may use the shoulder of the freeways and other highways, especially where signs say... Wait, what? Bicyclists may use the so sh shoulders of freeways and other highways, especially where signs say it's illegal. Bicyclists may use hand signals before turning. Bicyclists can only carry the number of people for which it is designed. Bicyclists operating on a roadway at a rate of speed less than the normal flow of traffic must ride as near to the right of the roadway as it is safe. Lane positioning for safety is in the right of judgment, and a bicyclist may legally use the full lane. Oh shit. So I can ride on the road if I want to! Let's go. It doesn't help that bicyclist is 20% of the book. I know, fuck. It's like, it's not helping. Guys, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're like 80% done. <coughs> when riding on a two-lane road where, the, where it is unsafe to pass, and five or more vehicles are on the lane behind you, bicyclists may must pull over and stop when in the rider's judgment it is safe to let vehicles pass. Bicyclists have the choice to ride on the roadway, on the shoulder of the road, or in the bicycle lane, or on sidewalk. On the sidewalk, you motherfuckers who gave me shit for riding on the sidewalk. I can ride on the sidewalk if I want to, bitch. Um. Or on the sidewalk where it is legal to do so. Bicyclists must yield to pedestrians on sidewalks or in the crosswalks. Use an audible signal to warn pedestrians before passing. Local agencies may prohibit bicycling on some sections of sidewalks. Um, I had a bike a uh, bell, but then I lost it. And then when I cleaned my room, I couldn't find it. So, oopsie. I need to buy another bell. <coughs> Can I skip the fucking bike part? I'm skipping the bike part. Did she get a horn? No, that's annoying. I'm by my Okay, I'm skipping the rest of the bike part. I don't- I- 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 No. Motorcyclists? I- No. I'm skipping that. Okay, large vehicles, which I have, that I'm gonna practice driving on, because we have the SUV. Safely sharing the road with the large trucks and buses require knowledge of their special limitations. Generally speaking, the bigger they are, the bigger their blind spots, the more room they need to turn or change lanes, the longer it takes to stop, the longer it takes them to pass, the more likely you're going to be the loser in a collision. Oh, fake. Right. GG's. <laughs> when you're near large vehicles on the road, pay special attention to the following. Snow plows. Use extra caution when you encounter snow removal equipment. Snow plow blades force snow up and off the road, potentially causing blizzard-like conditions and reduce visibility for drivers following too closely. Blind spots. Stay out of blind spots. If you're following a large vehicle and you cannot see the driver's mirrors, then the driver cannot see you either. There are blind spots behind and on either side of large vehicles. Avoid driving alongside large vehicles for prolonged periods. Visibility. Large vehicles can block your vision of the road ahead. When following large vehicles, adjust your following distance so you can see most of the roadway ahead. Speeding up and stopping. Large vehicles cannot gain speed or stop as quickly as smaller vehicle can. For example, it takes a loaded truck with properly adjusted brakes 450 feet to come to a complete stop when traveling 55 miles per hour on a dry road. Allow extra space for large vehicles to speed up or stop. The operators of the vehicles adjust the speed between their vehicles and the vehicles ahead of them for a safe following distance. When passing them, be sure to allow for their increased safety zone when returning to your lane of travel. <coughs> Turning space. When making sharp turns, large vehicles sometimes require more than one lane to complete the turn. Be sure to allow room for these vehicles to safely complete their turns. When turning right, these drivers may angle into the left lane so they can make the right turn without running over the curb or hitting something. Dude, this happened to me several times. People always clip me on the fucking sidewalk. Do not try to squeeze by on the right side when the large vehicles are making a turn. This is a frequent cause of collisions involving large vehicles. Are those people actually brain dead? Think you can cut off a semi truck? They- Nope. They're just stupid. They're stupid. They're stupid. I need to watch what I say. <laughs> hazardous materials. Avoid driving near vehicles carrying hazardous materials. These vehicles will be black harder to identify what they are carrying. All vehicles carrying hazardous materials must stop at all railroad crossings, so be prepared to stop if you are following one. Long, steep grades. When traveling up and down steep grades, large vehicles travel slowly. 
On four lane roads, they will use the right lane. Be prepared to encounter slow vehicles in the right lane or do not park in or near escape or runway ramps. These ramps should only be used to stop vehicles when brakes have failed. <gasps> chapter 5, page 1. Guys, two more chapters left, holy shit. Wait. Wait, what? Yeah, so this chapter is about general practices, so smoking, drinking, and then the last chapter is about emergency situations. Guys, we're getting there. We're in the final stretch. I need more water. If you're still here, type one in chat. <laughs> if you're still here. It's funny because we can see who's on mobile. <laughs> who's paying attention? Oh shit. My knees, dude, my knees. <sighs> okay. In shape to drive. Driving safely is not easy. In fact, it is one of the most complex things that people do. Driving is one of the few things we do regularly that can injure or kill us. It is worth the effort to be a careful driver. Being a safe driver takes a great deal of skill and judgment. This task is even more difficult when you're just learning to drive. The first six months of driving for any novice driver regardless of age are the most critical because a new driver is more likely to be involved in crash due to lack of experience. Oh yeah, Vod will be gone. <laughs> Driving in enchiladas, dude, that sounds so good. Oh my god. That actually sounds so good. You know what I want? I want tamales. Tamale sounds so good. Okay, enough. We gotta finish this before I can even think about dinner. Driving requires the individual to utilize mental, visual, and physical ability to safely operate a vehicle. If anything, ha wait, if anything happens resulting in an impairment of your abilities, you may not be a safe driver. Mental and visual abilities are necessary when judging gaps in traffic and other functions necessary to make rapid and appropriate maneuver decisions. Physical abilities, including the flexibility of the neck and torso, are important when using best possible vision for safety hazards before turning, backing, changing lanes, and merging. This includes strength in your extremities and the stamina needed for effective control of the vehicle under normal and emergency response conditions. Your ability to be a safe driver depends on being able to see clearly, not being overly tired, not driving while under the influence of drugs or alcohol, and being emotionally fit to drive. Emotionally fit? So if you're mentally ill, can you not drive? Can I get a waiver? You are responsible for being in shape to drive safely. Vision. Your vision? Good vision is a must for safe driving. You drive based on what you see. If you cannot see clearly, you will have trouble identifying traffic and broken positions, spotting potential trouble, or reacting in a timely manner. Vision is so important that the law requires that you pass a vision test before you get a driver's license. If the test shows your eyesight does not meet the licensing standard without glasses, your license may have a restriction for corrective lenses. We may require you get an examination by an eye care specialist and submit a visual examination report. Other important aspects of vision are side vision. You can see out the corner of your eye. This lets you spot vehicles and other potential trouble on either side of you when you look ahead. Because you cannot focus on things to the side, you must also use your side mirrors and glance to the side if necessary. Judging distances and speeds. Even if you can see clearly, you still not be able to judge distance or speed well. You are not alone. Many people have this problem. It takes practice to be able to judge both. If it, it is especially important in knowing how far you are from other vehicles, judging safe gaps when merging and passing on two-lane roads. Or when judging the speed of a train before crossing tracks safely. Night vision! It is more difficult to see at night than in daytime. Some drivers have problems with glare while driving at night, especially with the glare of oncoming headlights. If problems seeing at night, don't drive more than necessary and be careful when you do so. Because seeing well is so important to safe driving, you should have your eyes checked every year or two by an eye specialist. You may never know how your poor vision unless your eyes are tested. If you need to wear eye glasses or contact lenses for driving, remember to always wear them when you drive, even if you're only going out down the street. If your driver license says you must wear corrective lenses and you get stopped without them, you could get a ticket. 
Try to keep an extra pair of glasses in your vehicle. Okay. If your regular glasses are broken or lost, you'd still have the spare pair to- You can use the spare pair to drive safely. This can also be helpful if you do not wear glasses all the time because misplacing them is easy. Actually, five head. Avoid using dark glasses or tinted contact lenses at night, even if you think they'll help with glare. This will also cut down the light that you need to see clearly. Who knew? Hearing can be as- Uh... Dude, I'm delusional. Guys, we're so close. We're so close. We're so close. <coughs> hearing can be as helpful. Wait. Hearing can be helpful to safe driving. The sounds of horn, sirens, or screeching tires can warn you of danger. Hearing problems like bad eyesight can come on so slowly that you do not notice it. Drivers who know that they are deaf or hard of hearing problems can adjust and be safe drivers. These drivers learn to rely more on their vision and tend to stay more alert. Studies have shown that the driver records of hearing impaired drivers are just as good as drivers with good hearing. We love not being ableist. Fatigue! When your driver drowsy drowsy or tired, you do not see as well, nor are you as alert. It takes more time to make decisions, and your ability to react to situations is greatly diminished. You can be more rational and easily upset. When you're tired, you can also increase the risk of falling asleep behind the wheel. <laughs> Resulting collisions can cause major injury or death to yourself or others. <laughs> there are things you can do to help getting... From getting tired on a long trip. Try to get a normal night's sleep before you leave. Never do. Do not leave on a trip if you're already tired. Lamau. Plan your trip so you can leave when you're rested. Do not take any medicine that, make you jive. that can make you drowsy. Eat lightly. Do not eat a large meal before you leave. Some people get sleepy after they eat a big meal. Huh. Take breaks. Stop every hour or so when you need to. Walk around, get some fresh air, have some coffee, soda, water, or juice. A few minutes spent on a rest break can save your life. Plan your trip with plenty of time for breaks to complete your trip safely. Try not to drive late at night when you're normally asleep. Your body thinks it's time to go to sleep and will try to do so. Never drive if you're sleepy. It is better to stop and sleep for a few hours than to risk your life for others. If possible, switch driving chats with another driver so you can sleep while they drive. That's why when I worked those two jobs, two jobs, um, I would leave the house at 7 and not get home until 11. And it was banned. Uh, drinking alcohol and driving. Alcohol is involved in about 40% of all traffic collisions in which someone is killed. If you drink alcohol even a little, your chances of being in a collision are much greater than if you do not drink any alcohol. No one can drink alcohol and drive safely even if you've been driving for many years. Because drinking alcohol and driving is so dangerous, the penalties are very rough. People who drive after drinking alcohol risk heavy fines, heavy insurance rates, loss of license, and even jail sentences. Why is drinking and driving so dangerous? Alcohol reduces all skills you need to drive safely. Alcohol is a drug that depresses the central nervous system. As a depressant, alcohol slows the activity of the brain and the spinal cord. Initially, the drinker experiences the depressant action, action of the alcohol and reduced tension and lowered inhibitions. These feelings can frequently be observed in drinkers as they become more active, talkative, loud, and as they begin to do and say things that are not part of their normal behavior pattern. If enough alcohol is consumed, the results can progress to drowsiness, sleep, unconsciousness, and eventually death. Chat, don't drink. Unlike most food, alcohol does not have to be digested. Once it's swallowed, it, it is absorbed directly into the bloodstream through the walls of the stomach and small intestine, usually within 20 to 40 minutes. If there is food in the stomach, the absorption process may be slowed. <coughs> As a drug, alcohol is a depressant, which will allow which will affect your driving skills in the following ways. In the following ways, judgment: your decision-making process is much slower. Ability to recall past events or learn knowledge is diminished, and your decisions may be faulty. Okay, chat, if you were in stream earlier, if you deny taking a breathalyzer test, how long can they take away your license? First one to get it right gets a smiley face. Vision. Your vision becomes impaired, depth perception becomes distorted, and the pupil of the eyes react more slowly to variations in light. Concentration. A year, uh, Mac got it first. Mac, smi smiley faces in chat for Mac. Good job. Good job, Lemon 2. Understanding. Your comprehension le level... As to what is happening around you will suffer. You may not realize what you are doing. Feeling in terms of senses. Your feelings are suppressed. You don't feel speed, so you won't realize that you are speeding. Oh, interesting. Um, reaction time. Coordination deteriorates. It will take you longer to react and move your foot to the gas pedal to the brake. A slow reaction time can be the difference between arriving safely and not arriving at all. When you drink, can you drive? No. Any amount of alcohol is too much when it comes to driving. Do not drive if you drink alcohol. Even one drink of alcohol can affect driving. With one or more drinks in your bloodstream, you are impaired and may be arrested. 
Jail them all. Not all drinks contain equal amounts of alcohol. The alcoholic content of any one drink depends upon the, both the type and the amount of liquor it contains. Some drinks contain more alcohol than others do. The alcohol content of some beverages is aided in terms of proof, a number that is actually double its alcoholic content or percentage. <clears throat> a typical alcoholic drink is uh, one shot glass straight or with a mixer, 12 ounces of beer, like a can, bottle, mug, glass, or five ounce glass of wine. Specialty drinks have more alcohol in them and make this maybe have the and maybe the same as having several normal drinks. Very small quantities of alcohol are eliminated through sweat, breath, and urine. The body disposes of most alcohol through oxidation or burning in the liver. The oxidation pl takes place at a constant rate and nothing can be done to slow down or accelerate the process. It continues till all the alcohol has been burned. In other words, only time will sober up a person. It takes about one hour for your body to get rid of each drink. There are ways of dealing with social decoration social drinking situations arrange to go with two more persons and agree that one person will not drink you can also take turns being a designated driver use public transportation or use a cab or ride hailing service or walk the consequences of the use of alcohol can be disastrous about 40 percent of all traffic deaths occur in crashes in which a drinking driver is involved uh so chat if you're gonna go drink make sure you have a designated driver please or make sure you have like a rideshare service available to you. Um, you know what I never understood? I never understood how people could drive to a bar and park at a bar. Like if people... Like you go to a bar to drink. Why would they... I, I don't understand why they let people drive and park at a bar. It's They're only going to drive home, right? I, I never understood that. I never did. <clears throat> okay. Um, marijuana. I think we'll skim through this. Because I know marijuana is inapplicable in every state. The only bad thing about marijuana is that it does stay in your system for several days, potentially. So even if you take a test, it can still show up on it. So it sucks how the effects aren't won't necessarily last more than a day, but it's still in your system. It says it's easier to overconsume because the effects are delayed. Can impair you for after five hours. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, it's also saying don't do other drugs. Make sure if you're prescribed any medication to talk with your doctor if it's going to impair your driving ability. Like we said, if you take a breathalyzer and you refuse it, you can get up to a year. Um, it's basically saying what you can be arrested for if you drive under the influence. Oh. If you're driving under the influence and there's a, a kid in the car, CPS will be contacted. If you're riding your bike and you're under the influence of alcohol or marijuana, they might impound your bike. They'll take your bike away. <laughs> like, they won't arrest you. But they might, it says they might drive you home, and then they'll take your bike away. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, if you're caught... If you're caught drinking and driving, your license will be suspended.
And if you're caught again, your license will be taken away. You also can get a restricted driver's license. That's if you are found driving under the influence and then you can get a different license that'll let you drive for like work and commuting and stuff. Hi, welcome back, Lemon. I'm not reading through all of this because I know this doesn't apply to necessarily every state and I don't want to talk about drugs too much. You can also... Let's see. Upon the open container law, it's a traffic infraction if to drink any alcoholic beverage or consume marijuana in any matter in a motor vehicle upon a highway. For a person in a motor vehicle upon a highway to possess any container with an alcoholic beverage if the container has been opened or a seal has been broken or the contents partially removed, to incorrectly label the original container of an alcoholic beverage or marijuana in place or place an alcoholic beverage or marijuana in a container labeled as containing non-alcoholic or non-marijuana substance. Or for the registered owner or driver to keep an open container of alcoholic beverage or marijuana in a vehicle on the highway, especially or unless it is in an area not normally occupied by drivers or passengers. Or passengers. The container cannot be kept in any accessible storage compartment. So, TLDR, don't keep shit in your car. Okay. If you're a minor, your license will be revoked for one year until you're 17. If you do it again, your driving privilege will be revoked for two years. Okay, this one is talking about like uh, physical like health conditions, how it affects your driving. Okay, I'll, I'll read this one. Many health problems can affect your driving, a bad cold, infection, or virus. Even little problems such as a stiff neck, a cough, or a sore leg can affect your driving. If you are not feeling well or need to go somewhere, let someone else drive. These conditions can be very dangerous when driving. Epilepsy. As long as it ha as long as it is as long as it is under medical control, epilepsy generally is not dangerous. In Washington, you may drive if you are under the care of a doctor or have been taking your medication and have not had a seizure for six months. Interesting. Diabe diabetics who take insulin should not drive when there is any chance of an insulin reaction, blackout, convulsion, or shock. Such a situation could result from skipping a meal or snack or from taking the wrong amount of insulin. It also might be a good idea to have someone else drive for you during times when you are in a doctor is suggesting your insulin dosage. If you have diabetes, you should have your eyes checked regularly for possible night blindness or other vision problems. Heart condition. People with heart disease, high blood pressure, or circulation problems, or those in danger of a blackout, fainting, or heart attack should not get behind the wheel. If you're being treated by a doctor for a heart condition, ask if the condition should affect your driving ability. So, if you have any concerns, talk to your doctor. Get everything clarified. Emotions. <gasps> Emotions can affect your ability to drive safely. You may not be able to drive well if you're overly worried, excited, afraid, angry, or depressed. If you're angry or excited, give yourself time to cool off. If necessary, take a short walk, but stay off the road until you have calmed down. If you're worried, depressed, or upset about something, try to keep your mind on your driving. Some find listening to the radio helps. If you are impatient, allow extra time for your trip. By leaving a few minutes early, instead of speeding to your destination, you may avoid a speedy ticket and reduce your chances of a collision. Road rage! Today, heavy traffic and tight schedules are the norm. Some drivers take their anger out on the roadways, endangering themselves and others. When you see other drivers around you acting or reacting in danger, distance yourself from the situation physically and mentally. Don't make eye contact. Don't look them in the eyes. <laughs> Body movements and gestures can provoke an angry response from another driver. Slow down, move over, and do whatever you safely can to put yourself out of danger. Your courtesy may encourage the same from other drivers. If you feel like you're being followed or harassed by another driver, seek help. Exit only in an area where there are other people and open businesses around you. If you have a cellular phone, use it to call the police. Okay, chatters, chatters, chatters. We are six hours into stream. The study time is almost over. But you know, it's not over. Ads. <laughs> because we're six hours and it's time for me to run a few minutes of ads. 
if you're an announcer and you're watching and you're here, just subscribe, five dollars. Link your Prime to your Twitch and get a free sub. Also, we uploaded that new TikTok an hour ago, so go watch it, leave a comment, like it. Um, after the ad, we have one more chapter left. One more chapter. And this chapter is talking about emergency situations. So I think this is very important for everyone to listen to. So chatter, stick around, get some water, get a snack. After this, we're gonna finish off this final chapter and then thanks, subs. Right at 10, screw you. <laughs> okay. Emergencies. All drivers, sooner or later, will find themselves in an emergency situation. As careful as you are, there are situations that could cause a problem for you. If you are prepared, you may be able to prevent any serious outcomes. There is always a chance of a vehicle problem while driving. You should follow the recommended maintenance schedule listed in the vehicle owner's manual. Following these preventative measures greatly reduce the chance of your vehicle will have a problem. Possible vehicle failures and what you can do if they happen are listed here. Brake failure. Chatters, get your notebooks out. Take notes. Take notes. This is good shit. Take notes. Brake failure. If your brakes stop working, pump the brake pedal several times. This will often build up enough brake pressure to allow you to stop. If that does not work, use the parking brake. Allow the parking brake or apply the parking brake slowly so you will not lock the rear wheels and cause a skid. Be ready to release the brake if the vehicle does start to skid. If that does not work, start shifting to lower gears and look for a safe place to slow to a stop. Make sure the vehicle is off the roadway. Do not drive the vehicle without brakes. Tire blowout. If a tire suddenly goes flat, hold the steering wheel tightly and keep the vehicle going straight. Slow down gradually. Take your foot off the gas pedal and use the brakes lightly. Do not stop on the road if at all possible. Pull off the road to a safe place. Power failure. If the engine stalls while you're driving, keep a strong gri grip on the steering wheel. Be aware that the steering wheel may be difficult to turn, but you can turn it with more effort. So just be strong. Got it. Pull off the roadway. The brakes will still work, but you may have to push very hard on the brake pedal. Headlight failure. If your headlights suddenly go up, try the headlight switch a few times. If that does not work, put on the emergency flashers, turn signals, or fog lights if you have them. Pull off the road as soon as possible. Gas pedal sticks. The motor keeps going faster and faster. Sorry. That's actually really scary. Keep your eyes on the road. Quickly shift to neutral. Pull off the road when it's safe to do so. Turn off the engine. Avoiding collisions. When it looks like a collision might happen, many drivers panic and fail to act. There is usually something you can do to avoid the crash or reduce the impact of the crash. In avoiding a collision, drivers have three options, stop, turn, or speed up. Stopping quickly. Many newer drivers have an anti-lock braking system, ABS, ABS. Be sure to read the vehicle's owner manual on how to use ABS. The ABS system allows you to stop without skidding. With abs, you if you have abs and must stop quickly, press on the brake pedal as hard as you can and keep pressing on it. Do not let up on the brake pedal. You might feel the brake pedal pushing back when the abs is working. The abs system will only work when the brake pedal is pushed down. If you do not have abs and must stop quickly, you can cause the vehicle to skid if you brake too hard. Apply the brakes as hard as you can without locking them. If the brakes lock up, you can feel the vehicle start to skid. Quickly let up the brake pedal. As soon as the vehicle stops getting pushed down on the brake pedal again, keep doing this until the vehicle has stopped. Turning quickly. We should consider turning in order to avoid a collision. In most cases, you can turn the vehicle quicker than you can stop it. Make sure you have a good grip on both hands on the steering wheel. Once you have turned away or changed lanes, you must be ready to keep the vehicle under control. Some drivers steer away from one collision only to end up in another. Always steer in the direction where you want your vehicle to go. With abs, if you have abs, you can turn your vehicle while braking without skidding. This is very helpful if you must turn and stop and slow down. Without abs. If you do not have abs, you must use a different procedure to turn quickly. You should step on the brake pedal, then let up and turn the steering wheel. Braking will slow the vehicle and put more weight on the front tires and allow for a quicker turn. Do not lock up the front wheels while braking or turn so sharply that the vehicle wheels start to skid. Generally, it is better to run off the road than collide head-on with another vehicle. Guys, we have three more pages, three more pages, and we're done. Get ready to spam. I was here, okay? <coughs> Speeding up. Sometimes it is best or necessary to speed up to avoid a collision. This may happen when another vehicle is about to hit you from the side or from behind, and there is room to the front of you to get out of the danger. Be sure to slow down once the danger has passed. Okay, hold, pause. My sister wants to switch. Everybody hold. Everybody, um, peace and two spin.
Yo. I that was my sister. She texted to me switch question mark and then a sad face. And then I texted her that she owes me chore money. She better pay up. Or I'm gonna steal that switch bag. Even though it's technically hers. <laughs> we love sister. <laughs> Okay, you guys, we're almost done. Two more pages, two more pages. <clears throat> Dealing with skids. Any road that is safe under normal conditions can be dangerous when it is wet or has snow or ice on it. High speeds under normal conditions also increase the possibility of a skid if you turn or stop suddenly. Skids are caused when the tires can no longer grip the road. Because you cannot control a vehicle when it is skidding, it is best to avoid skidding in the first place. Skids are caused by drivers traveling too fast for conditions. If your vehicle begins to skid. Stay off the brake. Until the vehicle slows, the brakes will not work and will cause you to skid more. Turn the steering wheel in the direction you want the vehicle to go. To go. As soon as the vehicle begins to straighten out, turn the steering wheel back the other way. If you do not do so, your vehicle may swing around in the other direction and you can start a new skid. Can you continue to steer? Continue to correct your steering left and right until the vehicle is again moving down the road under your control. Protecting yourself in collisions. You may not always be able to avoid a collision. Try everything you can to keep from getting hit. If nothing works, try to lessen any injuries that can result from the collision. The most important thing you can do is use your lap and your shoulder belts. Besides your seat belts, there are a couple other things you can do to prevent more serious injuries. Hit from the rear. If your vehicle is hit from the rear, your body will be thrown backwards. Press yourself against the back of the seat and put your head against the head restraint. Be ready to apply your brakes as well as so you not be pushed into another vehicle. Hit from the side. If your vehicle is hit from the side, your body will be thrown towards the side that is hit. Airbags will not help in this situation. Your lap and shoulder belts are needed to keep you behind the wheel. Get ready to steer or brake to prevent your vehicle from hitting something else. So you just have to cross your fingers you don't fucking hit your head. <coughs> hit from the front. If your vehicle is about to be hit from the front, it is important to try and have a glancing blow rather than being struck head on. This means that if a collision is about to happen, you should try to turn the vehicle. At worst, you're hit with a glancing blow. You might miss it. If your vehicle has an airbag, it will inflate. It also will deeply fall in the crash, so be ready to prevent your vehicle from hitting something else. You must use your lap and your shoulder belts to help keep you behind the wheel and protect you if your vehicle has a second collision. Dude, this hype music during when we're talking about actual crashes could not have worked out better. Awkward. Collisions. Do not stop at a collision unless you are involved or if emergency help has not yet arrived. Keep your attention on your driving and keep moving, watching for people who might be on or near the road. Never drive to the scene of a collision, fire, or other disaster just to look. Get no more looky loos. You may block the way for police, firefighters, and ambulances, tow trucks, and other rescue vehicles. You must obey all lawful orders given by police, firefighters, and other persons author authorized to direct traffic at the scene. It is against the law to drive over a fire hose. Doing this can damage the hose, injure firefighters, or hinder their efforts. No matter how good a driver you are, there may be a time where you are involved in a collision. If you are involved, you must stop. If involved in a collision with a parked vehicle, you must try and locate the owner. If any person is injured or killed, the police must be notified. If it is a crime, it is a crime for you to leave a collision site where your vehicle is involved. If there is an injury or death before police have talked to you and obtained the information they need, you may want to carry a basic vehicle emergency kit. These kits have emergency flares, first aid supplies, and basic tools. <laughs> Speedrun reading ya. One time, my my dad's car, um, it, it was parked on, like, in front of our house, and it got hit, um, by a tow truck. So the tow truck was going down our road, and what happened? Because it was trying to back up and make a U-turn, that way it could turn into our residential road, and the back of the trailer like crushed into my dad's door it sucked so and it was scary because he didn't realize that he hit our car and the tow truck just kept driving down the road and we we're like what the fuck it was a loud ass crunch it was like <sighs> and like he, people from like two houses down heard the crash and like the tow truck driver just kept, kept driving away we we're like what the fuck is he trying to hit and run and then he came back like 20 minutes later because he was like just down the road trying to tow somebody and he came back he's like yeah i didn't realize i hit you and then some neighbors came up to me and said that i hit your car but he's like you know i had to finish towing the i had to finish the job and i came back i was like 
Bruh. Anyway. At the- maybe he was eating a sandwich, maybe. <laughs> they were young, and they said they were new hires, so... Imagine being a new hire and you fucking hit a parked car. I hope they weren't fired, but still, it'd be warranted, honestly. Uh, anyway. At the collision scene. For all collisions that only damage a vehicle or other property, the driver must move the vehicle off the road, freeway, shoulder, or median to an exit ramp shoulder. Frontage road, cross road, or other suitable location as soon as it is possible to do so. For all other collisions, stop your vehicle at or near the collision site. If you can move your vehicle, get it off the road so it does not block traffic or cause another collision. Do not stand or walk in traffic lanes. You could be struck by another vehicle. Turn off the ignition of wrecked vehicles. Do not smoke around wrecked vehicles. Fuel could have spilled and fire is a real danger. If there are power, power lines down with wires in the road, do not go near them. Make sure that other traffic will not be involved in the collision. Use flares or other warning devices to alert traffic of the collision. If someone is injured, one, get help. Avi. Make sure the police and emergency medical or rescue squad have been called. If there's a fire, tell the police when they are called. Do not move the injured unless they are in a burning vehicle or any other immediate danger of being hit by traffic. Moving a person can make their injuries worse. Yep. Help anyone who is not already walking and talking. Check for breathing and check for bleeding. If there is any bleeding, apply pressure directly on the wound with your hand or with a cloth. Even severe bleeding can be stopped or slowed by putting pressure on the wound. Do not give any injured person anything to drink, not even water. Why not? To help prevent an injured person from going into shock, cover them with a blanket or coat to keep them warm. Wait, I want to look that up. Why can't you give an injured person something to drink? I've never heard that. Why can't you give an injured person something to drink? You know, what if I want to share my boba? Okay, do not give the person anything to drink. Someone in shock may vomit anything taken orally, which could result in choking. Oh. So they could just freak out and then we'll go blah. Okay. Oh, it also says giving water can cause dilution of blood and the victim could collapse before they... Huh. Oh. So, if, it, if it's an emergency situation, do not give them anything to drink until they've been seen by doctors. Okay, got it. That makes sense. Now I know. I can't give them my boba. Why are we dancing? Because we're talking about accidents. <clears throat> Reporting the collision. Guys, we're on the second to last page. Reporting the collision. Get the names and addresses of all people involved in the collision and any witnesses, including injured persons. Exchange information with other drivers, motorcyclists, bicyclists, or pedestrians involved in the crash, including name, address, license number, vehicle information, and insurance company and policy number if available. Record any damage to the vehicles involved in the collision, i.e. take videos or take pictures. Provide information to the police or other emergency officials if requested. To the cool to the collision of all the parked vehicle, try to find the owner. If you cannot, leave a note in place where it can be seen with information on how the owner can reach you and the date and time of the collision. If the collision results in an injury, death, or property damage of $1,000 or more to one per one's property and the report is not made by a law enforcement officer, you must complete a collision re report form within a four days. Okay, chat. This is the last section, the last page. Get ready to spam. I was here. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. The Emergency Notification System, or N-E-N-S. Every railroad grade crossing has an emergency dispatch number for contacting the railroad to report problems with the crossing tracks or train travel. The ENS number is typically located on blue sign on the railroad crossing points or a metal control box near the tracks. Okay, I've seen this before. The sign also contains a USDOT number that identifies the railroad grade crossings, physical locations so emergency crews and railroad personnel can respond. Before providing the US DOT number, the dispatchers will know exactly where the grade crossing is and can notify trains moving in that direction to either come to a stop or be placed on a speed reduction. Okay, I think we are done. Because this last section is talking about plates and registering a vehicle. Guys, we've done it. Let's stop our timers. Six hours. 
Wait, it took an hour to take the test. So basically five hours of reading. My throat is dead. Um, if I can't talk tomorrow, it'll be fine because we're playing Switch Sports Chatters. We're doing the bonus up go stream where we play Switch Sports. So it'll just be me like grunting as I hit volleyballs, okay? Um, but the stream is not over yet. Thank you to anybody who came in, who chatted. Uh, we do have to thank subs because we had Woof cheer 100 bits earlier, so I'm gonna get the second camp set up. Wait, I can eat my cookies! <laughs> Unless... <laughs> I get to eat my cookies as a treat. It's a new PB, I know, right? So, Chatter, since we have hit the end of stream... Um, what do you guys want to see for future subscriber-only streams? I know people said they want to do games. Um, thank you guys for redeeming. We'll do your name shortly. What else would you guys like to see for sub only streams? I like the idea of doing silly throwaway streams like this one. Where it's just like a random goof and, and gag, right? But what would you want to see if I start doing bi-weekly sub only streams? What do you want us to do? What would be good enough to where you would be willing to resubscribe every month? Tell me, tell me, tell me. We could make the monthly cookie decorating stream sub only. We could totally do that. Um, I think what I want to do for the next sub only stream, I want to do Uno. I think Uno would be very fun. Because we don't necessarily need a full lobby for it. Even if we have just one person playing, I think that's good enough. Okay. I have to figure out if Uno is on desktop or, or like a console. So chat is what we're doing right now. Um, if you sub, cheer, or gift to the channel, I'll write your name, or you can use your channel points. Among Us? No. Never. Never. Do you have to download anything? I don't know, I have to look into that. I'm not even sure if Uno's a free game. Cause I know... Uh, Minecraft? No. No. Never. Stinky. Ta da! Oh shit! <laughs> I accidentally unplugged it. What? Close to shadow. Okay. So let's do wolf first since they cheered bits, and then we'll do channel point names. Guys wanted green. What's four dollars? Okay, that's not that bad. I'll 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 have to look up which one we have to play because I know there's different. I'll try and see if there's like a free version. Okay, I'm trying to see what colors. Green and orange. Okay. Oh, my sister has to switch right now. Damn it. Hey, 
You gotta go? Okay, no problem. We'll see you next time, Lemon. I appreciate you with us today. You were here almost the whole stream. You crazy. But I hope you have a good day, hon. We'll see you probably tomorrow. Because we're doing the Switch stream tomorrow. But I think we're not going to be doing that Uno bonus stream until September. Because... I said... We'll only do sub-only streams where we don't have the bonus playing with viewer stream. So, you know how we have the Meg Esports, Animal Crossing, and then Mario Kart on every other Sunday, basically? So, Uno will probably be in, like, the first week of September. So we have time to figure out which version we need to buy. So, chatters, don't buy just yet. Oh shit, this too hard. Okay, so we had Wolf with a hundred bits to the chat room. Or to me, the <laughs> you know you guys don't get bits. But thank you once again, Wolf, for cheering. It's your first ever cheer. Thank you, hun. Oh my god, it's the Ludwig song. This orange is so pretty. <clears throat> is that a Mario Kart 8 puzzle? Like an IRL puzzle? I haven't done a puzzle in a long time. That sounds pretty fun. <clears throat> so chatters, you can sub to your gift to the channel when I write your name. Or... Use your channel points. And if you gift a total of five subs to the channel by the end of the month, you'll get a custom portrait sketch card done that is similar to this. Ain't that cool? Okay, so for channel points, we had Hacker and then Wolf. Well, there's two eyes in your name, damn it. I always forget. Oh, well, those eyes are literally perfect. Look at those. Oh my goodness. I'm good at this. Okay, so we had Hi Hacker. Okay, this is gonna be our last name, last call, everybody. Last call. Last name of the day. Dude, the stream went for longer, a lot longer than I anticipated. <laughs> But you know, that's fine. You know, I got my studying in. I think I'm ready for that test on Wednesday. And if I fail it, I'm gonna start stream on Thursday crying. Okay, there we go. We got Whoops R Us. Okay, chatters, last call, last call. I can't believe you read the whole book in one setting. I read most of it. I skipped some sections, but I read most of it. Like I said, once this is uploaded on YouTube, this can be like your study guide for any chatters who are gonna get their license one day. You just fill up the VOD. It'd be like an audiobook, a free audiobook. Because once it's on YouTube, it'll be free. <sighs> My prediction was almost accurate. Okay. Well, it took me five hours to read it, but then we took like an hour on the actual like practice test, so. You were kind of right, but also kind of wrong. Um, also, we're not going to raid today because I don't want to raid during a sub-only stream. I think that's kind of unfair. So no raid today. I, I think I'm only going to raid on normal streams. To BH. So I don't know how it works. I don't know if it's any different. Okay, chatters, let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> okay. 
so I think we can go ahead and end it here for today. So, once again, thank you to everybody who came to stream any chatters and lurkers. Thank you once again to Woof for cheering out your bits. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I think this was a cool tester for sub-only streams. Um, I don't think... I'll have to watch back and... Because, like, the issue with sub-only streams is that the VOD, I think, was still up, which is fine. Um, I think people can still make clips, which is fine. And then people who are non-subs can still see the stream for a short amount of time. So, uh... Sub-only streams allow some form of protection, but not too much. Not as much as I was hoping. Because you know how we were having issues with the Meggy Sports events to where... Um, we had a few snipers and stuff, so I'm not able to fully hide stuff on screen or in chat, so I don't know what to, well, I'll have to figure it out. We'll just have to cross our fingers so you don't get more snipers. Okay, um, okay, no problem, hacker. I appreciate you coming in anytime. You know, it's nice to say hi. So guys, I will be live again tomorrow. With the bonus sub goal stream, we're doing Nintendo Switch Sports. You guys are going to see how good and correct I am at volleyball. So, live again tomorrow, loading on PC. If you aren't already, go follow me off my socials. I have a Twitter, Instagram, and a TikTok. Go follow them. And if you aren't already, go subscribe for free on my YouTube channel. I would love if you could subscribe to the Cliff channel, because I want my goal is to get that channel monetized by the end of the year. So guys, it's free. Subscribe on YouTube. <coughs> okay. Yeah, we'll see you later, Wolf. I appreciate you hanging out with us today. I know today wasn't as engaging, but I think it was fun to try out. And you know what? I got some studying done. I can be the new lo-fi girl. Okay. Bye, guys. I'll see you tomorrow at 11. Bye.